This is Audible. Tantor Audio, a division of recorded books, presents The Best Time by Sienna Waters. Narrated by Felicity Monroe. Chapter One It had all started with a baby, so it was weirdly fitting that it all ended with one, too. Lil had been bustling down the street, anxiously in search of caffeine. Just that morning, she'd flipped the switch on the machine in the kitchen and been rewarded with a snap and a sizzle and the smell of burning. And she couldn't think straight without her morning coffee, so she'd pulled on track pants and fled to the cafe on the corner to get her fix. But she'd never made it. Along the way, she'd skipped to one side to avoid a woman with a stroller, the baby inside howling to high heaven. And as she'd skipped, she'd seen the pacifier clatter to a halt on the sidewalk. Bending to grab it had been the natural thing to do. The smack on the head had been somewhat of a surprise. Ow! She'd looked up to see sparkling brown eyes and a kind face that was as wrinkled in pain as her own must be. She and the woman had banged heads as they simultaneously bent to pick up the pacifier. Lil had smiled, tentatively, at first, then bigger and bigger, until her face was stretched into a grin and the other woman was laughing. By the time Barb had introduced herself, the woman with the stroller was gone. The pacifier lay on the ground between them, and Lil was well and truly smitten. That had been two years ago, and Lil knew damn well that her life would never be the same. Hell, she'd known that since Barb's head had knocked into her own, which made what happened later all the more painful. Lil sighed and put her elbows on the counter, chin in hands, watching dust spin over the shelves of books in front of her. As much as she liked to hate Barb for leaving, she couldn't. She loved her, after all. Loved her enough that the wedding was already planned and their dream bookshop was already rented and the cats were already adopted. Because there had to be cats. That was part of the dream. Loved her enough that she'd assumed their dreams were the same. She'd assumed, quite naturally, that one day there'd be a baby. Until a chance comment about kids started an argument that eventually ended up with Barb hitching her backpack over her shoulder and walking out the door for the last time. Hadn't you talked about kids before? Caden, her best friend, had asked, astonished. I mean, you guys were getting hitched and everything. Lil had opened her mouth to answer him that, of course, they had, when she'd had to slam it closed again, because she realized they hadn't. She'd assumed that they had, that they'd wanted the same things, just like she'd assumed so much else. And Caden had shaken his head and wrapped a skinny arm around her shoulders and let her blink away the tears. Well, he pretended that she wasn't crying. On the hunt for a new Louise Penny, Lil snapped back to attention and saw that she had a customer, a pint-sized woman with curly gray hair and a crooked smile. Not in yet, she said, but it's nice to see you, Marge. How are the grandkids? Marge sniffed. Spend far too much time in front of their gadgets and not enough time with a book in their hands. Lil smiled sympathetically. Tell me about it. The penny won't be in for a couple of weeks yet. Bleh. I was looking forward to a hot bath and a dose of murder this afternoon. Marge sighed. Business looks to be booming in here, she said, as her eyes roved over the empty store. It's one o'clock on a Wednesday, Lil pointed out. Hardly peak shopping time. What you need is more life, more events, book clubs, that sort of thing. Which had all been part of the plan, of course. But Lil really didn't want to have this conversation. She knew that once Marge got started, there'd be no stopping her. So she said, have you tried Sujata Massey? The first Malabar Hills book is right up your street. Marge's face sparked with interest. 
You think? I know, Lil said, which was true. She prided herself on making good book choices for other people. It was a skill, Barb had always said. She dashed off to the appropriate shelf and grabbed a copy, returning it to Marge's eager hands. Five minutes later, Marge walked out swinging her paper bag. Another satisfied customer. Lil couldn't help but feel a small burst of pride as she slid the cash register drawer shut. Her very own bookstore. The bookworm had been designed in her head for at least 20 years, since she'd been old enough to know that bookstore owner was a real job. Sometimes dreams came true. As long as she kept her eyes away from the far right corner, the corner that stood in darkness, shelves and builder's tape marking it as off-limits to the average customer, the corner that should right now be pumping the smell of fresh-brewed coffee, that should have a chattering group of readers at tables, that should have Barb behind the counter. A bookstore without a cafe is like, like Costco without hot dogs, she protested. Since when have you eaten Costco hot dogs? Barb had asked. But she was raking a hand over her short hair, already bowing to Lil's idea. You know what I mean, Lil had said. It's part of the dream, Barb had finished up. It's actually not a bad idea, though. And she'd been persuaded, persuaded that this was the role Barb could fill in her dream. And Barb had seemed happy. Now the half-finished cafe loomed in the corner like some kind of graveyard. And Lil couldn't bring herself to look at it. Hey, Lil! The high-pitched voice got louder and then faded in the course of two words as Billy Flynn dashed past the counter to the comic book section. That's Ms. Bradley to you, Billy's mother said as she followed a more sedate pace. Seriously? said Lil. She looked down at her Doc Martens, ripped jeans, and flannel shirt. I'm not sure anyone's ever called me Ms. Anything before. Gail Flynn grinned. There's always a first time. Billy's not in school today? Dentist, grimaced Gail which is why we're here to pick up a reward. And then we're off to hunt down a very late lunch. I could murder a coffee. Lil could feel the unfinished cafe behind her looming ever larger. This one, Billy said, running back up to the counter and sliding a comic across it. Zombies, Lil said. Nice choice. They're my favorite said Billy earnestly. What do you think would be the biggest problem with the zombie apocalypse? Dr. Tom said it would be people getting infected teeth and then dying because there'd be no dentists. But he probably said that just because he's a dentist. Lil considered, then said, snoring. Billy snorted. Snoring? Think about it, said Lil. You gotta be quiet all the time so you don't get caught, but at some point, you've got to sleep. You're a snorer, and boom, the first time you fall asleep, some zombie's going to track you down and eat your brains. Huh, said Billy, though he didn't look terrifically convinced. He took his comic and danced off, leaving his mother to pay. He's a handful, Gail said. Looks like it, said Lil handing her some change. Enjoy your coffee. Her heart lurched a little as she said it, and lurched even more when she saw Billy's little hand reach up and take his mother's as they left the store. Three months ago, her future had been so clear, perfectly mapped out. Three months ago, she'd been happy. Now what was she? Sure, she'd had her mourning period, She'd cried and eaten ice cream and done all the things she was supposed to after a breakup. But now she needed to move on, which was easier said than done. Moving on implied a destination, a goal, a something to move on to. Truth be told, she'd been happy, and now she was just empty. 
Barb had been like all the others. She disappeared when things got serious. The dreams had been Lil's, not theirs, something Lil was just about ready to accept. She had the cats. She didn't need anything else. She sure as hell wasn't about to risk getting hurt again. Unfortunately, whilst the dreams might have been hers alone, the plan and the finances had been a shared ideal. Lil sighed as she looked around the shop. It was so almost perfect, and she'd struggled along for the last three months. She supposed she could do it for longer, maybe, but in the end, she wasn't entirely sure she could handle the bookworm alone. Chapter 2 Anything else, ma'am? The tall, tanned waiter placed the glass on the side table. Condensation glistened on the outside, ice clinked on the inside, and a slice of pineapple and an umbrella sat on the rim. No, said Riley. Thank you, she added, almost as an afterthought. He smiled, showing even bright white teeth. You're most welcome. He walked off gracefully, despite the fact that sand was sliding under his feet. Riley always felt clumsy as a child walking on the beach. She picked up the glass, took a sip, and let the warm thrill of alcohol slide down her throat. She wasn't much of a drinker, let alone a day drinker, but... The glass clicked back on the table. There had been a lot of but in her life recently, she realized. A whole ton of unfinished sentences, a whole ton of unfinished thoughts and acts and plans. Maybe unfinished would be what was written on her gravestone. Not a bad view, is it? said a voice. She turned and saw the woman lying on the next sunbed over. She was older, skin like tanned leather, skinny, and in decent enough shape. A cocktail was in her hand, large sunglasses were over her eyes, and for a second, Riley thought the woman was talking about the ocean and the waves. Then she saw the four men playing volleyball on the shore, all sweaty, tanned skin and tight butts, and she laughed. The woman turned to her. Haven't seen you here before. Riley was still surprised that she'd laughed. Actually laughed. Surprised enough that she responded rather than smiling politely and turning away like she normally would have. It's my first time, she said. The resort was top end, private, and very, very expensive. Oh, the woman said. Then I'm sure I'll see you again. Once you've been once, you always have to come back. I doubt it, whispered Riley into her glass so that the woman couldn't hear. The woman sighed and settled back onto her lounger. It's nice to be close to home. I mean, Europe is lovely at this time of year, of course, and Southeast Asia is wonderful for the shopping. But this? A couple of hours on a plane and I'm here. It's just perfect. Europe had been overwhelming. Like walking into a candy shop when she'd been a kid. There'd been too much to see, and she'd had no idea where to start and in the end had given up. She'd spent enough time in Asia on business that she'd spent only a couple of weeks there before giving up on that, too. She'd landed here only because she'd read about it in the onboard flight magazine on the way back from Dubai. Her passport was almost full. The last two months had been packed, so why the hell did she feel so empty and lost? I'll tell you something, the woman said. I wouldn't mind taking one of those volleyball lovelies back to my cabana. Riley surprised herself by laughing again. Or two, added the woman. Riley grinned and raised her sunglasses so that she could see better. Maybe this was what she'd been missing. Human contact. An actual conversation. Why not take all four? She'd asked mischievously. I suppose I might as well, said the woman, turning and grinning right back. 
Then her face creased into a frown. Say, don't I know you? Riley's heart sped up. I don't think we've met, she said, letting her sunglasses drop back down. No, no, we haven't, said the woman. You're Riley Winters, aren't you? I just saw a piece about you in Forbes a few months ago. I only paid attention because my third husband was one of your first investors. A lot of good it did him. He died before he could spend any of the profits. I'm sorry, said Riley automatically. Then she cursed herself for responding. She needed an emergency extraction from this conversation, and she wouldn't get it by indulging the woman. Oh, don't be. He died under one of his mistresses, so he went out happy, the woman said. But you are her, aren't you? Riley debated what to say to this. There didn't seem much point in lying, though. Yeah, she said finally, hoping that her tone would signal the end of the conversation. Well, at least you know how to take some time off. A little relaxation wouldn't have killed my third husband, nor the first two either. Honey? She signaled to the waiter, and Riley lay back again, turning slightly to indicate that she wasn't interested in talking anymore. Time off. Yeah. She'd never taken a day off in her life. She'd busted her ass to get her coffee shop up and running, and when Wanda had come on the scene with her bright ideas and initial investment, she'd busted her ass to get their chain of coffee shops up and running. In fact, she technically still hadn't taken a day off. She'd quit. That was different. Quit and walked away, and everyone wanted to know why, and she hadn't said a thing. Everyone had wanted to know why strict, cold, business-like, ambitious bitch Riley had suddenly sold her share of a successful business to her partner. But she kept her mouth firmly shut. Because in the end, it was her business. Because in the end, they had no need to know. But really, truly, honestly, it was because in the end, she couldn't make herself say the words couldn't make what she knew to be true, real, by putting it into words. And she definitely couldn't deal with anyone's sympathy. Five months ago, almost to the day, she'd been standing in her bathroom brushing her teeth, and the pain had come so hard and so fast that she'd collapsed on the floor, mouth still foaming with toothpaste. It had been like being stabbed in the stomach. Lying on the cold tiles, she hadn't been confused. She'd known immediately what it was, and she'd known immediately what she was going to do about it. She'd been 18 when her mother died, old enough not just to remember her, but old enough to have helped, old enough to have doled out medications and gone to doctor's appointments and wiped up vomit and worse. Dana Winters had died from stomach cancer when she was 41, a full nine years older than Riley was now, which hardly seemed fair when she thought about it. So as the cold tiles dug into her back, Riley decided that she wasn't going to do this, or rather she was, but on her own terms. There'd be no doctors, no chemo, no endless waiting for test results, There'd be no tears, no nausea, no forcing herself to drink nutrition shakes. There'd be no hope. That's what it came down to in the end. There'd be no glimmer of hope that she could latch onto and lose. Because that had been the hardest thing of all, watching the hope slowly leak out of her mother's eyes. And hell, what better way to go out than by watching half-naked men play volleyball under the hot sun? But the problem with dying was that it was turning out to not just be a longer process than she'd assumed, but also a far more boring one. She'd done her best. She'd tried to live, because that's what she'd decided to do with her remaining months— She'd decided to see everything and do everything and really live her life. 
But all the traveling and the hotels and resorts and sights and experiences somehow left her all empty and unfulfilled. Bringing her to now, laying on a sun lounger and indulging in conversation with a woman she hardly knew, but who apparently knew her. She was lonely, she realized now. That was the problem. She was lonely, and there was no one to fill the space inside her. Okay, there'd been lovers, plenty of them. And she could almost stir herself to be excited about the volleyball men, or the blonde on the lounger at the far end with the slim, tanned thighs and perfect boobs. It just seemed like so much work, though. So much work for someone who would pretend to understand, but who wouldn't. Not really. But there was one person who would understand. She picked up her drink again, draining half of it in one gulp. Why hadn't she thought about it before? That wasn't exactly true. She had thought about going home in the past so many times. And every time, she hadn't. She just hadn't been ready. But this... Maybe this made her ready. It made so much sense. She slid her glass onto the table and stood up, grabbing her towel and the battered paperback copy of War and Peace that she'd been struggling to read for the last month and a half. Not every must-have experience was really worth having, she was beginning to realize. On second thoughts, she threw the book back down again. There really was only one person that would understand. Only one place that she could really be. She had to go back to the beginning. Chapter 3 Lil pushed the shop door open and heard the bell cling. I thought I told you to lock the door, she grumbled. I turned the sign to closed, Caden said reasonably. But since you were going to be right back, I didn't lock the door. I made a wild guess and thought you might like to come in that way, rather than through the window or busting down one of the walls. Ha ha, Lil said. She put two cardboard cups down on the counter before going back to lock the door. She had to be strict about closing times, otherwise people just came in and started browsing. Not that she should be turning down customers, but she had to draw a line somewhere. Caden was frowning at the computer screen, his thin face lit up blue and his fingers dancing over keys. He was wearing a striped t-shirt which Lil distinctly remembered him wearing in ninth grade. Given that Caden was now 33, the same age as her, she wasn't sure whether to be exasperated that he was still wearing it or amazed at the garment's staying power. Ugh, what's this? Caden said, tearing his eyes away from the screen long enough to glare at the cup in his hand. A latte, she said, picking up her own. No, seriously, a latte? She sighed. Fine, a skinny latte. He rolled his eyes. Seriously? He asked again. Look at me. Does it look like I need to lose weight here? He stood up and did a little twirl, all the better to show off his scarecrow-like figure. He'd always been skinny. Gangly, his mother had always said, all arms and legs. Skinny and nerdy, with glasses and socks that didn't match. He was messy and unkempt, and in Lil's eyes at least, adorable. Fine, okay, she could see why he attracted bullies like flies when at school. But now... Now he'd make the perfect match for some lucky girl, and she just couldn't understand why he hadn't been snapped up. It's not just about the weight, she said. It's about cholesterol and all kinds of other things. Well, how about making it about my taste buds, he asked, sitting down again. No more skinny lattes. Fine, she huffed. Have it your own way. As if, he said with another eye roll. It's your way or the highway, I know that. She peered over to see his screen and ruffled his hair. You love my way, he grinned. Wouldn't have it any other way. 
So, how are things looking? The spreadsheets on the screen made zero sense to her. Lucky that she had Caden to sort things out, something he did weekly and for free, too. You're doing okay, he said, but he sounded doubtful. Okay? You're keeping your head above water, but only just. And this month, you've had the back-to-school crowd in, so you know that next month's likely to be a downturn. She blew out a breath. It wasn't like she didn't know what was going on in the shop. Obviously, she did. I can put more cash into the business. Lil? It's not like the parental units don't keep me well supplied, she said. Yeah, but that's kind of not the point, said Caden, turning to look at her. You can't just keep pouring money into the shop. At some point, it needs to be self-supporting or there's no point, is there? In essence, Caden was exactly the same as when she'd met him in fourth grade, just a lot bigger. Sometimes she forgot that he was so smart, far smarter than she'd ever been. She was the strong one, the leader, but Caden was the quiet, clever one, the one that she should listen to more often. What do you suggest then? She asked. He said nothing, but his eyes strayed to the dark corner where the half-finished cafe sat. No. Lil, it's been three months. Is there a time limit on broken hearts? She asked. Are you putting a deadline on my grieving? And she was only half kidding. I'm telling you that there's a solid business opportunity glaring you in the face, and you're not taking it. Something that could help you out here. She pulled out a stool and sat down, low enough that her chin was almost on the shop counter. Keaton, it sounded whiny. Lil, he whined right back. Another deep sigh. Maybe it was time to be honest. I can't do it, Caden. I just can't. I can't face it, not without Barb here. I get that it's a good decision, but maybe it's time I stopped kidding myself. Meaning? Meaning maybe I should get out of this while I still can. She looked around the empty store, the lights dim, and the air smelling of paper. No. She laughed. Really? Just no. Just no, he agreed. This is your dream, Lil. You've done so much already. It seems a shame to quit now just because... He trailed off. Just because I practically got dumped at the altar? She finished for him. You didn't get dumped at the altar. But things have to move on. There are plenty of fish in the sea, isn't that what you always say to me? It was, to be honest. But that was because Caden had never actually had a serious girlfriend. Because he consistently fell for women that, if she was being objective, were way out of his league. And then he got hurt. So if anyone could understand pain, it should be him. Caden, this is a big thing. I gotta accept that I can't do it alone. This was what had been brewing over the last three months. This was why she was afraid. You've got me. You have your own job. A very well-paying one. Something to do with computers and numbers that made her eyes glaze over slightly when he tried to explain it. Something that excited him and kept him glued to his desk in the basement of the house he'd grown up in. Doesn't mean that I'm not there for you, he pointed out. Which was true. Caden had always been there. Hell, she was practically a part of his family. She couldn't remember the number of times she'd slept at his house, eaten at his house, his mother laying a place for her at the table nearly every night by the time she was 13 or so. I don't know, she said, because it was the truth. She didn't want to let the dream go, but she needed help. Let's be reasonable here, Lil. You need to open the cafe. 
It was part of the original business plan, and it needs to open. Can we agree on that, at least? Come on, Kay. How can I sell books and make coffee at the same time? One thing at a time. Can we agree that the cafe needs opening? Lil pushed her hair out of her face. Fine, yes, she could agree, she supposed. In theory. She shrugged, which Caden took as agreement. Then leave the rest to me. Really? She tried not to sound doubtful, but it came out that way anyway. Lil, you always take care of everything and everyone. When Kit Clarkson tried to kick my butt in ninth grade, you were there with your karate. When Mom died, you were holding my hand. I'm your best friend. You gotta let me take up some of the slack here. I'll take care of the cafe. She eyed him suspiciously. She hated it when he got emotional. You got a plan there, big shot? For the cafe? No, for taking over the universe. Yes, for the cafe. He bit his lip and shook his head, and Lil laughed. Jesus, shall I order some pizza? There's a six-pack sitting in the fridge upstairs that has both our names on it. Yeah, half pepperoni and half green peppers and sausage, she finished as if they hadn't eaten the same pizza for the last 20 years together. She closed out the computer, pulled Caden up out of his chair, and looped her arm through his. I'm lucky to have you, she said. Don't I know it, he said back. And it had taken him so long to get the confidence in himself to say something like that that she laughed. You should know it. I'm a lucky, lucky girl who will find another lucky, lucky girl to be with, Caden said. It's time to stop grieving, Lil. Barb was great, but she wasn't the one for you. And that's okay. You'll find someone. I've had my turn, Lil said, steering him toward the stairs that would take them up to her apartment. It's your turn next. Caden blushed and she laughed and was sure that the conversation was over and that they were moving on to more pleasant topics. But he stopped at the door to the stairway. I mean it, Lil. I'll solve the coffee shop problem. Just leave it with me. Let me control something for a change. She shook her head and smiled. You don't have to. I don't have to do anything. I want to. Fine, fine, she said practically pushing him through the door. Now get the pizza ordered before my stomach starts eating through my shirt. You call. I'll grab the beers. Chapter 4 Fourteen years. In fourteen years, something should have changed. But as Riley walked down the street, she was damned if she could see exactly what. There was the tree that she'd fallen out of, there was the crack in the sidewalk that tripped her in first grade. There was the crooked mailbox that her mother had hit with the car. And if she tried real hard and concentrated just right, she could pretend that no time had passed at all. Her suitcase caught on something and she tugged at it. This was the right thing to do. She felt it in her stomach. As soon as she'd landed, as soon as she'd smelled the air, she'd known that this was weirdly right. Whatever her feelings about home, whatever had happened here, why ever she'd left, coming back was just right. It felt like sliding into a comfortable pair of pajamas, which didn't mean it was necessarily easy. Every corner, every brick, every lawn had some kind of memory attached to it, and she'd spent so long being unattached that it was strange to have these emotions, strange to think of herself as a child again. And then she was there, standing in front of the house, and still nothing had changed. The screen door was peeling at the top right corner. The siding needed a coat of paint. The flower bed under the living room window bloomed with colors. It was all the same, but very, very different. It felt weird walking up the steps to the front door. It felt even weirder contemplating ringing the doorbell. 
She didn't think she'd ever rung the doorbell before. Not as weird as it was going to feel when the door opened. Jesus, she was dying here, quite literally. And if she spent any more time feeling maudlin, then she might actually die on the doorstep. She took a breath and then pressed the buzzer with a firm finger. The footsteps inside sounded heavy, and she thought that she'd had enough time to prepare herself, except she hadn't. Not at all. Because when the door creaked open, she fully expected to see her mother's pink cheeks and apron, or her father's irritated frown. And what she did see was neither of those things. He stood there, tall and thinner than ever, his striped T-shirt exactly the same as it had been in high school, and a slight frown that was a mixture of their father's irritation and their mother's kindness and confusion. Hi, she managed. He looked her up and down, still frowning until his eyes cleared and he spoke. Riley? Do you have another sister that I'm unaware of? She answered sharply. Caden grinned. I'd almost forgotten I had a sister at all. What are you doing here? Currently waiting on the doorstep on a night that could charitably be described as chilly, wondering if my idiot big brother is going to let me into his house or not. Our house, Caden said, taking a step back and opening the door wider. That was not something that she felt like discussing. Besides, it wasn't like she'd be making any claims on the place other than possibly wanting to spend her last waking hours in it. But the house had seen enough of that that she figured it wouldn't mind. She took a deep breath before she walked inside, the familiar smell almost knocking her sideways. You're staying? Caden asked, seeing her suitcase. Can I? It was odd asking him for permission, but it really was his house. Yeah, sure, I mean, obviously, of course you can. She took a step toward the stairs, then hesitated. Is, um, can... Crap, this was awkward. Caden grinned and looked like he was five again. Your room is where it's always been. There's clean sheets in the linen cupboard. I'd have made the bed for you, but... But I didn't even call? Right. She gave a tight nod, then heaved her suitcase up the first few stairs. I'll take that, Caden said. Nah, I got it. She needed a moment. Several moments. Possibly a stiff drink, too. So she left a bemused Caden standing at the bottom of the stairs, staring after her. Her room hadn't changed. Not a bit. But then, Caden was hardly using the whole house, was he? And for the first time, she felt a pang of sympathy for her brother, rattling around here all alone. It must be hard, lonely. He needed someone. Maybe that was something she could accomplish in return for him letting her stay here. She took another deep breath. There'd been a lot of those so far. Put her suitcase against the wall and then straightened up. Kay deserved some kind of explanation, the trip had been tiring, and she looked at the stripped bed longingly, before sighing and turning back to go downstairs. I'm sorry, was the first thing Caden said. He was standing in the kitchen, the bright fluorescent lights buzzing and gleaming in his hair. For what? For not, I don't know, welcoming you home properly or something. You didn't know I was coming, Riley pointed out. She could smell pizza. Caden grabbed a box from the counter and slid it toward her. Help yourself, he said. It's leftovers, but it should be a bit warm. Or you can put it in the microwave, or I guess you don't have to eat anything at all. You could... I'm starving, she said, to stop him rambling. But it was true. She took a slice and chowed down. This was the hungriest she could remember being for weeks. Caden pulled out a stool and perched on it. It's weird, isn't it? Awkward. And you're getting all socially aware all of a sudden, she said. The Caden she remembered wasn't the most adept at navigating emotions. 
He looked irritated for a second, then swallowed it back. I'm glad you're back, he said, quietly. Are you? Was it a brother-sister thing, this need to needle him, to poke him? But he nodded. I am. I missed you, believe it or not. We all did. Not all of you, she said, mouth full of peppers and sausage. He didn't rise to the bait. I thought you were gonna come visit. You always said you were, but then you didn't. And when you didn't come home for dad, well... Well, nothing, she interrupted. It wasn't like he was dying for weeks. You gave me all of a day's notice. He was gone before I could get here. What was I supposed to do with that? Nothing. I didn't mean it as a criticism. It sounded like one, she said. Besides, he and I had nothing to say to each other. We'd already said it all. He was changing, said Caden. He was. She grunted in response. As if. Christoph Winters had been as unchanging as a rock face, and about as hard. What I meant was, you didn't come for the funeral, and then I kind of thought that maybe I was never going to see you again. And now she saw that that had hurt him, that he was sad. There didn't seem much point in coming for the funeral, she said, more gently now. He stood up and came around so that he was next to her. I missed you. He was close enough that she could feel his warmth, and they'd been close as kids, and she only realized right then how much she'd missed him, too. How much this was like coming home, but only because Caden was there. That Caden was home, rather than the actual house. I missed you, too, she said. She was surprised when he wrapped her in a hug. They'd never been a particularly demonstrative family, but it was nice, too, and she settled into it for a second. I'd like to stay for a while, she said when he drew back. Yeah, that's cool, I'd like that, he hesitated. But don't you have to work? I quit. He was the first person she'd really told, and it felt strange to say the words. His eyes widened and his eyebrows went up. Why? he asked. Why come here? It was on the tip of her tongue to tell him, but the words just wouldn't come out. He'd been so happy to see her. They'd just reconnected. How could she shatter that by telling him that she wasn't actually going to be here long? Why not? she answered. So what are you going to do? he asked. She shrugged. A little light glowed in his eyes. It's pretty boring around here. Ah, yes, that she did remember. Amberley wasn't the most exciting town in the world. She'd been dying to get out. Now she was dying to get back in, she snorted a laugh to herself. The idea seemed stupidly funny. I'll keep myself busy, she said. How the hell she'd do that, she had no idea. She couldn't just sit around waiting to collapse. Actually, said Caden, his eyes still glowing and his face relaxing, there might be something you can help out with. Yeah? She owed him something, surely. Yeah. Let me think on it a while. You gonna eat that pizza or not? There's like half an extra large here, she said. Great. Bring it to the den. Jeopardy's on. He grabbed two sodas from the fridge as he passed it, and Riley picked up the pizza box and followed him. It was as though she was 15 again. As though she'd never left at all. Chapter 5 Jesus Christ, if running didn't make her healthier, it was definitely going to kill her. Lil's lungs burned and her legs felt like lead weights, but she kept on trucking. One more block to go. And when she saw the familiar sign of the bookworm, a worm peeking out of an apple with a book in hand, 
She could have cried in relief. She limped through the door, locking it behind her, and gulping from her water bottle at the same time. She wasn't losing herself. She'd promised herself that. No matter what else happened, no matter how empty and hollow she felt without Barb there, she absolutely wasn't going to lose herself. She had cats to look after, after all. So she made sure that she showered every morning and ate right and ran at least three times a week, even though she detested running. With a passion. Given her own choices, Lil would quite happily have spent all her days curled up with a cat or two and reading a book. Sadly, that seemed like a pretty quick way to either get stupidly fat or, more likely, to have Caden commit her to some kind of institution. On the bad days, she comforted herself with the thought of doing exactly what she liked as soon as she was old. On the very bad days, she wondered if 40 counted as old. Cats swarmed her feet as she entered the apartment, and she took her sweaty self to feed them. Chance Lucky and Fortune mewed constantly until bulls were put in front of their faces. Then they snuffled and ate, and Lil smiled. Often they were the best part of her day. At least she had the bookshop to fill her days, she thought, as she climbed into the shower. Barb's shampoo sat on the shelf where she'd left it, and Lil's heart crumbled just a little, like it did every morning. But she couldn't bring herself to move it, and definitely couldn't bring herself to throw it away. The bookshop gave her something to do, and she guessed that was important. But, and here was the thing, the more she thought about the idea of giving it up, the more it just seemed like the thing to do. This had been a project for the two of them, for her and Barb. Somehow what had been her childhood dream had become woven in with Barb, and doing it without her... Well, it just seemed too overwhelming. Whatever Caden might say about finding her help. A half hour later, dry, fed, and clothed in her regular docks, ripped jeans, and faded flannel, she unlocked the door of the shop and let the morning air in. Six months the shop had been open, and unlocking the door in the morning still gave her a slight thrill. But then she turned back and saw the abandoned cafe corner, and her doubts all came back again. She kicked the door closed against the chill and stomped over to the cash register to get it fired up. It wasn't long before her first customer arrived. Purely logical, Lil had to admit that the bookstore was good business. There was no shortage of customers, especially on weekends. Getting people in wasn't a huge problem. There was no other bookstore close by, and the foot traffic and location were great. The problem was the margin on books was small, minute. Most bookstores didn't make their money on books. They profited from a gift section or an online store or a cafe. All things that she knew already. All things that were in the plan. The plan that had ground to a halt. She sighed. What I wouldn't give for a hot chocolate on a morning like this the customer said as she brought two books to the counter. Lil saw that they were textbooks. It's chilly, isn't it? Smells like fall, said the woman. She looked down at her books. Classes start next week, always the sign that the summer's really over. Lil smiled and rang her up and let her leave. Hot chocolate. The thought made her mouth water. Curling up with a good book and some hot chocolate, that was a plan. Maybe if the afternoon was slow, she'd close up early. Maybe. It was a little after lunch when the shop bell rang and Lil turned her head to see Caden. She was already grinning, already starting to speak, when he stepped aside and she saw that he wasn't alone. Long legs in tight jeans, a sweater curling around rounded hips and full breasts, and Lil's heart was already thudding in her chest, and her mouth was already getting dry. The hair was dark and curly and messy, the light making red glints in the curls as she moved her gaze to the full lips and high cheekbones and bright green eyes. 
and then a heat was flooding through her, and her legs were shaking, and she wondered how she'd ever thought that she couldn't get over Barb, how she'd even considered not feeling anything again. Until the whole picture snapped into place, and she realized that she knew this woman, in the biblical sense. And she had to grasp onto the counter to stop herself fainting, because Riley Winters was standing in her shop. It's a surprise, was all Caden would say. Riley rolled her eyes and let herself be dragged along because in the space of a night, she'd gone from being a successful, independent businesswoman to being Caden Winter's little sister. Last night, they'd watched TV, shared snacks, and talked about everything and nothing, and Riley found herself wondering why she'd ever left it all until she'd gone to bed and walked past the door to her parents' bedroom and remembered that she had had to go, that she hadn't been able to handle anything, that leaving had been the only healthy choice she'd had left. She'd been half expecting Caden to open the door to the master bedroom and raised an eyebrow when he went on down the corridor to his childhood room. He'd shrugged at her, looking vaguely guilty. I couldn't do it, he'd said. I was going to, but I couldn't. Couldn't sleep in there? He'd blown out his cheeks. I never even thought of that. I mean, I couldn't clear it out. Couldn't move all their things. Dad never touched Mom's stuff, and then I never touched his, and then, well, it was easier just to close the door on the whole thing, eh? She'd felt a shiver of pity for him. She'd left him to handle all this alone, and she of all people knew that Caden wasn't always great at dealing with emotional things. She should have come back. She should have helped him. I'm sorry, she'd said, holding on to her bedroom door handle. Nothing to be sorry for, he'd answered. And his smile was genuine because for all his faults, Caden was probably the most forgiving person she knew. Even when he'd been a kid and been bullied nonstop, he'd forgiven his tormentors again and again, which generally just meant that they'd tease him even harder. Hey, Kay? He'd turned back. Yeah? I love you. She'd said it without thinking, letting the words slip out and only then had realized that she didn't think she'd ever said that to him before. I love you too, sis, he'd said, and closed his door gently behind him. And now he was pulling her along the street and was obviously excited, and it was kind of contagious. Caden made it very, very easy to forget why she was really here. He made it very easy for her not to tell him why she'd come back. She guessed she'd have to tell him at some point. At some point, it'd become obvious, wouldn't it? Here, he said. She looked up. A bookstore? Really, Kay? That's the surprise. Not even, he said, yanking the door open and practically dragging her inside. She smelled paper and faint lemon, and the air was warm after the chill of outside and she was about to turn to Caden and ask just what was going on when her eye caught the woman behind the counter. Tall, slim, with strong shoulders and tattoos running down her right arm. Her ear had a row of silver rings down it, and her hair was dark and shaggy, and now had a bright blue stripe cutting through the darkness. But her eyes still twinkled blue, and her nose still tilted, and her hands still ended in long, graceful fingers. And Riley's heart still skipped a beat at the sight of her, and her stomach still flipped over, and her mouth still went dry. For a long, long moment, there was silence and stillness, and Riley was filled with something that she couldn't understand. She hadn't felt it in so long. She had to grasp onto Caden's arm to stop herself from fainting because Lil Bradley 
was standing behind the counter. Chapter 6 Surprise, Caden said. He pulled at his sister's arm, and Lil was trying desperately to look normal, and at the same time, interpret the look on Riley's face. What was this? Why was this happening? Look at this, said Caden, pulling Riley up to the counter, completely oblivious to the fact that no one was speaking but him. The three musketeers back together again. It's just like old times. Lil swallowed and tried to speak. Just like old times. The times when she and Caden would have to babysit his annoying little sister. The times when the three of them would hang out, once Riley got old enough to be slightly less annoying. The times when Lil would try so hard not to stare at Riley that she thought she might damage herself permanently. One time, one time in particular. The night that Riley had bounced down the stairs to the basement in yoga pants and a cropped sweatshirt and no makeup, and Lil had realized all of a sudden that she wasn't a kid anymore, and realized that, all of a sudden, the feelings made sense, and realized all of a sudden that this could destroy everything. Just like old times, she finally managed to croak. Right, beamed Caden, and just in time, too. Just in time, echoed Lil. Yeah. Riley just came back into town, and she says she's staying a while, and she's quit her job and everything, so it's just perfect timing, isn't it? Quit her job, Lil said. The echoing thing seemed to be working out for her. She might as well stick with it. At least it stopped her saying anything stupid like, you broke my heart, or why did you leave me, or even get the hell out of here and never come back. Yeah, I know, crazy, right? said Caden, leaving a great job that you love just because. But that's my sis, always unpredictable. There wasn't an ounce of sarcasm or hurt in his words, when there really could have been, because Riley left Caden just as much as she'd left Lil. A great job, Lil repeated. She had a vague memory of Riley doing something with food, owning a chain of restaurants or something like that. Yeah, I mean, walking away from a franchise like Corner Coffee, that's pretty unpredictable, isn't it, Riley? Caden turned to his sister. That's right, Corner Coffee. They were everywhere now. Cheap, good quality coffee, decent sandwiches. Riley had started that and then walked away from it, apparently. And now things were starting to make sense, and Lil really didn't want them to. Caden was still looking at Riley, and Lil looked at her too, and their eyes met. And Lil saw that she was just as confused, just as awkward as she felt. As much as she didn't want to, she couldn't help but offer a helping hand. Welcome to the bookworm, she said. It's not a chain, but it's mine. We've been open for six months now. It looks... Riley looked around herself. It looks very nice, she said politely. She cleared her throat. Ah, uh, do you have a bathroom? Lil grabbed at the chance to have a moment alone with Caden. Sure, right back there past the building work in the corner. Riley gave a tight smile and walked away, and Lil waited for the feelings to walk away with her. But they didn't. What the hell's all this about, Caden? She demanded, the second Riley was out of earshot. He grinned. I know, isn't it just perfect? Talk about timing. It couldn't have happened any better. Just last night, I tell you I'll help with the cafe project, and then who comes knocking on my door not a couple of hours later? Perfect, I tell you. Caden, I... No, no, it's fine, he said. She won't mind helping out, I'm sure. I don't know how long she's staying, but I'm sure she'll want to help here. If only so she can spend a little quality time with you. 
It won't be an issue. You don't have to be afraid to ask for help, Lil. Quality time. If only he knew. That's not... Kanan's phone started to ring and he picked it up. It's work. I've got to take it, he said, already taking a step away. But don't worry about it. I'll ask her. I'll talk to her about it. It's fine. And then he was talking on the phone and pushing open the door to let the cold air in, and then the door was closing again. She was alone with Riley Winters. She heard the bathroom door swinging open and closed, and something broke inside her. With quick steps, she caught up with Riley, catching her elbow and swinging her around. What did you tell him? Riley's face flushed pink, her eyes flashed. What did I tell him? About what, Lil? About the fuck up that was one night? Lil took a breath slowly in and out. Then she nodded. Her hand was burning where it was touching Riley, and she pulled it away, if only so that she could try and get her pulse back to normal. Nothing, okay? Riley was breathing long and slow, too. I told him nothing. The sound of her breathing was making Lil's stomach clench and sending floods of warmth through her body. She could almost see Riley moving beneath her, could almost feel the softness of her skin, the lightness of her lips. Shit. She needed to ignore this. She needed to put the feelings away. It should be easy enough. She'd had enough practice at it. So far as Caden's concerned, she started. Nothing ever happened, said Riley. Good, Lil said, and she was still standing too close. But really, even being in the same room as Riley was going to be too close, and her feelings were all mixed together, and she couldn't unmix them, and all she wanted was for time to go back to ten minutes ago when everything was still normal. Except... That wasn't true. That wasn't all she wanted. Even now, even like this, even after everything, she wanted to push Riley back against the bookshelf and tangle her fingers in her hair and kiss her. Good, said Riley, and her pink flush was fading, but her eyes were still flashing, and she looked hard and long, and Lil squirmed under her gaze. Good. She said again, finally, and walked away. Lil was left staring at the bookshelf where Riley had been standing, until she groaned in confusion and frustration and she didn't know what else, and her eye caught the title of one of those books on the shelf, and she had to close her eyes. They'd been standing in the romance section. So, what do you think? Caden said from across the store. Lil put her game face back on and went back to the counter. What did she think? Firstly, she thought that this was the worst thing that had happened to her in the last 15 years, since Riley had walked out in the first place. Secondly, she thought it was insane that the woman was back and would walk into her store. And thirdly, she thought that she didn't know what the hell she was going to do because Caden's face was bright with enthusiasm and she couldn't bear to hurt him. It was Riley that spoke first. Think about what? she asked. It occurred to Lil that Caden's plan wasn't immediately obvious. About you helping Lil set up the cafe in here, he said, pointing toward the darkened corner. The cafe? said Riley. So it was her turn to repeat things now. Yeah, it's a great idea, Caden said. Lil and Barb were going to... He trailed off and cleared his throat. I, uh, well, I'll let Lil explain more if she wants to, but the bottom line is that she needs the help, the cafe needs to open, and you're the perfect person to help do that. I mean, you're at a loose end while you're in town anyway, aren't you? You said you didn't have plans. Riley turned to Lil, and they shared a look that told Lil they were in complete agreement. It was a hot and cold feeling to share something again. 
I think that, uh, that started Riley. That we'd probably need to think seriously about it, Lil supplied. Right, said Riley. There's a lot of factors here, and we should definitely consider business rather than just what we might like to do as, as friends. She stumbled over the word, and Lil's heart hurt. Exactly, Lil agreed. There's a lot more than just feelings involved. Yet this all seemed like feelings to her, to many of them. So we shouldn't decide anything immediately, Riley put in. Right, we should sleep on it, added Lil. They were almost finishing each other's sentences. Caden rolled his eyes. Since when did you two get so old and reasonable, he said. Then he checked his watch. But please yourselves, think about it. <laughs> but we gotta run, cause I've got work to do and I'm Riley's ride out of here. Lil managed to nod. I'll text you Riley's number, Caden said as they were walking out. Right, Lil croaked. Riley's number. A whole new number. One that would never replace the number that was engraved in her memory. The one she could never forget because she'd considered calling it so many times late at night when she'd been vulnerable and lonely and, and, yes, horny too. Riley Winters was back. Lil felt her life already being tipped upside down. Chapter 7 the morning sun broke through the curtains, and Riley could tell it was going to be cold outside by how white the light was. So she snuggled into her comforter and pretended that she was still seven and it was a snow day. Pretty soon her mom would come with hot chocolate, and Dad would be on his way to work, and she and Caden would get all wrapped up and go out and build a snowman. Had life really ever been that picture perfect? Parts of it had, she knew that. But what memory glossed over were the other parts. In her ideal snow day, she and Caden didn't argue over who was going to wear the red gloves they both treasured. Her feet didn't go numb from the cold. Mom didn't get mad that they dragged snow back into the house. And on a real snow day, they wouldn't have been alone. On a real snow day, it would only have been a matter of time before Lil appeared at the end of the street and strode up to the house like she belonged there. Only a matter of time before Riley was the odd one out. It was complicated. Or maybe it wasn't. She wasn't sure. She'd spent half of her childhood being jealous of Liliana Bradley, with her rich parents and her big house and her perfect hair and her easy smile and the other half in love with Liliana Bradley, with her sparkling blue eyes and her long legs and her crooked smile. Maybe her life had been kind of perfect, right up until it wasn't, until that summer when everything seemed to come crashing down at once, with her dad furious and her mom sick and Lil, and Lil naked and warm and writhing in her arms. Riley swallowed, and a pang of pain went through her stomach. She wasn't sure if it was real pain until she shifted, and it stabbed through her again so hard that she bit her lip. Lil Bradley, exactly who she hadn't wanted to see, most of the reason she hadn't come home before, all of the reason that she continually failed at every relationship she'd ever had. Maybe it was childish to blame Lil, but then it did seem as though Lil had busted into her life just to mess things up, just to set the scene for everyone else to establish a pattern. Riley groaned. The pain was deepening inside her, and sweat was springing out on her forehead. She clutched at her stomach. And then she was leaping out of the bed, flying into the bathroom so hard that she smacked her elbow on the doorframe and making it just in time to throw up whatever was left in her stomach. She sat, panting on the bathroom floor. No doctors, she'd promised herself. 
No tests, no treatment, no hope. She hadn't counted on the pain, though. She'd forgotten that. She'd wiped from her memory the agony that her mother had been in. But she remembered it now, and fear held her cold. She couldn't deal with that kind of pain. Maybe it was time to rethink things. Caden eyed her carefully as she came into the kitchen. What's with you, Squirt? She asked, keeping it light. The pain was gone. A shower and a clean set of clothes, and she felt like a new person. What's with you? He asked right back. You all right? She rolled her eyes. Just fine. Why the third degree? A little voice in the back of her head scolded her. She was going to have to tell him at some point. No third degree, he said, pouring coffee. I wasn't the one barfing in the bathroom. Shit. She'd forgotten how damn thin the walls were in this house. She shrugged and reached for the coffee cup that he'd poured. Something didn't agree with me, she said. It's all good now. In fact, I'm starving. It was Caden's turn to roll his eyes. Which, I suppose, means that you want me to make you breakfast. But you're the only one that's allowed to turn the stove on, she said automatically. Caden laughed. That hasn't been true for at least 20 years, he said, but he was reaching for a frying pan. However, since you're my little sister, I might be persuaded to help you out a little. She perched on one of the kitchen stools as he started to cook and watched him. He really looked no different than he always had. Caden, dependable Caden. Caden, who had always looked after her, who had always been there for everyone, not just for her. Caden, who had looked after their mother just as much as she had. Caden, who had dealt with their father alone, because she'd left. Caden, who always smiled and did what needed to be done. Caden, who made her sometimes, just sometimes, feel like she could never measure up. So, you going to tell me what the problem with Lil is then? He said, back still turned. There's no problem, she said without thinking about what she was saying. Which is why you looked like you'd seen a ghost yesterday at the store. Did not. Did so, he said, pouring pancake batter into the pan. So, what's the problem? No problem, I was just surprised, that's all. Why was there so much that she couldn't tell him? When they were kids, she'd told him everything. Uh-huh, that explains your reaction completely, he said, voice dry. Looking like you'd seen a ghost and then running off to the bathroom and then, hey, I told you I must have eaten something that didn't agree with me, that's all, she protested. He flipped a pancake and then turned around. Really? Really, he grinned. So, what about helping her out then? It'd be great. I know she really needs the help, Ryle. And you guys would be great working together. She took a breath. I don't know. You don't know? And now he was back to being suspicious. Maybe she should just tell him. Not the whole truth, of course, but some of it. Just tell him that she wasn't going to do it, that the thought of being trapped in that store with Lil Bradley was her worst nightmare. And that annoying little voice said, possibly your greatest fantasy as well. She shuddered for a second as she remembered the touch of Lil's hand on her arm, the way she was backed up against a bookshelf, the way her eyes and lips were so familiar, the way her pulse quickened when she smelled Lil's citrusy scent. You don't know, Caden demanded again, turning back to slide pancakes onto a plate. Riley got a hold on herself. I've just left a job, Kay. I don't know if I want another one, especially one that's pretty much the same as the career I just left. Caden snorted. 
Like working as a barista would be the same as owning a chain of stores. You know what I mean, said Riley, pulling a knife and fork out of the silverware drawer. It was as good an excuse as any. Caden slid the plate in front of her. He looked disappointed. I guess, he said. Just, well, it seemed too good to be true. Lil needing the help and then you showing up. He paused and looked at her more closely. Why are you here? He asked curiously. Not that I'm not happy you are, but why come here? It's my home, she said. A home that you haven't visited for 15 years. She didn't look him in the eye. She wasn't ready for this conversation, not in the slightest. Lil definitely needs help, she said, to steer him away from his questions. Barb left her high and dry. She needs the help, Caden agreed. Without the cafe, the bookstore just won't make enough revenue. So you could really do her a good turn here. This conversation needed to be over. I'll think about it, she said, pushing a slice of pancake into her mouth. Wow, these are great, Kay. Your cooking skills have seriously improved. Let's hope your washing up skills have improved, he said, throwing a dish towel at her. I've got to check in with work, so you're on your own for cleanup duty. He disappeared down the basement stairs, leaving Riley in peace to finish her breakfast. She'd tell him at some point, she promised herself. Tell him everything. But she'd deal with this Lil thing first. All she needed was a good excuse. Maybe she could invent a project for herself so she didn't have time for the bookshop. She swallowed, and another twinge of pain went through her stomach. But first on today's agenda was search for a doctor. She had to admit that she was going to need help. Not treatment, but at least painkillers. Things were only going to get worse from here. Chapter 8 If she tried very hard, Lil could block Riley Winters from her mind. Not completely, of course. She was still there as Caden's irritating little sister. She was still there as the friend that she had become when she was older. But that other part, that one night in particular, she could just ignore it, almost forget it had ever happened. Unfortunately, this was a whole lot easier when Riley was hundreds of miles away in a different city altogether, and Lil was busy with her own life and her own love. Now that Riley was back and Lil was unattached, it was a shit ton more difficult to pretend that nothing had ever happened. As for Riley working at the bookstore, well, that was an obvious no. How could she? How could she dance around all that awkwardness, all that history, without it all turning into a disaster? The problem with all of this was just how she was going to tell Caden without letting on the real reason that his baby sister could never set foot in her store again. Just these, please. A pleasant-looking man slid a couple of books onto the counter, and Lil smiled. Would you like a bag with those? Sure. You wouldn't happen to know where I could get a decent coffee close by, would you? It made Lil's face hurt to keep smiling as she directed him to the cafe a couple of blocks away. You know, you should sell coffee here, he said, grinning in thanks to her. You'd make a mint. She forced her smile to be as cheery as possible. I'll keep that in mind. Ignoring Riley did not help with her more immediate problems. Keeping the bookstore ticking over, working on the cafe, or, far more likely now, just letting the whole place go and starting over at something else. Probably that would be easiest, right? It would definitely be easier than letting Riley Winters pop in for lattes and gossip once a week. Not that that was going to happen. And not that she wanted it to happen. 
Except her heart had hiccuped, and Lil really, really wanted all of this to go away because she didn't know if she had the strength to deal with it all. She was never anything but honest with herself, and it was absolutely undeniable that after the shock of actually seeing Riley's face appear, her old feelings had resurfaced in a way that was shockingly unexpected. She was supposed to be grieving her breakup. She was supposed to be forever alone. She was supposed to be a crazy cat lady who owned a bookshop and wore flannel shirts and grew up into a spinster aunt. But, just like always, Riley made supposed to disappear into the ether. Which was the real and honest and true reason why she couldn't have Riley here, no matter how helpful she could be to the business and no matter how much it would please Caden. Besides, Riley would never forgive her. Or she would never forgive Riley. One or the other. It was hard to know who was supposed to forgive and who should be forgiven when she wasn't exactly sure why everything had imploded in the first place. The shop bell rang. Morning, March. And don't you have a face like a wet weekend, Marge said, marching up to the counter. Nice to see you, too. Can I help you with something in particular, or did you just want to insult me before getting back out into the autumn chill? Marge grunted. That Massey book was a good recommendation. I've already finished it, and I came in looking for the next in the series if you happen to have it. Lil checked the computer. We don't have it in stock, but I can have it for you by tomorrow if that works. I suppose it'll have to, grumbled Marge. And why are you looking like you've lost a dollar and found a quarter? Lil typed the order into her computer. I'm not. You are, said Marge. Nothing to do with the Winters girl being back in town, is it? Lil sighed. The gossip mill's grinding already, are they? There's not that much excitement in Amberley, Marge said. And no one's seen hide nor hair of the girl since high school graduation. Is it any wonder that people are curious why she's back? Well, don't ask me, said Lil, printing out a copy of the order form. I'd be the last person to know why she's here. Marge took the paper. Seems like fate, though, doesn't it? I mean, her being a coffee tycoon and all, and you here stranded with a cafe that needs to be opened. I don't know what you're talking about. Which was a lie, but seemed like the phrase most likely to send Marge packing. But Marge just propped her elbows onto the counter. You know, I like having a bookshop here. A lot of people do. It's convenient. It's nice to have something that appeals to adults and kids alike. It'd be even nicer if this was a place where people could spend real time, meet, have clubs, reading circles, and the like. Lil raised an eyebrow. And I'm thinking that you like doing this, don't you? You take real pleasure in recommending books, real pleasure in seeing people satisfied and happy. I think that you don't become a bookseller to get rich, you become a bookseller because it's your dream. Lil had to smile. Yes, you're right. I've always wanted this. So why would you risk it all because some girl broke your heart 15 years ago? Lil froze. She'd told nobody anything. Not even Caden. What? She finally managed to choke out. Marge laughed, but in a kindly way. Oh, my dear, did you think no one noticed? The two of you were thick as thieves, and then suddenly Riley disappeared and you couldn't smile anymore. Your mother was worried about you. Somehow Lil doubted that. She doubted her mother had ever worried about her feelings. Okay, the rest of us worried about you. Marge said, seeing her face. It's a small enough town, and we're all close enough. Believe it or not, I was as close to your father once as you are with Caden. 
And somewhere in the back of her mind, Lil could remember a younger Marge, could remember her parents having friends, before money and golf and holidays became more important. So we did worry about you. But then Dana Winters was dying, and that took over everything, and it took a while for things to get back to normal, and after that, well, you seemed to be doing all right for yourself. Lil sighed. Marge, this really isn't any of my business, Marge supplied. It's not, you're right, but maybe one of us should have checked in on you back then when you were young and sad and practically motherless, and we didn't. So I'm doing it now. I don't need checking in on. You do if you're about to let a very good thing go down the drain because you're mixing business with pleasure yet again. Business with pleasure. Marge snorted. That Barb woman was never good enough for you. And starting a business with a partner who's also a lover is never a good idea in my experience. No, there should be a line... And both you and Riley Winters are old enough now that you can draw that line. That you can be professional. So what? Lil started. So Riley Winters could make or break this place. She's just what you need to make your dream a success. And you're about to throw it all away because of some dalliance back when the two of you were practically young enough to need diapers. Marge... I'm old, I get to say things like that, Marge said. And you're being stupid, very stupid. You walk away from this bookstore and the town will be worse off. But you'll be worse off too. You'll regret it just as badly as you regret whatever happened between you and Ms. Winters. Lil stared down at the counter. There's nothing worse than a life lived full of regret. Marge said, her voice softer now. And there's no reason you shouldn't take help when it's offered, no matter who that offer comes from. Course, there's no reason you should take advice from an old bat like me. Lil felt a smile tickle her lips. An old bat, huh? Marge grinned. The oldest and battiest, and I'll pop in for that book tomorrow. She took a step away and then paused. You see your father much these days? Lil shook her head. They call every now and again, drop by once in a blue moon. Marge looked sad, but nodded. Right, was all she said before the shop bell dinged again and she was gone. Lil slumped over the counter. She would regret giving the shop up. Marge was right. But what was worse, putting up with Riley's desperately needed help or walking away from the bookworm? She couldn't see any other option. She straightened up again. She was an adult. Riley was an adult. They both loved Caden and wanted to please him. They were both professionals. And hell, what happened had been a decade and a half ago. Why not let it be water under the bridge? Why not try and mend a few bridges, for that matter? Surely it had to be worth a try. Even just for a day. If it was too much, she could send Riley away again, sell the bookstore, and she wouldn't be any worse off. Right? She was an adult. Riley was an adult. They had changed. Her heart skipped a beat, and her stomach flipped, and she picked up her phone to call Caden. Chapter 9 Riley sat in the car looking at the text message. Lil called. Drop by the store when you have time, Kay. She kept her elbow bent out of habit. The small band-aid had long ago stopped the bleeding. She let her head fall back onto the headrest and closed her eyes. Being rich had many advantages. One of them was having great health insurance, which meant as soon as she called a doctor, she was ushered in for a scan and a blood test, neither of which had immediate results. Which was probably a good thing, because she was already regretting going. 
The second she'd smelled the familiar scent of disinfectant and plastic, her stomach had turned over and she'd almost thrown up again. She should never have gone. But now she had, and the test had been done, and it wasn't as though she had to call for the results. She could live in ignorant bliss, at least until things got too hard. And if and when they did, well, she had a doctor who had done the appropriate tests and who knew the diagnosis and who, hopefully, would prescribe the drugs she needed. It was a just-in-case scenario. But it did make everything just a tiny bit more real. She looked down at Caden's message again, and then around at the clean comfort of Caden's car. She'd borrowed it, and he hadn't even questioned her, just held out the keys. Because he was always there. He was always the dependable one, and she was beginning to think that part of the reason she was sick was because the guilt was eating away at her. She'd left him to deal with everything, and if that wasn't bad enough, now she'd come running home with the expectation that he was going to look after her, just as he'd looked after her mom and her dad. She owed Caden more than she could ever repay, she realized. She looked down at his message again. Helping Lil would make him happy. Seeing them all reunited, even if it was only for a few months, would make him happy. She blew out a long breath. It was time. She'd come home for a reason. There were loose ends to tie up. There were amends to be made, explanations to give, all the little things that would make her passing just a little easier. And Lil was as good a place to start as any, she supposed. If she thought about it logically, perhaps this wasn't the worst idea in the world. She would make her brother happy. It was the least she could do for him. She would take her own mind off her problems, which seemed more and more important. And perhaps she could put the whole Lil issue to bed. Maybe there was a way to have closure, to seal things off nice and neat. She'd been away a long time, and she'd missed a lot of things. But the hardest, fiercest thing had been Lil's friendship. Riley had always had Caden, always had her older brother to take care of her, entertain her, love her. But Lil had been different. Lil had been part of the family, and yet not quite. Always there, but not obliged by blood to love her or even like her. And though Riley had often been jealous of Lil, she'd also come to rely on the fact that Lil was there. Her face flushed now as she remembered that Lil had bought her her first box of tampons when she'd been too embarrassed to go to her mom. It had been Lil who had enticed her into telling her biggest secret. And Lil who had persuaded her to share that secret with Caden persuaded her that her precious brother would still love her, would never abandon her, would never be as angry, as hateful as her father. Because that had been the beginning of things. That dreadful, horrible year had all started with the weight of Riley's secret dragging her down and down until she'd known that she had to tell someone. And for once, it couldn't be Caden, and it couldn't be Lil, because... Instinctively, she'd known that this was too much for them all at once, and that they shouldn't carry the weight with her. She'd known she needed an adult's wisdom, an adult's help coming to terms with herself. But her mother had been dying already, so she turned to her father instead. She could remember so clearly the red rising in his cheeks, the way his eyes had flashed the horrible, terrible things he'd said to her. Lil had been the one that had found her, down by the lake, so cold and empty that she couldn't even cry. And it had been Lil that had forced the secret from her. And Lil that had laughed and congratulated her. And Lil that had convinced her that her father was in a bad place, that he was sick with worry about her mother, and that he'd come around. And he had apologized. He had hugged her. But he'd never, ever said that it didn't matter, that he loved her, that he'd always love her and nothing would change. Which was probably the right decision. 
because everything had changed. Which was why she'd been so reluctant to tell anyone that she thought she might like girls as well as boys, that she was confused and didn't know where she fit in, what to call herself, who she really was, because she hadn't wanted things to change. She was older now. She knew things always changed, knew it was inevitable. But back then, she'd been just young enough to think that her life could stay as happy and as almost perfect as it always had been. She took one more look at Caden's message. She could do this. She should do this for him, but also just a little for herself. She had changed, and Lil had too, and there was never going to be another chance to reconnect, to try and rebuild. Fifteen years was a long time. She didn't have much more time. She put the keys in the ignition and switched the engine on. Be with you in a sec, Lil's voice echoed from somewhere in the back of the store, and Riley walked over to the counter, content to wait. Her heart was beating hard and her mouth was dry, and she was kind of afraid of the reaction she was going to get. But she was determined that this was the next step, the right decision. How can I help? began Lil's voice, and then trailed off, and Riley turned to face her. She was almost the same. Her eyes were exactly the same, still piercing and bright blue and like oceans. Riley had to swallow twice before she could speak. I missed you, she finally said. And then Lil was walking slowly toward her, swerving at the last minute so that she went behind the counter and kept the wooden bar between them. It's been a long time, Lil said carefully. Riley nodded. I don't know what to say, said Lil looking down at the counter. And Riley screwed up all her courage to speak again. Then don't say anything, she said. She'd been thinking about this. Neither of us have to say anything. What happened, happened, and it was a long time ago, and it's over and done with. We're both adults now. We both love Caden, and we're both in the same town. So let's not say anything and just, just carry on. Do you think we can do that? I think I can, Riley said, and she was being honest. Can you? There was a pause, and then Lil nodded. Let bygones be bygones. Riley nodded again. She cleared her throat. And the cafe, she began. Lil sighed and looked up again, eyes burning blue. That was all on Caden, not me she said. Please don't feel obligated. I don't, Riley interrupted. But I am here. I do have experience, and, well, I'm kind of at a loose end, so it wouldn't be an imposition to help if you needed it. I can't offer you much, Lil said. I'm not asking for anything, interrupted Riley again. It would make Caden happy to see us working together, and I could use something to fill up my time. She paused and Lil was squinting at her, and for a brief moment, she could remember kissing soft lips. Unless you don't need the help, she said, sharply and more coldly than she'd intended. It was Lil that took a deep breath this time, and Riley could see it, feel it in the air. No, I could definitely use the help, Lil said. Okay, then. There was a long awkward pause, and then Lil smiled tentatively. I missed you, too. Riley felt a tiny piece of coldness crack inside her, a little warmth come into her heart. She smiled back. Things weren't the same. They could never be the same. But that was a good thing. She didn't need the past back again, not after the way things had finished. She held out her hand. So, we've got a deal then? Lil grinned and took the hand. We've got a deal, she said. And Riley was too busy squashing the butterflies in her stomach that came from touching Lil 
to worry about just what she was agreeing to. Chapter 10 This place isn't in as bad a shape as I thought, Riley said. She had a clipboard in one hand, and her hair was piled messily on top of her head. Yeah, uh, the bookstore was the priority, but we got a fair amount of work done here before, well, before. Riley put her clipboard down on what would one day be the cafe counter. Tough breakup, huh? Lil swallowed. Was this a conversation she really wanted to have? Having Riley in the store was different, confusing, uncomfortable, definitely, useful, certainly, tempting, unfortunately. She was all for not living a life full of regrets, and she truly believed that putting things behind them was the way to go. But she wasn't exactly sure what she was putting behind her. She still wasn't exactly sure what had gone wrong with her and Riley. She knew what had gone right. She could feel Riley's skin against her own every time she closed her eyes. Even now, fifteen years later, she could see Riley's bottle-green eyes looking into her own, heavy-lidded with lust, her chest rising and falling with deep breaths. This had to be a good thing, she told herself, working out the knots, getting back to a place where they could even be friends, a place where they could both smooth over whatever regrets they had, whatever regrets she was supposed to have. She didn't regret sleeping with Riley. She did regret sleeping with her best friend's sister, she regretted the damage that could have caused her relationship with Caden, with his whole family. She regretted taking Riley to her bed when the girl's mother was dying, and she'd probably been vulnerable and not in a state to make the best decisions. She couldn't bring herself to regret those precious minutes that they'd spent together, though. Those minutes when everything just felt so right, so perfect. If you don't want to talk about it, it's fine, Riley said now. Lil snapped back to reality. No, uh, no, I guess, yeah, it was a tough breakup. Barb and I had been together for a while. We were going to get married, and then, all of a sudden, we weren't. It was a bit like losing a piece of myself. I know how that feels, Riley said. She sounded so genuine and so sad, and Lil thought maybe, possibly, she might have been talking about their past. But when she looked over, Riley had picked up her clipboard again and was taking notes. Ten tables is probably the max I'd do here, Riley said, looking down at her paper. We've budgeted for twelve, said Lil. Hmm, I see that. But you're not thinking about the flow of traffic, the way people will need to move around the area. Trust me, ten will be better. The place will seem cramped with more than that. I bow to your expertise, then, Lil said, attempting a joke. Riley said nothing, and Lil spoke again to try and cover up the awkwardness. So, what brings you home, then? Caden said you just up and quit. The air got thicker. No big reason, Riley said eventually. Just needed a change of pace was all. Lil smiled. I'm guessing a small cafe in a town bookstore is a change of pace after being a cafe entrepreneur. And Riley laughed, letting Lil relax a little. You could say that. She looked like she was about to say more, but then a strange look passed across her face and Lil noticed that Riley's hand was shaking and sweat had started to break out on her forehead. Are you okay? She asked, taking a step toward her. Riley cleared her throat, then smiled tightly. Totally fine, she said. Can I see what's in the back room over there? Lil shrugged. Sure, it's just a small prep area and some storage. But Riley was already walking away and Lil was already watching her behind in her tight jeans and wondering whether she was really doing this for the right reasons. She did need help, she reminded herself, 
She didn't know what she would do if she gave the bookshop up, and Riley was the best person to help. Clearing the air was a good thing, making things less uncomfortable for Caden if Riley was planning on sticking around was a good thing. And yet, there was something about having Riley in such close proximity that kept bringing the past up again and again, like the tide beating against the shore. And Lil wasn't so sure that that was a good thing. She wasn't so sure that this wasn't about to blow up in her face. She wasn't so sure that she and Riley were as grown up and professional as they were desperately trying to be. Are you coming back here to help or not? Riley asked, sticking her head around the door. I can't find the damn light switch. I got it, Lil said. She took a deep breath and followed Riley into the back room. Lil's mouth was dry and her head was starting to ache, a sure sign that she'd gone way too long without coffee. She shifted the pile of books in her arms. Here, let me take some of those. Riley appeared out of nowhere and took the top of the pile. Lil felt her load lighten. Just put them on the counter, she said. So I think I've come up with a decent timeline, said Riley, depositing the books. If all goes well and you can get your builder in to finish the job, then I think we can do ten days to two weeks. That's soon, Lil was surprised. There's not actually that much to do. The basic bones are there. The biggest part will be the stocking and supplying, but I can do a lot of that online. I'll get most of what we need delivered for the first time, and then you'll need to resupply once a week or so, twice if you're especially busy. Me, Lil put her own pile of books down. Riley frowned. Or whoever you employ to work there, I suppose. There was something she hadn't thought of. Barb had been in charge of the cafe, and she'd been planning on working there. Now it looked as though Lil was going to have to hire someone. She really should have thought of that. She groaned, and her head throbbed. She really needed that coffee. She was just flicking the sign on the shop door to closed and reaching for the lock when Riley spoke. What are you doing? Locking up. I'm just going out back to make a coffee and take a bathroom break. It'll just be five minutes, Lil said. Riley coughed. Um, I'm here. Oh, yeah, of course. I'll bring you a coffee, too. Again, there was that laugh, and it gave Lil shivers down her spine. She'd heard it so many times, and yet it still made her mouth water and her heartbeat speed up. I mean, I can watch the store while you take a break. You don't need to close. Lil stared at her for a second and then realized she was right. She turned the sign back to open. Right, right, I'll be back in just a few minutes then, she said, and made her escape. Having someone around was going to take some getting used to. Having Riley around was going to take a lot of getting used to. But she could do this. They could do this. It was only going to be for a couple of weeks. They'd get used to each other again, bury the past as deep as they could, and then Riley's job would be done and they wouldn't be in such close proximity anymore. A thought that made Lil sadder than she'd expected. Christ, this had been a terrible idea. She was emotionally vulnerable and not in a great mental place. Bringing her ex in to work the shop had not been a good idea. Half the time she wanted to bang Riley back against a bookshelf and have her way with her. The other half of the time she wanted to banish her and tell her never to come back again. Two weeks she told herself as she sloshed coffee into two mugs. Two weeks, and this whole confusion will go away. We'll have mended our bridges and made Caden happy, and hell, maybe Riley will move away again, and the whole idea of having her home will be moot. She pushed her way back into the shop. Of course, Riley said, picking up the conversation again immediately. I can stay on for a little longer. Lil put the mugs down on the counter before her shaking hands could spill their boiling contents. 
uh, stay, she said hoarsely. For another couple of weeks or so. Train some staff, get things up and running. Once a system's in place, then things get easier. You could manage the place yourself. But those first couple of weeks can be rough. And Lil just nodded, not trusting herself to speak. Two weeks was becoming four. She wished that her feelings would decide one way or the other exactly what to think about Riley being back. Chapter 11 This was both better and worse than she'd expected. Worse because the awkward moments were more awkward. The moments when she suddenly remembered all that had happened and why she'd gone and why she was even here in the first place. Better because she'd forgotten. Forgotten what it was like to be around someone who knew her, who got her, who nearly understood her. And better because the project did interest her. She'd been off the shop floor for too long, negotiating, having meetings, bringing in financing. Being back here, right at the start of something, reminded her of why she'd opened her own cafe in the first place. It was like turning the clock back 15 years, except that was exactly what she didn't want to do. Because 15 years ago, she and Lil... Riley bent her head back over her stock list, but Lil was moving closer and Riley could smell her, the scent familiar and disturbing. And then a pile of books was put on the counter and she had no choice but to look up. Lil was tucking a blue strand of her hair behind her ear, and Riley saw for the first time just how complex the tattoo design on her arm was, flowers and vines intertwining together in bright colors. She looked away, her eyes catching the top book on the pile. Hey, I read this, she said. Me too, said Lil. I loved it. Me too, Lil said again. But didn't you hate... Max, finished Riley. Then she laughed as Lil nodded. Absolutely. Leaving Sarah like that when she was pregnant, totally unforgivable. He got his comeuppance, though, said Lil, stroking the cover of the book fondly. It's so satisfying when that happens, Riley said. And she was just about to regret saying anything that might end up bringing up the past when her phone started to ring. She hopped off her stool and gestured to Lil that she was going to take the call and hurried back to the cafe corner. She didn't take the call. By the time she was done wondering whether she should or not, the ringing had stopped and she was left relieved. Relieved that she didn't need to make a decision. Relieved that she was off the hook for a little bit longer. And then it started ringing again. Riley swallowed. Nope. No way could she do this. The number was stored in her phone. She knew it was the doctor's office, and she knew exactly why they were calling. Not that they'd tell her over the phone, of course. No, they'd tell her something banal, like she needed further testing. They'd wait until they had her ensconced in their office, in a comfortable chair with a box of tissues handily nearby, before they said anything. And she didn't need this. Not yet. Not now. She looked up and could see Lil's dark hair bent over her pile of books and was wondering what she was going to say when she found out. Maybe the news would make things better between them. It would at least explain why she was home. But then she wouldn't know if Lil was being caring because she wanted to care or because she was pitying her. And that didn't seem like any kind of solution at all. The phone rang out again, and there was silence. She shouldn't be here. Being close to Lil was a mistake. Bringing up old feelings was a mistake. She'd sort of assumed that after 15 years, emotions would have faded, like the color of the teenage posters on her bedroom wall. They hadn't, though. Lil had been her first crush, her first love, and those feelings couldn't be put away. They could be ignored, which was what she was currently doing, just like she was ignoring the phone calls. A voicemail icon popped up on her phone. How had life ever got so messy? Fifteen years ago, 
she'd made the decision to be independent, to take care of herself, to be efficient and self-sufficient, and to keep her life simple. And yet the second she set foot back in Amberley, life got all complicated and topsy-turvy again. She took a deep breath. Ignore. That was the word of the day. With quick fingers, she unlocked her phone and deleted the voicemail without even listening to it. She just needed to keep her head in the sand a little longer. Without warning, a spike of pain drove through her stomach. It was sharp enough that it made her gasp, and she screwed her hands into fists until the feeling ebbed. Her breath was shaky. Ignore. For as long as she could, at least. Stock lists were done, and Riley was perched on the counter, adding items to her online shopping cart. It must be strange living at home again, Lil said, adding books to the list on her own computer. It is, Riley said idly, concentrating on what she was doing. I can't imagine, Lil began. Riley looked up, and Lil's cheeks were pink in a way that made her light freckles stand out. Can't imagine what? Nothing, Lil said. Can't imagine having to go back to your childhood home, said Riley, angry now, and her voice harder. No, no, said Lil. She paused. That's not what I was going for at all. Right. Anger was hot in her stomach, and her muscles tensed until another jab of pain went through her. She bit her lip. Really, I wasn't implying anything like that, Lil said hurriedly. I was just thinking about how, how lively your house always was, how noisy and bright and full of life and love, and how hard it must be, too. She trailed off again. To see it empty, finished Riley. I wasn't thinking before I spoke, Lil said quietly. I'm sorry. I really didn't mean to bring up stuff. Riley took a breath. At least Lil was being honest, not avoiding the subject. One thing she'd always liked about Lil was her ability to attack a situation head on, even though it got her into trouble more often than not. It's weird, she said finally. It's strange to be there with just Caden, she shrugged. I kind of thought he'd have sold the place by now. I think he finds the memories comforting, Lil said. I'm not sure he ever thought about selling up, even after your dad was gone. Or maybe I thought that at least... He'd have started something of his own, a wife, a family, even a girlfriend, hell, a dog, I don't know, something to keep him company in that big, empty place. Lil snorted. Caden and women are not the best match in the world. Riley raised an eyebrow. Wait, is he? Lil laughed and goosebumps rose on Riley's skin. No, he's not gay. He's just completely incapable of going for a girl that would be good for him. He falls for supermodel lookers, or for married women, never for anyone that would settle down with him. I'm beginning to think that he doesn't really want to have someone. Which was ridiculous. Caden needed someone. Riley took a breath, because one day soon, Caden was going to be alone. Completely alone. One day soon, she was going to be gone. She hadn't really considered that before. The only woman I could really see Caden with is you, she said without thinking too much about it. Lil rolled her eyes. No, thanks. As cool as Kay is, I'm really not willing to switch teams for him. Fair enough, Riley laughed. But I have been putting some thought into this continued Lil, snapping a book closed and turning so that she was close enough to Riley that they were looking into each other's eyes. Carefully, Riley moved back an inch. You have? Lil looked away. I have. I think it's about time Caden went on at least one decent date, a date that could have a future, just so that he could see how things are supposed to work. 
Uh-huh, said Riley. Lil glanced over. I've been calling it Project Caden in my head. Riley snorted with amusement. I'm taking you haven't told Caden about this? No, said Lil. But I do have a couple of prospects in mind. There's a really nice woman who works at the computer store down the block, for example. Right, said Riley. Tell me everything you know about her. Lil crossed her legs and started talking, and Riley found herself being drawn into the plan, as though her life needed more confusion in it. But Caden should have someone. Caden was going to need someone. In her pocket, her phone vibrated again and again. She ignored it, just as she was ignoring the warmth in her belly as Lil talked, her blue eyes flashing and her hands gesturing. Thick as thieves, that's what Riley's mother had once called them. Sometimes she really could pretend that no time had passed at all. Chapter 12 Lil slid the book out from under the counter and handed it over. You're a godsend, Marge said. Well, I ordered the third one alongside the second, guessing that you were going to want it pretty soon. Clever as well as pretty. Don't you just have it all, said Marge, handing over a twenty to pay for the book. And speaking of clever, I see that our little discussion last week bore fruit. Lil opened the cash register to get change. It did, she allowed. And how's it going, then, with you two lovebirds back in the playground again? Lil laughed. We're not lovebirds, and this is no playground. You know what I mean, grumbled Marge. I do, sighed Lil. She looked over to the cafe. The builder's tape was gone, and tables were stacked up by the walls, it was getting there. Riley had certainly put her nose to the grindstone. There'd been no slacking, and having her in and out of the store was starting to feel almost normal. Almost. Expected, maybe, was a better word. So, prompted Marge. It's going okay, Lil said. It was. Okay was a good word. It was going okay in that they were being civil and polite and getting the work done, and that was the most important thing. On the other hand, it was tough sometimes to squash down her feelings. Not that she wanted to have them, she didn't at all. But every now and again, she'd catch a glimpse of Riley from the corner of her eyes, or she'd see a curl of hair against the pale skin of her neck, or she'd smell a trace of perfume, and her stomach would flip, and her pulse would race, and she'd need to sit down. Which was ridiculous, because she was in no position to start any kind of relationship with anyone. And Riley was strictly off limits. Hmm, the two of you will work things out properly. You need to have a good heart to heart, said Marge. You need to clear the air. Lil shook her head. This wasn't something she wanted to talk about with the town's biggest gossip hound. However, there was something that Marge might be able to help with, something that she and Riley hadn't quite managed to crack on their own. You haven't been to the computer store down the street, have you? She asked casually. I certainly have, said Marge, looking offended. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I'm technologically impaired. Lil ignored this. What do you know about the woman that works there, the blonde? Marge slid her book to one side, put her elbows on the counter, and started to talk. Lil leaned in and paid close attention. Riley handed Lil the knife, and Lil sliced open the top of the box. Her name's Beth, and according to Marge, she's single as a Pringle, Lil said. What about all those pictures on Facebook? Asked Riley, taking the knife back. She's got a huge family, apparently. Tons of brothers and cousins. But Marge says she's single and that she was even complaining about the lack of dating prospects in Amberley. 
That's because she hasn't met my brother yet, said Riley with a grin. Well, that's step number two. We've got to figure out a way to get them to meet. It's not going to be easy, Riley said. Kay gets all his computer stuff online. Leave it with me. I'll think of something. Lil started unwrapping mugs and placing them on the cafe's new bar. Do you remember when he had that crush on Angela Davies? Riley rolled her eyes. That stupid 11th grade cheerleader? Jesus, she was all we heard about at home for like weeks. Even your mom complained when her name came up, Lil said, remembering. She was all he talked about. And so far out of his league. We were cruel to him about it, said Lil. Sometimes you have to be cruel to be kind, Riley said. Anyway, we helped him out in the end. Yes, you put his love note in her locker, Lil said, the giggles already starting. Except it wasn't her locker at all. It was Dan Holland's, Riley laughed. And Caden avoided gym class for a month after because Dan kept asking him out on dates. At least Caden broke the news to him gently in the end. We weren't always mean to him. I mean, we didn't always gang up on him. Sometimes the two of you made my life hell, Riley said. Like when? The cups were stacking up now, and Lil could see that Riley had made a good choice. Simple and white with a thick handle, the cups were elegant and practical all at the same time. Like when you guys told me that snakes lived down the drains and if I spent too long in the toilet, they'd come up and bite me, said Riley. You were like five. I believed you, Lil smirked, which probably says more about you than about us. You two were mean. We were little kids said Lil. Anyway, things got better as we got older, didn't they? The Three Musketeers, Riley said quietly. The Three Musketeers, what Caden had called them all when they were old enough finally to be real friends, for the teasing to be over. Old enough that they were beginning to understand the world and their place in it. Old enough for feelings to start. You guys were always good to me, Lil said equally quiet. I don't think Caden had the balls to tease you, and I was too little, Riley said. She was stacking saucers to match the cups. No, I mean it, said Lil. I might not have said it at the time, but you guys, all of you, your mom and dad too, you were always so good to me. You always made me feel included, welcome. You... She choked for a second, then made a second attempt. You made me feel like I was part of the family. You didn't have to do that. There was the clattering of cups and saucers being stacked for a few seconds. Nothing else. I don't think we ever really thought too much about it, Riley said finally. I mean, maybe my parents did, but Caden and I didn't. You were there, and that was our reality. My reality was being alone in a big, empty house with a stack of takeout menus stuck to the fridge, Lil said, remembering just how lonely her house had been. Sometimes with a stack of cash on the kitchen counter, because Mom and Dad were going to be gone for a few days. Riley stopped stacking. I envied you, she said. When we were kids, I mean. I envied you, the money and the big house and all that stuff. I guess I never really thought about the downsides. Neither did I, mostly, Lil said. Not once you guys had practically adopted me, anyway. For a second there, it almost looked like Riley was coming in for a hug, and Lil was already mentally preparing herself, already schooling herself to react properly, to squash her feelings down again. Then the moment passed, and Riley was picking up her knife, scoring open another box. We could be trouble, she said, 
not looking at Lil. Like that night with the fireworks? A night when Caden had almost lost his fingers and the Winters family shed had gone up in flames. Lil remembered it as though it had happened yesterday. Not a day went by when she didn't realize how lucky she'd been to have friends like Caden and Riley. Not a day went by when she didn't curse herself for how close she'd come to wrecking everything. But things had already been falling apart by then, she reminded herself. Their perfect little world had already been crumbling, hadn't it? And then there was a crash and the sound of china shattering, and Lil turned in time to see a flash of white descend over Riley's face and sweat bead on her brow. At her feet, there were shards of broken plate. Jesus, what's wrong? Lil said, stepping forward without thinking about it. She reached out, clasping Riley's upper arms in her hands, feeling her skin clammy and sticky. Are you all right? What is it? And Riley was looking up at her, and the paleness was flooding away, being replaced by a rosy pinkness. And those green eyes were looking into hers, and Lil felt herself falling. Just the same way she'd fallen before. Just the same way she'd been when she'd stood at the top of the basement stairs, and Riley had practically, literally, fallen into her arms. And the dam had suddenly broken, and her feelings had come rushing out, and Riley had tilted her head, and Lil had parted her lips instinctively. And then the two of them had been kissing, and her heart had been beating way too hard. Lil took a long, shuddering breath. That had been fifteen years ago, she told herself. That wasn't now. But Riley was tilting her head again, and Lil didn't know how she was going to stop this or if she even wanted to. Chapter 13 Lil's eyes were glittering in the shadows, and her hands were coming closer, and Riley could feel the warmth of her and could feel herself being drawn in closer and closer. Until a car horn sounded outside on the street, and she was snapped back to reality, pulling back so fast she almost got whiplash. Her breathing was fast and shallow, and Lil raised an eyebrow, and the feelings that were starting to drain away came back harder and deeper than before. Riley felt a flood of warmth inside her, felt her pulse catch up with her heart, felt an aching need stronger than she had ever experienced. What was that? Lil said, voice hoarse. Riley cleared her throat. I'm pretty sure you know what it was. Lil nodded and backed off a step. I, uh, I'm not sure I know what to say. Riley's cheeks burned red, and she still felt that pulsing between her legs. And if Lil drew her in again, she wasn't sure she could stop her. Except that she had to. This couldn't happen, for a million and one reasons. She heard Lil take a deep breath and then blow it out. One of us needs to be the grown-up here, Lil said. I thought we were putting the past behind us. I thought this was all water under the bridge, Riley said, even though she'd been just as complicit in the near kiss. We can't bury something that ain't dead, said Lil. Riley's lips twitched into a smile. Right. And whilst I agree that moving on is a good thing, I think we might need to talk about this just a little. Christ, this was not what she needed. Why? Because you left me. Riley's legs started to shake. I left you? You ran just as soon as you could, Ryle. What was I supposed to think about that? What am I supposed to do with that? Did I do something wrong? Did you? It's all very well burying the past, but I don't even understand what happened. And now you're back, and... Lil's cheeks were turning pink. I left you? Riley said, the warmth inside her slowly turning into anger. I left you. Is it any surprise that I went? 
You were ashamed of me, Lil. Don't even try to deny it. After everything I went through with my dad, you should have known better. But you were ashamed, and that was reason enough to walk out, even without everything else that was going on with my parents. Lil was holding on to the table, knuckles white, and she slowly forced herself to relax. Riley could see the effort. Then she moved, pulled down two chairs, and put one on either side of the table. Sit, Lil said. Riley did as she was told. We're very much not on the same page about this, Lil went on. And that's stupid. We both have our own side of the story, so let's tell it. Let's find out what we're thinking here. She was being reasonable, but then Lil had always been reasonable. Maybe that was why they hadn't had this conversation before, because Riley hadn't wanted to hear reason. Not that it was going to change things. Animal attraction aside, this was never going to work out. Ever. Fine, she said. Fine. You want to know what I think happened? What I know happened? Lil nodded. You came to me. We... The images were clear in her head. The memories hadn't faded over time. She could still see Lil, feel her the soft hands, the clumsy kisses, the building excitement inside her, the heat. We what? Lil said patiently. We did what we did, said Riley lamely. And it was, it was right. It was good. Life suddenly started to make sense to me. And then you said it. Said what? Lil prompted. When we were done, when you were leaving, getting up, pulling your t-shirt back on, you said, don't tell Caden. The words sounded stupid out in the open, but it wasn't so much the words as the way they'd made her feel. Riley, I... You knew what I'd been going through with my dad. You knew how he reacted to me coming out. And then you say something like that. You were just another person that wanted me to hide that was ashamed of who I was and what I'd become, Riley interrupted. Lil sighed, and Riley swallowed. It felt strange to say these things aloud. It felt almost good, like a weight was being shifted. Riley, that's really not how I meant it, really not. I meant exactly what I said, I didn't want you to tell your brother, at least not then, not until we knew what was going on between us. Why? challenged Riley. Because I was as confused as you about what we were doing. Because your mother was dying and everyone around us had other worries and this seemed to pale in comparison. And because... because I was selfish. Selfish? Riley asked. Lil nodded. Your family was so perfect. You let me be a part of it, and I didn't want to lose that. Yes, part of me was afraid that I'd lose something if people found out. But that didn't mean that I wanted to keep what we were doing a secret forever. It just meant... It just meant that we were young and confused and vulnerable, and there were other things going on. Riley stared down at the table. So reasonable. So right. You weren't ashamed of me. Of us. Of what we'd done. Hell no. Lil's response came so fast that Riley couldn't help but believe it. She felt a smile beginning. Hell no? Uh-huh. Are you kidding me? You were. You are. So beautiful, so perfect. I wasn't ashamed of you, Riley. I just couldn't believe my luck. I couldn't believe that you liked me as much as I liked you. She looked up, and Lil was watching her, the blue stripe in her hair catching the light. I did like you, she said softly. I liked you so much. So did I, said Lil. And yes, I was afraid of Caden's reaction. 
I was afraid of destroying this little perfect thing we'd all created together. But that didn't mean I liked you any less. We weren't the perfect family, Riley began. To me you were, said Lil. To me, you, us, the family, were as perfect as things could get. Perfect enough that all I've ever wanted, I think, is to recapture what we all once had. A fleeting sadness passed over her. I think that's why Barb left in the end, maybe. I pushed her into too much perfection. Riley rubbed at her face with her hands. Where does this leave us now? Lil asked. And it was clear what she was implying, what she was asking without using the real words. They'd come so close to touching, to kissing, and it had seemed so right but it couldn't happen. She was still taking in what Lil had told her, trying to understand that maybe she'd been mistaken, maybe she'd read something into Lil's words that hadn't been there, but that didn't make everything just go away overnight. And there were other concerns now, of course. If Lil had been mad that she'd left the first time, that she'd run away after her mother's funeral, and then who knew how furious she'd be if Riley just went and died on her? It leaves us here, Riley said firmly. Two adults who could have communicated better in the past, but who have cleared the air right now. Two people who've been working well together and who can now work even better together because we understand each other. Right, said Lil but she sounded sad, almost disappointed. Perhaps she wanted more, but there was no more to give, not now. Riley felt a prickling of tears behind her eyelids. She was blinking them away, wondering how she was going to explain herself, how she was going to hide her tears, when the shop door opened. Your chariot awaits, my lady, Caden shouted, letting in a rush of cold air. Lil jumped up as though they'd been caught doing something they shouldn't have been doing, and Riley got up more slowly. Just gotta hit the can, she said, hurrying off to the bathroom before Lil could notice anything was wrong. It was better this way. Yes, she could admit to herself that she still had feelings for Lil, but the feelings couldn't lead anywhere. She wasn't going to set Lil up for loss. That was hardly fair. Caden's loss, on the other hand, was inevitable, and something she really needed to start working on. She needed to tell him. Or at least get him a girlfriend, just like Lil was planning, so that he could have someone to look after him. As she pushed into the bathroom, she glanced back over her shoulder. Lil and Caden were deep in conversation, heads together as though sharing a secret. And when Lil turned to look at her, there was something in her eyes that Riley really didn't understand. Chapter 14 Lil stared at Caden in disbelief. Run that by me one more time? It all makes sense, he said, hazel eyes troubled. I mean, it's a good reason to come home, isn't it? I suppose, Lil allowed. But I heard her, Lil. My bedroom is right next to her bathroom. She's thrown up at least three times since she's been home, and those are the times that I'm around to hear. Which, now that I'm saying that out loud, sounds kind of gross. It is, Lil put in. She's pregnant. It's the only explanation. It explains the throwing up. It explains how weird she's been since she got back. It explains her borrowing my car to drive to doctor's appointments. It explains why she's given up her awesome job and come back here. I suppose, said Lil, doubtfully. And she doesn't want to tell us yet because it's too soon, he went on. Lil could hear the excitement in his voice. Women do that, right? You're supposed to wait until the first three months are over or something. How do you know that? I looked it up online, said Caden, 
and he was grinning. And then Riley was coming back from the bathroom and Caden was inviting Lil to dinner and she was refusing. She needed time to think about all this, time to process. Have a good night, she called after them as she locked the shop door. Pregnant. Could it be? Maybe she didn't want it to be true. She'd been on the verge of telling Riley that she was still having feelings back there. They'd talked about the past, it had all come out, and it was so silly, so unimportant, that Lil wondered why she'd been hung up on it all these years. There was no way she was ashamed of Riley. And if Riley gave her another chance, she was determined to prove that. Or in the heat of the moment, she had been. In the heat of the moment back there, in the quiet of the shop, She'd seriously considered taking Riley's hand, saying things that now it was dark and she was alone, she might have regretted. True, they could give things another go, or at least 15 minutes ago there might have been a chance. But Lil was assured now that it was the hormones talking. She was dumped and lonely, and Riley was just as cute as she'd been back in high school. And if she was pregnant, well... That was just another reason that this couldn't work. Aside from the fact that Lil still had no idea how Caden would react to anything, and that she was recovering from Barb, and that she'd vowed to be a lonely cat lady. See? All those reasons why she couldn't pursue any kind of hormonal-driven feelings she might be having for Riley. Sound and logical. She went upstairs letting herself into the apartment and feeding the cats. Then she curled up on the couch with her newest book, and Lucky, Chance, and Fortune joined her one by one until she was lying with a bundle of fur. This was how her life was supposed to be. She should get used to it. For the next few days, she kept a close eye on Riley. Was Caden right? To be honest, Lil's experience with pregnancy was limited, and by limited, she meant non-existent. She'd certainly never been pregnant, and she hadn't ever been around a pregnant woman either. She had a hazy idea that the woman was supposed to bloom, whatever the hell that meant. But as far as she could see, Riley just looked super pale and occasionally had a look on her face as though she was trying to focus her way through something painful. But then, some women did get sick, didn't they? Didn't that English princess get so sick she had to go to hospital? Lil tried to focus on her orders for the next month. But Riley was buzzing around the cafe getting decor set up, and it was very hard to concentrate. And then there was the bigger concern. Where there was a baby, there was presumably a father. And since Riley had appeared in Amberly alone, it seemed fair to assume that the guy was out of the picture. Which, in a way, was sweet. Sweet that Riley had come back to her big brother for his support. Caden would be an amazing uncle. So what about Project Caden, then? Riley said. Lil found that she'd been so busy thinking that Riley had snuck up on her and was standing on the other side of the counter— She'd just been thinking about Caden. Was Riley reading her mind? What about him? She asked suspiciously. Not Caden, Project Caden, said Riley. My big brother needs a partner in crime, so what are we going to do about it? Lil scratched her nose. Well, I suppose we have to engineer a meeting. That seems like the best plan, and since Caden won't set foot in the computer store, according to you, then we need to get them both on neutral territory. How are we going to do that without it seeming weird? Asked Riley. Lil let her eyes stray down. Was Riley putting on weight? Was there any sign there of pregnancy? In leggings and a t-shirt, that should have been easy to tell, but it really wasn't. She screwed up her nose in frustration. Okay, okay, this was none of her business. Riley would tell her when she was good and ready and Lil was going to be happy for her. She vowed to herself that when Riley was finally ready to make her announcement, she was going to act surprised and be overjoyed. Come on, there's gotta be an idea rattling around in there. 
Riley pushed. She tucked a stray curl behind her ear, and Lil saw the soft skin of her neck, and her legs felt shaky. What about here? She asked. Here? No offense, Lil, but Caden isn't exactly the biggest reader. No, but this whole thing here was his idea, right? I guess. Riley sounded doubtful, but Lil was thinking on her feet. The cafe was almost ready to open, almost, and Riley had done a fantastic job. She'd really been a taskmaster, and the place looked wonderful. So perhaps it was time to show it off. What about an opening party for the cafe? Lil said. Huh? Yeah, actually, that's a pretty good idea. I mean, good publicity is never a bad thing. We should get people in here, let them know that we're here, get the word out. A sound business decision, grinned Lil. The fact that Riley was now using the word we to describe the business was not lost on her. And as an added bonus, we can get a little personal business attended to as well. Riley leaned on the counter, and her T-shirt dropped far enough that Lil could see her cleavage. A very distracting sight. Pregnant women got bigger breasts, right? She allowed her eyes to slide back to the view for a second, then tore herself away. It felt kind of perverted to sneak looks like that. I get why Caden will come, Riley said. But what about Computer Girl? Beth, you mean, Lil said. Right, Beth. Well, that's on you. You said to leave the plans to you, and so far you've come up with squat. So I nominate you to get Beth to the opening party. Riley groaned. Some of us have been kind of busy over here, you know. He's your brother, Lil pointed out. He's your best friend. And the party was my idea, so I've come up with a solid half of the plan already, finished Lil. You can find a way to get Beth here. Fine, fine. I'll think of something, I guess. Riley stood up straight again. Now I've got a job for you. Uh-huh, said Lil, distracted now by the curve of Riley's cheek, by the length of her eyelashes. I've narrowed down the coffee roastery options to two, so I need you to taste both and tell me which you prefer. Lil fake sighed. Only the hardest jobs for the boss, she said. Riley rolled her eyes. Give me two minutes and I'll be back here with the options. Lil watched her go. It was fine to look, she decided, at least for now. But the truth of the matter was that Riley was carrying someone else's child, and apart from anything else, she almost certainly wasn't in a position to start any kind of new relationship. Having a baby was stressful enough, surely. Plus, Lil reminded herself, she was on the rebound herself. It wouldn't be fair on Riley to start anything, not when she was so unsure of what she really wanted in life. Not when she knew deep down that she couldn't have the kind of life she wanted, that the perfection she was looking for was out of her reach, that she'd driven Barb away with her ideas of an ideal life and marriage and everything else. No, it was better to sit back and let the world go on without her. She had her shop, she had her cats, she had Caden. And she could look, she told herself again, watching Riley cross the cafe. She could always look. Chapter 15 The woman pressed an icon on the iPad. It's right there, she said. Aha, said Riley. Got it. Then I just add another account for whoever I have working for me. Exactly. You can do that easily. Let me show you. Riley tuned out. She really didn't need a tutorial on how to use the ordering software for the cafe, but it was the best excuse she could think of to go into the computer store. And to be fair, things were working out pretty nicely. She had to admit that Lil had good taste, 
Beth was tall and blonde, but she also had freckles and a snub nose, so she was half model and half girl next door. She was also smart and friendly and funny, and the more Riley talked to her, the more sure she was that Caden was going to love her. If he ever got the chance to meet her, that was. You're my savior, said Riley, as Beth was finishing up her demonstration. We're about to open the place, and I can't be wasting time missing orders, or worse, losing them. Nothing worse than a lost coffee, Beth said with a grin. Exactly. Now all I have to do is plan this damn opening party, and I'm set. Where is this place exactly? asked Beth. Riley didn't know if she was being polite or if she was truly interested, but it didn't matter. She just needed to get the girl to drop by. Oh, you know, that bookstore, The Bookworm? It's right inside there, she said. Ah, I've been meaning to go in there. I keep walking past it on my way to work, and I never seem to have the time, said Beth. And now she really did look interested. You must be busy, what with work and... and stuff, Riley finished lamely. She was angling to get more information, but she really hadn't put enough thought into this. There's definitely a lot of work and not enough stuff, laughed Beth. But now that I know you're there, I'll totally come by. Actually, Riley said, spotting an opening, you'd be doing me a huge favor if you could. Are you free next Friday? Beth frowned but nodded. Great, it's our opening party, and I'm just really paranoid that no one's going to come. There'll be free snacks and all the coffee you can drink, she said. You can browse the bookstore and I'll be there. I could use a friendly face or two. Yeah, that'd be really cool, Beth said. Her face was open and friendly, and Riley was satisfied with a job well done. One half of the perfect couple was in the bag. Now she had to persuade her brother. Caden was stretched out on the couch in the living room, feet dangling off the arm. Riley slapped at his ankles until he lifted his legs long enough for her to sit down. So, what are you up to next Friday? She asked. He picked up the remote to turn the TV down. Nada. What do you need me for? The cafe opening party? Riley asked. Around six or so. You're gonna come, right? Are you kidding? This was all my idea. Caden said, of course I'll be there. I'm proud of you. Riley shifted uncomfortably. Caden hadn't been there when she opened her very first coffee shop. She hadn't invited anyone. And it was unfair, she realized now. She'd run away. She'd wanted to be independent and alone and out of the drama that her family was becoming. But Caden had never been anything but supportive. Caden had welcomed her home with open arms and minimal questions, and, she understood now, she'd truly missed him. Maybe leaving had been a mistake. After talking things through with Lil and seeing her brother now, she could accept that maybe she'd made a bad decision, or a flawed one, at least. Perhaps she could have stuck around, seen how things played out. At the time, though, it had seemed so right. Her mother gone, her father unaccepting, her heart broken by Lil's shame about what they'd done. The thought of Caden finding out about it all and being angry or hurt. Walking away had seemed like the best thing. Whatever Lil thought, the Winters family had never been perfect. Christoph Winters had a temper and knew how to use it, Though he never laid a hand on either of his children, his words could cut. And her mother? Riley had mixed feelings about her mother. Dana Winters had always been there. There'd always been a hot meal on the table, cookies in the jar, a refrigerator full of food, and closets full of clean clothes. But somehow, it had always seemed to Riley that her mother was lesser, that taking care of a husband and a family had made her mother weaker, less happy, less ambitious for herself. Selfishly, she loved that her mom was home all the time. But when Dana lay dying, 
She couldn't help but wonder if her mom had wanted more out of life, if she regretted now that she had put others' needs before her own. Anything else you want to talk about? Caden asked. Riley squeezed his leg. Nah, that was it. Just wanted to make sure that you were in the loop and that you weren't going to make other plans, that's all. There was a pause. Then Caden said, You sure? Riley narrowed her eyes at him. Yeah, of course I'm sure. Why? He shrugged. No reason. Just, well, just, I want you to know that I'm here for you. If there's anything you want to talk about, no judgment or anything, I'm a big boy, and I'm ready for whatever news you have. No news, Riley said, but her heart was jumping in her chest. That's okay, then, said Caden, but his face had dropped a little, and he looked almost disappointed. What had he heard? The doctor had rung several more times on her mobile, and she deleted another two voicemails. Had she listed the house phone number as well as her cell number? She couldn't remember. But surely a doctor's office wouldn't tell a non-patient anything about a patient, would they? Or was it Lil? Maybe Lil had said something to him. Maybe Lil was trying to make up for past mistakes and she'd spilled their whole history to Caden and Kay was just waiting now for her to come clean about it, for her to tell him herself. The weight of his legs pressed on her lap. No, Lil couldn't have done that. Not so soon. She wouldn't have. Riley shook her head a little, reminding herself that she needed to stay on track Thinking about Lil made her lose focus somehow. A few nights ago, they'd almost kissed. They'd come so close. Even now, every time she saw Lil coming toward her, it made her heart skip a beat. Maybe in a different time, in a different place, this all could have worked out. Maybe way back then, if she'd talked to Lil instead of just running away, then her life would have been different. Even now, if her personal situation was different, she might consider letting herself fall for Lil again. Except she wouldn't. Because if her personal situation were different, she wouldn't be here at all. She would be out in the world, growing her business, proving to everyone how strong and independent she was, not compromising herself or weakening herself with a relationship. Ironic, really that the one thing that brought her back and reconnected her with Lil was the one thing keeping them apart. Caden moved, and she knew that he was looking at her. She had no idea what he knew or what he thought he knew. She just knew that now was not the time to discuss anything. The time would come. When? asked the voice in the back of her head. Soon, she promised herself. When the cafe was open, when Caden had had a successful first date with Beth, when his life was more stable and happier, then she'd tell him. Her stomach cramped a little, just enough pain to remind her of why she'd come home. I know you're there for me, she said quietly. Always, Caden said. Little did he know just how much she was going to need him. She painted a smile on her face. What do you say to a pizza? Uh, hello, pizza. She groaned and punched his leg. You know what I mean, idiot, a pizza and a six-pack? My idea of heaven. She pushed his legs aside and got up. She hoped that Beth didn't have aspirations toward five-star meals and fancy restaurants. Nothing made Caden happier than pizza and beer. He was a simple soul, for the most part. Grab some breadsticks, too, he said, turning the sound back up on the TV. Anything for you, she said, and she meant it. Chapter 16 Morning sun streamed in through the windows and sent dust dancing through the air as Lil opened the shop. She stretched, enjoying the warmth of the light. It wouldn't be long now until the snow came, 
Another month or two at most. Sooner, if it was going to be a bad year. She hugged herself. She loved the snow. She loved those early, dark evenings when she could snuggle up inside with her book. When no one wanted her to go on hikes or to bars or anywhere else. In a previous life, Lil was pretty sure that she'd been a hermit. Actually, she was pretty sure she'd be one in this life if she could get away with it. She was just enumerating all the reasons she had for actually being a part of society, which mostly included shopping for chocolate and buying cat food, when Riley pushed open the door. Good morning, good morning, she chirped. Lil turned, and the sight caught her off guard for a second. Riley was illuminated in the light, her hair gleaming red and dark, her skin softened by the glow, her whole body outlined with all its curves and dips. Lil just about choked on her breath. She had to remind herself to breathe again. Morning, she eventually managed. She turned away, which made things easier. You sound happy today? So should you be said Riley, who'd obviously noticed nothing was wrong. I'm just doing finishing touches. You should have a working cafe by the end of today, give or take a cracked plate or two. Wow, said Lil. She turned back and Riley's eyes were shining. You've done an amazing job. I get now why you were so successful with corner coffee. Eh, it was just being in the right place at the right time, shrugged Riley. I just so happened to start a coffee shop when the artisan coffee boom hit, that's all. 90% luck. 90% hard work, I'm sure, Lil countered. Riley grinned, and Lil's heart just about stopped beating. Well, let's call it 50-50. And I'm in and out, I'm afraid. She was already walking over to the cafe, picking up a bunch of papers and then coming back. Running to the suppliers to tick the last things off my list, she said, waving the papers at Lil. Then I'm picking up menus at the printers, and hopefully I should be back sometime this afternoon. Lil nodded and managed a smile, and then Riley was leaving and Lil was watching her go. With a sigh, she put her elbows on the counter and her head in her hands. What was she doing? Yearning after someone she couldn't have and shouldn't even want, this was ridiculous. There was a list a mile long why she and Riley couldn't start anything. The fact that Riley almost certainly didn't want to was right at the top of that damn list. Was this really all it took? There had been no process of falling in love here. One minute she'd been regular old Lil, then Riley walked in and she'd been Lil in love. No, that wasn't exactly true. There had been a process of falling in love, but it had happened 15 years ago, and it hadn't needed to happen again because, because, Lil realized, she'd never actually fallen out of love with Riley. Which didn't mean she could act on anything now, she reminded herself. That would be foolish and wrong and would only end in disaster, right? She straightened up and started unpacking the deliveries that had arrived overnight. She tried not to think about Riley's pregnancy, though it was kind of hard not to. Riley as a mother, the idea made Lil melt inside. And there was a good side to all this. There was no way that Riley was going to skip town once the cafe was open. She couldn't. She had a baby to have, and she obviously wanted that to happen in Amberley. So... She was going to stick around, and Lil would have to see her. She'd have to watch her day by day, see the light glinting in her hair, watch her smile gently as she pushed a stroller down the sidewalk, see her grow ever more distant, ever more unattainable. The shop bell dinged. It's only me, don't go getting all excited, Marge grumbled as she came in. Honestly, this weather... Looks like it's the height of summer with all this sun, but then it's colder than a witch's tit out there. Marge, chided Lil. Oh, untwist your knickers. When you're as old as I am, you get to curse when you like. Lil sighed. 
She knew that Marge wasn't as grumpy as she came across. She also knew what Marge wouldn't admit to herself. Marge was lonely. Her kids had gone. Her husband was dead. And coming into the bookshop was her way of getting some conversation into her life. What can I help you with? She asked more kindly. Nothing, actually, sniffed Marge. Lil raised a questioning eyebrow. I just popped in to see how things were going here. Nearly finished, Lil said. You're coming to the opening on Friday, right? Wouldn't miss it for the world, said Marge. And what about you and her highness? Lil let both eyebrows shoot up this time, and Marge sighed. Why do you think I come in here, Lil? Lil just about bit her tongue off trying not to answer that one. She didn't want Marge to think that she pitied her because in truth, she really didn't. Or not much, anyway. You need someone to check up on you, Marge said. You've been depressed since Barb left and your parents aren't around, so I'm doing the honors. But, but nothing, said Marge. You do the same for me, and I owe your dad a few favors. Plus, I like coming in here. I like you. You deserve a good life, Lil, believe it or not. I wouldn't know about that, Lil said, taken by surprise by the conversation, wondering how she'd never realized that she needed Marge's caring just as much as Marge might need hers. Marge snorted. Bullshit. You deserve happiness, as do most people. If you're lucky, you might even get it with Riley Winters this time around. Lil gave a weak smile and opened her mouth to speak, but Marge got there first. Don't go denying it. It's plain as day that you're still head over heels for the girl. Don't go getting your hopes up, Marge, Lil said, finally finding her voice. It can't work out. Because it didn't work out last time, asked Marge. She rolled her eyes and patted her gray curls. Wrong place, wrong time, she said. Which doesn't mean that now is or isn't the right place and right time. Life has a way of springing surprises. Yeah, this surprise is bigger than most, said Lil. On average, around seven and a half pounds from what she knew about babies. Huh, well... I can see you're in a contrary mood this morning, so I'll get out of your way. I'll see you on Friday for your little shindig, Marge said, already turning away. Lil shook her head as Marge let herself out. It was only when she was gone that Lil realized she'd had a question that had gotten buried in Marge's romantic advice. Just what kind of favors did Marge owe her father? She really needed to get to the bottom of this friendship between her parents and Marge. Something had happened there. She was sure of it. She just didn't know what. It was dark outside, and the front door was locked, and Riley was holding a menu in her hands. Come on, you should do this, she said. Do what? asked Lil, standing up and rubbing at her back. She'd been scrubbing spots out of the carpet, and her spine was complaining. Put the last menu on the last table, Riley said, pushing the menu into her hand. Then we're pretty much done. Lil grinned and plonked the menu down unceremoniously onto the only empty table, and Riley laughed. There you go, a fully functional bookstore cafe. All thanks to you, Lil said quietly. It was a joint project, countered Riley, and I've loved every second of it. Seriously, said Lil, thinking that Riley couldn't have possibly loved their awkward beginnings. Seriously, Riley said more quietly. Then she turned, and she was close, and Lil's heart was speeding up, and Riley was opening her arms, and they were hugging. It took every fiber of Lil's being to stop herself clinging to Riley's warm body, to stop herself drawing back just enough to brush Riley's lips with her own, to stop herself pushing Riley onto the nearest table, and... 
She took a deep breath and pulled away. The place looks amazing, doesn't it? Riley beamed. And Marge was right about one thing. Lil was undeniably head over heels in love with Riley Winters. But she was wrong about this being the right time and the right place. Lil didn't think there could ever be a right time and right place. Not after what they'd already had. Chapter 17 The place was buzzing, and Riley was trying hard to be enthusiastic. The gripping pains in her stomach were making that hard, however. She grimaced and then forced herself to smile. The cafe was open, the barista she'd hired was doing an efficient job, and the caterers had popped champagne and laid out a spread. All around her, people were browsing books, talking, sipping at drinks, and Riley was satisfied. Satisfied that she'd done a good job, and that she hadn't lost her touch. This place was going to be a gold mine, and she hoped that Lil would be happy too. Because she'd come to realize Lil had hurt just as much as she had. It was pointless blaming Lil for what had been, after all, a teenage misunderstanding. Lil should be happy, which would make Caden happy. Which was just about when she saw a blonde head bobbing above the crowd, so Project Caden was about to bear fruit. She'd worried all afternoon that Beth wasn't going to show up. Hey, she managed to catch Beth up just as Lil swooped in from the other side. You must be Beth, Lil said. Riley's told me all about you. Hold on a second, said Riley. Caden, come over here, meet Beth. It was all part of the plan. Don't give anyone time to think about what was happening. Just let nature work her magic. Either this was going to be a success or not. It wasn't like either Riley or Lil could influence the outcome. Lil flashed a smile at Riley. This is my brother, Riley said, as Caden came over. Pleased to meet you, Caden said obediently, but he was already looking her up and down. His smile was already becoming softer, nicer somehow. And my best friend, Lil put in. You know, Beth works in the computer store down the street. Huh? said Caden. But they weren't quite done yet. Beth was starting to look shell-shocked, and Riley crossed her fingers behind her back. Speaking of which, Lil added, I just got some books in over there in the comp sci section that might interest the two of you. Let me show you, Riley said quickly, looping her arm through Beth's and then her brother's so that she was practically dragging them along. Caden, you really should read more, you know. And then she was depositing them in front of the appropriate shelf and making her getaway. She was just close enough to hear Caden say, Do you think this might be a setup? And to hear Beth laugh in response, before she rounded a corner and hid herself behind a shelf. She peeked over the top and saw Beth take a step toward Caden as Caden tilted his head and grinned. Huh? This might be the one, she thought. Then she laid her head against the cool of the bookshelf as another pain wrenched through her stomach. Caden deserved to be happy. So did Lil. Hell, for that matter, so did she. But there was a problem now. Well, there'd been a problem for a while, but it was much more immediate now. The cafe was opening. She looked over the shelf again. Caden was laughing with Beth. She glanced over at Lil, who was talking to a gray-haired customer. Lil was set up in a successful business. And Riley? Well, her excuses for not coming clean were rapidly running out. She had to come to terms with the fact that her time wasn't limitless, that her distractions weren't going to be distracting for much longer. It was becoming time to be honest, which scared the hell out of her. She watched Lil tuck her hair behind her ear, and a pang of heartache ran through her. Lil. In a different time and place, things could have been... Well, they could have been different. If they'd communicated better, things probably would have been different. They were certainly different people now. One thing hadn't changed, though. The way Lil made her skin prickle the way she made her pulse race and her mouth go dry. No, 
Lil had the same effect on her she'd had for as long as Riley could remember. Behind her, she could hear Caden laughing again. She'd miss that. Miss the intimacy. Miss the excitement of meeting someone new. More, though, she'd miss the feeling of being held in someone's arms. Hell, she'd miss sex. And she'd miss the warm glow after, when the world was right and clear for a few hours, when everything was perfect. Lil was bending her head to listen to a short woman talking to her, and just for a moment, Riley could think that things could be the way she wanted. Just for a moment, she could imagine a world, this world, where she could walk up to Lil and put her arm around her waist and whisper the truth into her ear. Tell her that the feelings were there and that she wanted another chance, a chance to do it right, a chance to be a grown-up in love instead of a pining teenager. Her stomach clenched again and she gritted her teeth. But she couldn't do that. Even if she really honestly wanted to, which she did, she admitted to herself now. She really did. She couldn't have Lil watch her die. She couldn't bear to lose her again. Not after that first time. She took a deep breath before moving out of her hiding place. Life was what it was. There was no point in wishing for the impossible. And she went off to the back room to see if she could find any more Advil in her purse. The party was winding down, the chatter getting more raucous as people finished the champagne and headed out into the night. Most of them, Riley suspected, would be going for more drinks elsewhere. That was something else she'd miss. Not that she'd ever been a big partier, but going out with friends, chatting over wine, laughing into the night. She'd miss that. She was stacking plates, but she couldn't stop thinking about all the things that she wouldn't do again. The thoughts were painful, but she kept prodding at them. Like a kid with a loose tooth, she just couldn't help herself. Here, let me take those, Lil said. Riley smiled and let Lil take her stack of plates. At least the Advil seemed to have worked. She wasn't creased over with pain anymore, though how long the relief would last was anyone's guess. Hey, sis. Riley looked up to see Caden standing by one of the shelves, Beth by his side. Hey there yourself, she said. Caden was grinning, and she couldn't remember ever seeing him so happy. And Beth was smiling too, bowing her head like they'd just shared a private joke. What's all this then? asked Lil, coming out from the back room. We're just about to go out for drinks, said Caden, placing a hand on Beth's shoulder. And we wondered if you two would like to come too, to celebrate. Lil and Riley shared a look. Oh, I think we've done enough celebrating for one night, Riley said quickly. A coffee shop only deserves so much celebration, and it's not even done a day of business yet, so... Yeah, that's not what we're celebrating, Caden said. Lil frowned. What then? Oh, you know, Beth and I thought we might celebrate my meddling little sister and best friend and their little matchmaking scheme. Beth burst out into laughter, and Lil joined her before Riley finally gave in and laughed, too. Okay, we deserve that, said Riley. But still, we've got enough work to do cleaning up here, and besides, we shouldn't be muscling in on your first date. Need a hand? Beth asked. Riley smiled at her. Not a chance. Agreed, said Lil. The two of you get out of here, please. We'll be just fine. It was another half hour before the last of the customers trickled out, and Lil could lock the front door. By then, Riley was guiding the caterers out and paying the barista. Another five minutes, and the bookstore was blessedly quiet. So, a successful evening, said Riley, wiping her hands on the apron she was wearing. Oh, we're not done yet, Lil said, a glint in her eyes. We're all out of snacks, and the champagne's been drunk. But Lil was reaching behind the counter. Not quite she said, 
bringing out a bottle. I had a feeling that you and I might need this, so I put it to one side. Riley hesitated. She'd taken enough painkillers to floor an elephant. Drinking probably wasn't a great idea. Come on, Lil goaded. Just a glass. You deserve it. A heartbeat, then two. Then Riley was nodding, and Lil was already twisting the cage off the top of the bottle. Chapter 18 Lil kicked the chair in front of her away from the table just enough to put her aching feet up on it. She topped up both their glasses, though Riley had barely drunk from hers, and the bottle was half empty already. A comforting heaviness had settled on her. Success all around, I'd say, she said, holding up her glass. Riley clinked her glass against Lil's. A good job, well done. What do you think they're doing right now? Lil said, half closing her eyes. Do you think he's going to kiss her goodnight? Ugh, can we not talk about my brother making out? Said Riley, crossing her legs. All right, all right, Lil grinned. He looked happy, didn't he? He did. So do you, Riley said. She looked around the empty store. So... This is the dream, huh? Lil nodded. More or less. You know, I've always wanted a bookstore. This place is the best thing I've ever done. I'm just surprised it took you this long to get here. Lil blew out a breath. Well, that's probably because I was waiting for the right person to do it with, she said. Though, as it turns out, Barb wasn't that person after all. Barb was your ex, Lil nodded. What happened there? Another sigh. But if she were being honest, this wasn't as bad as she'd feared. It didn't hurt as much now to say Barb's name to think of her. It was strange, as though the wound was scabbing over, healing. We were good for a while, Lil said. I thought we wanted the same things. Actually... I think Barb thought we wanted the same things, too, but in the end, we didn't. It was really that simple. So she left? Walked out one evening, leaving me with all of this, Lil said, gesturing around the store. I never wanted to do this alone. Riley pulled a face. Tell me about it. Which made no sense. What do you mean? Riley shrugged. Nothing, just that there are some things that it's hard to do alone. Some things where it's better to have someone there, someone on your side. That's all. Lil sipped at her champagne, the bubbles tickling her nose. It took a drunken few seconds to start to parse that sentence. But in the end, it could really only mean one thing. It made sense. Being a single parent bringing up a child alone, that had to be terrifying. I'm here, Lil said, without really thinking about it. I know, said Riley, but she sounded like she didn't truly believe it. When the thought dawned, it was so obvious, so clear, that Lil could punch herself for not having seen it before. Okay, maybe it wasn't the first thing she should have thought of when she heard the news, but it should have been up there. She should definitely have considered this all before. Riley was pregnant. So what? The pieces all started to float in the air in front of her, and she was quickly putting them together into the puzzle. She had feelings for Riley, feelings she thought she shouldn't have. Why? because she was on the rebound, because she was hurting from Barb. Except talking about Barb wasn't painful, not when Riley was there. Because they'd had a past, because things had been screwed up before, except they'd talked about that, sorted it out in a way. Because Riley was pregnant, except Lil wanted a child. So what if she hadn't planned this? So what if this wasn't exactly the way she planned it? Maybe you didn't make perfect. Maybe perfect could come already made. 
And if Riley was scared of doing this alone, she didn't have to do it alone. All the obstacles between them, she realized now, were starting to fade away. Okay, they weren't gone, she had no idea how Riley felt, but that didn't mean that things couldn't work out. Work out in a way that could make everyone happy. What did you want? Riley's voice shocked her out of her thoughts. Huh? You said that you and Barb wanted different things. What did you want, other than the bookstore, I mean? Lil had to top up her glass again. You know what I really want? I want a family like yours. That's all I've ever wanted. A real winter's household with love and laughter and kids and everything. She wasn't exactly being clear here, was she? How was Riley supposed to know that that included her? We weren't as perfect as you always made us out to be, said Riley. You were perfect enough for me. She could still remember the warmth of acceptance the first year that Dana had hung a Christmas stocking with her name on it by the fireplace. Riley shook her head. Perfect's a fairy tale, she said. It doesn't exist. There are flaws in everything. That's how the world works. Yeah, Lil said, staring into the bubbles in her glass. I'm starting to realize that. So you're finally growing up, huh? Teased Riley. Lil smiled, and Riley smiled back and her green eyes creased at the corners, and Lil's heart practically exploded at the thought of waking up next to that smile every morning, of hearing their child laughing in the next room, of being a family. Her legs were shaking, she realized. She was scared, scared of her feelings, scared of Riley's response to her. But that didn't mean she could hold herself back. She couldn't, just couldn't. She picked up her glass and drained it in one movement. I love you. The words just spilled out, taking even her by surprise. Riley looked at her with eyes wide and her mouth half open. I love you, Lil said again, more slowly and carefully this time. I think I always have. And I know that we didn't have the best start to things, and I know we haven't always communicated well, but that doesn't change the facts. The facts, echoed Riley. Her face was pale, so white that her freckles were standing out. Lil could see the scar on her forehead from where she'd fallen out of a tree when she was only six. A whole past history, shared. I have feelings for you, Riley. I truly do, she said simply. But Riley was already shaking her head. You're crazy, Lil. We tried this once, remember? It didn't work. So, we try again. Another head shake. No. Why? Riley bit her lip, but said nothing. Why? Lil asked again. We're older, we're better, We've learned from our mistakes. We could really make it this time. Lil, unless, unless you don't have feelings for me. Lil had to swallow down a wave of nausea. Riley, please, tell me honestly. Do you have feelings for me? Even a little? I swear that if you say no, I'll back off. I'll never bother you again. Do you have feelings? For a long, long moment, Riley stared at her, and Lil drank in the sight of her, sure that she was about to shake her head again. But finally, slowly, Riley nodded. I won't lie, she said. There are, I have, yeah, I like you, Lil. You know that. You've always known that. Then what's the problem? Lil asked again. What's stopping us from trying again? A hundred things, Riley said, pushing her chair back. Name one of them, Lil challenged. She wasn't going to force this, but she wasn't going to let it go either. If Riley had feelings, then that was all she needed to know. 
If this wasn't going to happen, then she was going to need a damn good reason. Lil. Lil closed her eyes. I don't care, Riley. Whatever happened in the past, whoever you are, whatever you've done, whatever your secrets are that you haven't told me yet, I don't care. It was on the tip of her tongue to mention the baby, but Riley hadn't told her. She couldn't infringe on her privacy like that. She heard Riley's chair scrape back. I just can't, Lil, I can't. And there were footsteps. Lil's eyes flashed open again, and she reached out, grasping Riley's wrist just as she was passing. Then she was standing up, still holding on to Riley, still feeling her warmth, feeling their hearts start to synchronize. That's not a reason, Ryle, she whispered. Not when these feelings are so strong. Riley closed her eyes, but didn't pull away. Lil. Lil leaned forward, brushing her lips against Riley's. And for a moment, she was afraid that Riley was going to pull away. But she didn't. In the space of a heartbeat, Riley was in her arms and their lips were meshed together and Lil could feel her pulse pounding through her, could feel Riley's tongue start to explore her mouth, could feel all her senses filled with Riley. For an instant, it was all so right, so perfect. The world was a better place and all that mattered was that Riley was finally in her arms, that they were finally touching, kissing, complete, and this was the way things always should have been and always would be. Then Riley went slack, her weight falling completely onto Lil, who struggled to support her as she tried to lower her to the ground. Riley's eyes were closed and her skin was pale and sweat was pouring off her, and Lil was struggling to find a pulse and shouting for help even though there was no one there to hear her. Chapter 19 what happened next was a blur of flashing blue lights and antiseptic smells that Lil really didn't remember until Caden was taking her by the elbow and steering her toward a plastic chair in the hospital corridor. What happened? She shook her head. I don't know. One minute she was fine, the next she was on the floor. Kay? She couldn't find the words to tell him how scared she'd felt. Crouching on the floor next to Riley's unconscious body, shouting for help that wouldn't come. All she could think of was no, it wasn't fair. They just kissed and then, and then this. Was she drinking? Caden asked. He was white with worry. A little, answered Lil. But really, half a glass, no more. I was the one getting drunk, not her. Drunk enough to screw up all her courage and finally, inevitably, let their lips meet. It had been right. This was her clearest recollection. For that one moment, it had been perfect and right. And then she'd been terrified and screaming. What was she supposed to do now? How was she ever supposed to do anything else now that she'd finally found her perfection? Caden locked his fingers with hers, squeezing her hand, and it was all she could do to keep breathing. They sat in silence for a long time as people walked past them and stretcher wheels screeched on the linoleum and life went on. It was as though they were sitting inside a bubble where time had slowed down to a crawl. Neither of them spoke, and Lil knew exactly why. She knew Caden well enough to know that he was as afraid as she was of making things real by putting them into words. Voicing their worries might just be enough to jinx Riley. A stupid superstition, but one neither of them could shake. Caden, Liliana. Lil looked up to see a smiling nurse, her scrubs bright blue and dimples in her cheeks. Miss Winters is asking for the two of you, the nurse said and her smile was infectious. Caden squeezed Lil's hand one more time as they followed the nurse into a cubicle. Riley was as pale as her pillow, lips close to blue and dark circles under her eyes. But she was awake, her eyes tired, but her mouth smiling just a touch. 
Am I glad to see you, she said as they came in. Lil fought the impulse to rush to her side. That was Caden's job, not hers. Not yet. She could be patient. Not as glad as we are to see you, Caden said, taking up a position by Riley's bed. What the hell happened, Ryle? How are you feeling? Lil interrupted. Now it didn't seem like the time for Riley to admit to kissing her brother's best friend. Okay, said Riley. Tired, I guess. That would be the painkillers, said a voice. There was the rattling sound of curtains being drawn, and then a white-coated doctor was striding into the cubicle. He was tall and wide like a football player, and Lil felt the small space shrink around him. Right, said Riley. She was looking down at the sheets, and Lil saw that her hands were shaking. She desperately wanted to hold her, to tell her everything was going to be okay. But she didn't quite dare. If I could have a little time with my patient, please, the doctor asked. But Riley held up a hand. No, no, let them stay. It'll be easier this way. Easier then. Then having to explain myself. Please, I don't mind that they're here. The doctor shrugged. Fine. In that case, the good news is that for right now, Ms. Winters is stable and fine. Lil flashed a look at Caden, and then they both said the same thing at the same time, the thought that had been preying on both their minds, the words neither of them had had the courage to speak before. What about the baby? There was a silence so deep it was tangible. Riley lifted her head. The doctor frowned, and Lil's heart sped up. Both the doctor and Riley spoke at the same time. What baby? It was Lil and Caden's turn to look confused, to share a glance, to furrow their brows. Uh, my sister's baby, Caden said slowly. The doctor turned to Riley. You're pregnant, he asked, a look of absolute mystification on his face. Riley shook her head. Absolutely not. You're certain, the doctor prodded. If I am... You're going to need to change my name to Mary and call the National Inquirer. The doctor nodded. Okay, in that case. You can tell them, Riley interrupted. She was gripping onto the bedsheet now, her knuckles white. Tell us what? asked Lil, fear eating away at her again. Something was wrong here, very wrong. Riley looked down at her hands. About the cancer. She said so quietly that Lil might have been mistaken. Wait, you have a cancer diagnosis? The doctor asked, looking even more confused. Riley looked at him. You took x-rays and an ultrasound of my stomach. Surely you saw it. She hesitated. Surely nothing, the doctor said. He sighed then spoke very slowly and patiently, as though speaking to a young child. Let me be clear. We did both x-rays and an ultrasound, and we saw no fetus. Because I'm not pregnant, snapped Riley. You're not? Caden asked in disbelief. No! Riley sounded exasperated. I have stomach cancer, like Mom. That's what I didn't want to tell you. That's what I didn't want you to know. That's why I came home. And Lil's world stopped turning. Until the doctor snorted, his cheeks turning red and his eyes narrowing. Who told you that? He demanded. Riley opened her mouth, but no words came out. Fine, the doctor said after a moment. Nobody say anything until I'm finished. Ms. Winters, you have chronic appendicitis, otherwise known as a grumbling appendix. But, began Riley. But nothing. I assure you that whatever you may have thought, your stomach looks perfectly healthy, and there is no sign of anything more serious going on. Your pain is due entirely to an inflamed appendix. But this has been going on for months, Riley got in. 
Which is why we call it chronic rather than acute appendicitis, the doctor said patiently. I've scheduled surgery for the morning. You should be out of the hospital the day after and back to normal in a week to ten days. There's really nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? Riley's face was gaining color. Not a thing, the doctor said. He took a last look around the cubicle and then shook his head. A nurse will be in to explain more about the surgery, he said, and left, muttering under his breath about patients that self-diagnose. Lil held on to the metal rails at the side of the bed, hands sweating, not knowing what to say or do. You thought you were dying? Caden spoke first. You thought I was pregnant, accused Riley. No, Caden said. No, you don't get to do that. You don't get to minimize this. When were you going to tell me, huh? When were you going to mention the fact that you'd come home to die? When she had no choice, Lil thought, but didn't say. And she knew exactly why Riley hadn't said anything. She remembered Dana Winters. She remembered how Riley had sat at her mother's bedside. And she knew that Riley had promised herself a better end than her mother's. She could understand that. I was going to tell you, Riley said weakly. Right, snorted Caden. Hey, come on, Lil said. Surely the important thing here is that Riley's okay. She's fine. Whatever misunderstandings and assumptions have been made, and there have been assumptions on both sides here. She paused to look at both Caden and Riley. The important thing is that other than a lousy appendix, we're all healthy and should be happy. Caden bit his lip for a moment, then nodded. Right. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, Riley. I was worried about you. Riley shrugged. It's okay, she said. Lil watched as Caden hugged his sister, and her arms felt empty and strange. There had been no baby. She felt a pang of sadness at the loss of something that had existed only in her imagination, but she supposed it was a small price to pay for the balance. There was no cancer which meant, the voice in the back of her head told her, that Riley could leave any time she wanted to go back to her old life. Or, Lil told herself sternly, it meant that Riley would finally be ready to commit to a relationship. Maybe this had been just the wake-up call she needed. Chapter 20 The room was pleasant, the walls were seafoam green, the large window was covered with cream blinds, there was a TV. The second bed was empty, and Riley's bed had a soft pillow and a comfortable mattress, which was ironic given just how uncomfortable she was currently feeling. You could have told me, Ryle. It was the first thing Caden had said since she'd been moved into a real room. And it was a fair criticism. I could have she said carefully. But I didn't. I was waiting for the right time. Which was going to be when? When you were already bed-bound? Caden snapped. He took a breath and pulled a chair up next to her bed, sitting down. You should have told me. She shook her head. Believe it or not, I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was saving you pain. I figured I'd have to tell everyone at some point, but as long as I was able to get around and act like normal, then I might as well let life go on. Ignorance is bliss and all that. Caden took her hand. You don't have to protect me. I don't have to protect you, but I want to, she said. She looked out of the glass wall to where the nurse's station was busy. I shouldn't have left you, Kay. He laughed, softly and gently. You had to, Ryle. I'm not an idiot. You were always going places, always too big for Amberly. I couldn't stay with Dad, 
Not after. Not after his reaction to me coming out. Not with the constant digs and the comments and... He loved you, Ryle. I know you probably don't want to hear it, but he did. He hated the thought of you being bi, and you rightfully took offense to that. He treated you terribly, but he was afraid and thought that your life was going to be so much more difficult because of who you were. Riley snorted. Right. My life was difficult because of how he reacted to who I was. He was an ass, said Caden. Indisputably. But he was also a stubborn old man that had grown up in a different time and had no idea how to handle what you were telling him. That's not an excuse. It's a fact, Riley. He should have done better. Perhaps he could have done better if you'd given him the chance to. Riley said nothing. But I get why you had to leave, and I get why you didn't come home. Out there, away from here, you could be yourself and be comfortable and be happy. You didn't need reminders of home. But he asked for you, Ryle. When he was dying, he asked for you. She swallowed down the lump in her throat. That doesn't really change the fact that he was an ass, does it? It also doesn't change the fact that he was your father and he loved you regardless of anything else. The air was cooled and smelled medicinal. The IV in her arm pinched at her hand. I'm sorry I let you deal with everything, Kay. And I'm sorry I didn't tell you when I thought I was dying. The apology was sincere. Everything else aside, she had missed her brother. Meh, Caden said, flashing his wide grin. We all make mistakes, right? Ever thought you were dying? She asked Riley. Only after every night out drinking I've ever had. He squeezed her hand. Let's get you better, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do. I guess you've got some serious rethinking to do. No shit. Well, you're welcome to stay at home as long as you like. You can move in permanently if you want. Thanks, Kay. His hand was warm and comforting in hers. Not so fast, Squirt. There's a definite condition attached. Which is? He tilted her chin until she was looking into his eyes. No more hiding things. No more secrets, okay? She nodded. Promise. Then we're all set. He kicked back in his chair, stretching his legs out. Do you think that when you're up and about again, we should have a party? Why? Because you're not dying. We could invite Beth. Things going that well, are they? Lil was standing in the doorway, a cardboard cup of coffee in her hand. How am I supposed to know? Caden said. I got called away from our first date because my sister wasn't dying. Riley laughed, and even Lil grinned. Idiot. Lil said. She came in and ruffled his hair, and Riley was struck by how at ease they were with each other, even now, even as adults. Their comfort level was just the same as when they'd been kids. I'll think about the party, Riley said. And you should think about going to take a nap, Lil said to Caden. I've got this shift. She put her coffee down on the nightstand. Hey, I don't need babysitting, Riley protested. Caden and Lil looked at her and rolled their eyes simultaneously. All righty, Caden said. I'm off home for a cat nap and a shower. I'll be back in a couple of hours. I'll hold down the fort here, said Lil, taking the chair that Caden was vacating. Later, sis, Caden said, bending down and kissing her cheek. Then he was gone and she was alone with Lil. It took a few seconds before she could speak. I've been an idiot, she said finally. Lil raised an eyebrow. Kind of. Thanks for the support. But she was joking, her lips already smiling. You've got a lot of thinking to do, said Lil. A wave of guilt passed over her. 
Yeah, I know. I should have said something. I should... Lil was waving her words away with a dismissive hand. She was leaning back in her chair, just as Caden had done, her shaggy hair a mess, the fluorescent light catching on her blue streak. Her face was comfortable, familiar, perfect. You don't owe me any explanations at all, Riley Winters. I understand you better than you understand yourself. I know exactly why you did what you did, and I can't say I'd have done much different myself. You think? Lil shrugged. Who knows? But what I meant was that you've just upended your life for absolutely no reason at all. Quit your job, moved cities, come back home. All for nada. And there it was. She hadn't really taken in the news yet. She'd gotten used to the idea of dying. Not that she'd welcomed it, but she'd tolerated it. Like a messy roommate. It had taken her a while to get her head around dying. She guessed it was going to take her a while to get used to the idea of not dying. She was elated, truly, she was. She felt lighter and easier than she'd felt for weeks. But then the medications were probably helping with that. That and the fact that she hadn't had time to take in the implications of all this. The fact that she was now in Amberley, with a life ahead of her and nothing to fill it with. She'd been truly stupid. Lil was shuffling her chair closer, and her blue eyes were darker than Lil thought she'd ever seen them before. But I've got a request, Lil said. Her voice was soft, but her words were clear. I want you to think about what we talked about tonight. Riley let out a big sigh. No, said Lil. No, I don't want answers. I don't even really want a conversation about this right now. You're on drugs, and I'm damned if you're going to have that as an excuse later when you want to weasel your way out of whatever you decide. Hey, said Riley. But Lil was grinning up at her, and not for the first time. She felt like she could fall into those eyes, fall into those lips, completely surrender herself to the perfection that was Lil. Maybe before, it was the wrong time and the wrong place, Lil said. But maybe now is the right time and the right place. For us, I mean. And I don't think we'll really know until we try. I know, Lil said firmly. No, just listen. I get why you were evasive before. You thought you were dying, which I guess is a pretty good reason not to start something. But now you're not, and things have changed, just like we've changed. And I think we deserve a shot. You said you like me. I've said I like you. You've drunkenly declared love, Riley pointed out. I'll do it again, sober, Lil said, stoutly. She leaned in, taking both Riley's hands in her own. All I want right now is your promise that you'll consider giving us a chance. Can you promise that? She was right. There was nothing standing in their way, not anymore. Any excuse she'd had was gone. It was terrifying. But it was also very, very tempting. I promise, she said and Lil's smile lit up the room. Chapter 21 You know, this latte stuff isn't bad at all, Marge said, taking another sip from the glass cup in her hand. It's just milky coffee, Lil said, grinning. Well, if your little barista had told me that then, I wouldn't have spent almost five bucks on the thing, said Marge putting the glass on the counter. She sniffed. Got any recommendations for me? Lil twisted her mouth into a moo of thought. What are you in the mood for? She asked finally. Ugh, something that reminds me that life isn't always cold. Lil looked out of the store window. The bright autumn was passing. It was gray outside, 
The light muted and spiraling flakes of snow were attempting to build up into something more substantial. Right you are, she said. She had just the thing. She went to the fiction section and pulled out a book with a cover in all the colors of the sunset. Here, she said, handing the book to Marge. Takes place in Malibu, mostly at the beach. It's all hot and sunny with a bunch of family drama thrown in for good measure. Perfect, said Marge contentedly. She put the book on the counter. So, things going swimmingly then, I see? Lil glanced over at the cafe, where a handful of people were sitting drinking coffee and reading. A small ball of pleasure gathered in her stomach. This was the dream. This was what she wanted. She nodded, and Marge grunted. I wasn't after a shareholder meeting, Marge said. I've got eyes in my head. I can see that business is booming. What about Riley Winters? She's doing well, out of hospital, recovering. The doctor says she should be able to come to work on Monday, as long as she doesn't do any heavy lifting. Marge growled this time. I swear to all that is holy that I will haunt you for the rest of your days, Liliana Bradley. You know damn well that that's not what I want to hear. Tell me the real news. Lil leaned over her elbows on the counter. No news. Nothing, Marge asked. I'm disappointed in you. I thought you'd woman up and ask the girl out. It's not through lack of trying, Lil said. Riley's been through a lot. We're talking. Things are moving slowly. She doesn't need any pressure right now. It was only appendicitis, grumbled Marge, picking up her coffee cup again. Lil wasn't going to tell the town gossip any more than that. Riley's secrets were her own. In truth, though she'd visited Riley every day, there'd been no more talk of any kind of relationship. On the good days, Lil thought that Riley was waiting until she was back on her feet to discuss things and decide. On the bad days, she figured that Riley didn't know how to tell her she was leaving, so she was saying nothing instead. She'll be back at work on Monday, Lil said again. And while we're busy asking personal questions, there's something that's been bugging me. Oh, yeah? Marge arched an eyebrow over her coffee cup. I know that you were friends with my parents, but what I don't know is what happened between you all, Lil said. Who said anything happened? Marge's voice was suspicious. Nobody, Lil said. But you say you owe my dad favors, and yet I don't remember him mentioning your name recently. So I figured something must have gone down. Have long conversations with your parents about characters around town, do you? Marge asked. Nope, said Lil. But she wasn't about to be put off. This was a mystery she wanted to solve. So were you friends with them or not? I was friends with your father, Marge said. Her eyes misted over like she was looking into the distance. Friends for many, many years. Lil's mouth dried up. What kind of can of worms was she about to open here? Marge saw the look on her face. Oh no, nothing like that, she said hurriedly. Honestly, your generation thinks everything's about sex. There was never anything like that. We were friends, best friends. Even when your mother came along, we were friends, all of us. She almost let out a sigh of relief. Dealing with her father's mistress wasn't top of her list of things to do. So what happened then? For a minute, it looked like Marge might answer, like she might spill whatever it was that had gone on. But then... Her eyes changed, and she put her empty coffee glass back on the counter. Who said anything happened? She asked again. We grew up. That was all. Grew up, grew apart, had our own families. It happens. You'll understand when you have a family of your own. It gives you tunnel vision. You don't have the time for much else.
But Lil could sense that there was more to the story. She desperately wanted to know, though there was no real reason for it to be any of her business. She'd never been close to her parents, and she'd definitely never been interested in their personal lives. But Marge... Marge was slowly becoming like family. The fact that the woman was checking on her, that she was concerned, had touched Lil. More than that, she liked Marge. And if she were being honest, she couldn't understand how someone she liked so much could have been friends with two people that she wasn't terribly fond of, even if they were blood relatives. Welp, I'll be getting out of your hair, Marge said. Here you go. She gave Lil a 20 for the book, and Lil absentmindedly got her some change. Sorry if I was prying, she said finally. She didn't think Marge had taken offense, but she didn't want to hurt the woman. You were prying, Marge said. Lil's heart stilled. But that's how you learn the most interesting gossip, finished Marge with a naughty grin. Lil laughed. Get out of here, she said. I'll see you tomorrow. Am I that much of a regular already? Marge asked. The lattes are on me in the morning, promised Lil. It was dark, and the threatening snow had disappeared into a harsh, cold wind by later that evening. The cafe was closed, the customers were gone, and Lil was about to close up. She was just considering whether or not to visit Caden and Riley when the shop bell rang. We're closed, she called out. Seriously? All the way here, crawling out of my sickbed, and you're not even open? Lil turned around, and Riley was standing there, scarf wrapped around her neck, feet in thick winter boots. What are you doing here? she demanded. Why aren't you in bed? Because... If I have to spend another hour in bed, then I'm going to wish that I was dying again, Riley said. Besides, I'm fine. A little achy, but otherwise I'm a-okay. And bored. I'm also bored, Lil laughed. Caden not entertaining enough? If I have to play one more round of Monopoly with him, then we're going to get sibling divorced, said Riley, coming closer. She was walking slowly and she looked a little pale, but true to her word, she did seem better. The dark circles under her eyes were gone, and Lil could see that she was stronger and better. Well, feel free to choose some entertainment of your own, Lil said. Your first book is on the house. Which is a terrible way to run a business. Probably, but this is my end of the business, and I run it as I like, Lil said tartly. Speaking of which... The cafe is doing great. Not what I came here to talk about. She made it to the counter, and her hands were on the wood, her fingernails pale with the cold. Lil's breath deserted her. She knew why Riley was there, and she knew that whatever came next was going to make her or break her, and she honestly didn't know which. You've made some decisions she said as casually as she could. Not much else to do when you're lying in bed, Riley said with a small smile. And to be honest, I've got a lot more decisions to make. But there is something that I've decided. Uh-huh, Lil mumbled, not trusting herself to speak. You're right, Lil. The world was closing in on her getting smaller and smaller until she could see only Riley's pale, pretty face in front of her eyes. I am? Riley nodded. You are. I've done a lot of thinking, and you know what? Seeing your face in the hospital was all I wanted when I woke up. You were all I could think about. And we've all made our mistakes, me more than anyone. So... I guess what I'm saying is that you're right. We should give this a chance. Lil's whole body froze. She was so overwhelmed with emotion that for a second she could feel nothing. If you still want to, that is, Riley asked, 
her face looking worried. And then Lil was laughing, and Riley was smiling, and the world was a wonderful place. Chapter 22 In the end, the decision had been easy. Yes, she got her life back. Maybe not the life she used to have, but a whole new lease on life, for sure. And the enormity of that wasn't lost on her. Lying in her childhood bed, looking at the posters she'd hung as a teenager, Riley had no idea what she was going to do with the whole rest of her life. What she did know is that she couldn't get Lil's face out of her mind. What she did know was that she had no more excuses. What she did know was that her body tingled with delight every time Lil was near, and she longed for more of that feeling. There were still arguments. There was still a past there. But she had to be willing to overlook the mistakes, didn't she? After all, she'd made enough mistakes herself. Now, standing in front of Lil, she was filled with a strange combination of anxiety, fear, and need. Yes, Lil said, finally, as she stopped laughing. Yes, Riley Winters, I do still want you. I've never stopped wanting you, which is terrifying and weird, but totally true. Riley took a breath. So how is this all supposed to work, then? Lil frowned. Um, what do you mean? I mean, this, us, what happens now, what do we do? Lil cleared her throat. Uh, I guess we, um... She trailed off for a second. Ryle, have you done this before? I mean, dated, had a girlfriend, whatever it is we're about to do here. Good question. One that maybe she should have expected. There have been others, she said cautiously. Other what? pressed Lil. Relationships, one night stands, friends with benefits. Riley pondered how to answer this. She was getting into a conversation that was making her uncomfortable. She was starting to feel defensive, like when she'd been a kid and the other girls in her class had talked about who'd kissed a boy and who hadn't. Yes, she said eventually. Some combination of those? Lil came out from behind the counter, leaning up against it close enough that Riley could reach out and touch her. But she didn't. Her stomach was swirling with butterflies. Some combination, Lil echoed. Okay, am I prying here? A little, admitted Riley. I don't mean to. Well, maybe I do. And your answers don't matter that much, except, well, except it'd be good for me to know how experienced you are, is all. And something clicked in Riley's head. Girlfriend. Lil had said the word girlfriend. She felt a sheen of sweat on her skin and didn't know if she was overjoyed or terrified. Riley, are you okay? Lil put her hand on Riley's arm. Are you feeling okay? Riley nodded, then shook her head. Do you want to be girlfriends? She managed to stutter, and she was aware of the fact that she sounded like she was seven. Do you? Lil asked. Riley's mouth dried up. Honestly, that's what this needed. There'd been enough assumptions, enough hidden truths, enough miscommunications. She had to learn. She had to improve. She'd got her life back, and this time, she suddenly realized she wanted to do things differently. I've had plenty of one-night stands, she blurted out. I've had a handful of friends with benefits, but that's it. No real relationships. Riley shook her head, hoping like hell that Lil wasn't going to ask her why. For a long time, she'd avoided any kind of contact at all. Once it had become clear to her that she needed more than just to be alone, she'd set up rules for herself. Sex was fine, love wasn't. Relationships made you weak. Just look at her mother. 
giving up everything to look after kids and a grumpy husband. Hell, just look at herself, running away from everything because of Lil. Relationships were a firm no-go area. But the answer to Lil's unspoken why had never been completely transparent. Not until just now. Not until she'd seen the look in Lil's eyes and watched her face change as she smiled. Only now did she realize that she'd been holding out, waiting until she could have Lil back. Waiting until she could taste the perfection of Lil again. No one else had ever held a candle to her. Ever. It's okay, Lil was saying now. We'll take things slowly. This, us, we can be whatever we want. We don't have to label things if you don't want to. We don't have to be girlfriends or anything else. We can just be us. Riley felt her anxiety ease a little. She took a step toward Lil. She was really doing this. This could really work. Where was it going to lead? She had no idea. But maybe... That didn't matter right now. Her face was so pale and she looked so fragile that Lil wanted nothing more than to hold her. But she was going to be more careful this time, she promised herself. It didn't necessarily surprise her that Riley had avoided relationships. Given her recent breakup, Lil of all people could understand why someone would want to avoid getting hurt but it did mean that she was going to need to take things very slowly with Riley. She wanted Riley to feel safe, which didn't mean she didn't have concerns of her own. Riley was so close now, and all it would take would be a tilt of the head, and then they'd be kissing, and Lil knew that she'd lose her head. She wanted to lose her head, but there was something she needed to ask first. She took a deep breath before she opened her mouth. Yes, Riley said, looking up at her with deep green eyes, a half-smile on her lips. Are you leaving? The question came out so fast that Lil barely had time to consider the words. She steeled herself, sure that Riley was about to pull away from her. But she didn't. Riley bit her lip, then shrugged. I don't know. There was honesty in her voice, and Lil had to take a deep breath against the uncertainty she felt in her stomach. This had to be okay, she reminded herself. Riley was telling her the truth, and Riley's wants and wishes and dreams had to be equal to her own. She couldn't make the same mistakes twice. She couldn't try to fit someone else into her own dreams, her own perfection. It hadn't worked with Barb, and it wouldn't work with Riley. She had to accept that Riley didn't know what she wanted yet, and that was okay. She nodded. Okay, she said softly. Does that make you sad? Riley asked. Her head was tilting to one side, and her lips were parted, and a curl was brushing against her cheek. Lil couldn't stop herself. With one gentle hand, she pushed the hair away from Riley's face. A little, she said, equally honest. But we have time to work things out. We have time to figure out what we both want from this. Riley's hand came up, clutching Lil's wrist, and Lil let her hand cup Riley's cheek, and then Riley was moving in, and they were coming together, and Lil didn't think that her heart could take it. I know what I want right now, Riley whispered. Lil raised an eyebrow. Really? Why don't you tell me? Why don't I show you? Riley said, leaning in ever closer. Their lips were brushing, and Lil felt a surge of warmth run through her stomach all the way down into her legs, making them shake with need. For an agonizing moment, they stayed that way, barely touching, their breath mingling. Lil could see the fine hairs on Riley's cheeks, and she knew how this kiss was going to taste, but it didn't take away the excitement, the anticipation. She didn't know who moved first, 
just that their lips were finally crushing together, and then she was drinking Riley in, feeling the warmth of her, tasting the sweetness of her. Stars exploded behind her eyelids as Riley's hands took her waist and pulled her in even further. Her hand strayed down to Riley's neck, stroking soft skin, and Riley moaned inside her mouth, and Lil thought that the world was going to end. The shop bell was no more than an annoying ding. For a long second, Lil didn't comprehend what she'd heard. It niggled into her consciousness, but Riley's lips were doing a good job of making her forget everything she'd ever known. Which meant that by the time she'd realized what she'd heard and pulled back from Riley, sweating and ruffled, practically panting, the figure in the doorway had had more than enough time to see what was happening. Lil's mouth went dry. Kay, she began, but he was looking at his sister, shaking his head, and then turning and walking back out the way he'd come into the cold of the night. Lil darted one glance down at Riley, saw her eyes clouded and confused, and that was all it took. She couldn't ruin this family. She couldn't come between her best friend and his sister. Without even taking the time to get her coat, she rushed out of the door, chasing Caden's dark silhouette down the street. Chapter 23 The pain of it took Riley's breath away. One moment she'd been standing there, a perfect world within her grasp, her heart full, and the next, all her old insecurities had been rushing back. Seeing Lil chase out after Caden like that, seeing her leave without a word, was all Riley needed to remember that night. Fifteen years ago, they'd lain in each other's arms, and Riley had understood life. For those beautiful minutes, Lil's skin pressed tight against her own, She'd known exactly what she was doing, how she felt, and how the story ended. And then Lil had sat up, pulling her shirt on over her long body, bending to kiss Riley's cheek with cool lips. Don't tell Caden, she'd said. And Riley's heart had ruptured. This wasn't the same thing, she told herself, Lil had explained. She'd said she wasn't ashamed. She wasn't afraid of what they'd done, what they were doing. And yet, and yet she went chasing Caden instead of staying to explain herself. The whiteness of her face, the shock of seeing Caden in the doorway, and Caden so similar to their father. It all came together in one confusing, horrible picture that she really really didn't want to see again. Without really thinking, she left the store, closing the door but not locking it, turning firmly in the opposite direction to that taken by Lil and Caden. She felt the cold wind on her face, felt her blood rush to her cheeks, felt her heart bruise, and her head get messed up. She walked three blocks in the aching cold before calling up an Uber to take her the rest of the way home. The front door slammed, and the sound of it made her jump. She was trying to stay calm, trying not to jump to conclusions. This wasn't the same thing at all, she told herself, whilst taking a hot shower. Lil had just wanted to check Kay was okay. She'd wanted to apologize, maybe, explain, definitely. Lil wasn't ashamed of what they'd been doing. And Kay? Kay wasn't horrified. He didn't hate what she was. He wasn't their father. Riley? Where the hell are you, Riley? But his angry voice sounded so much like her father's, she couldn't help but instinctively shrink back from it. Jesus, there you are. He burst through into the kitchen, and as soon as she saw his face, she could see that he wasn't angry, or at least not much. He looked more relieved than anything else. I thought you'd decided to walk the whole way home, he said, pulling her into a hug. I've spent the last half hour trawling all the streets you might have taken looking for you. I took an Uber, she said, voice muffled by his shirt. Christ, he said. He held her for a second longer, then let her go. What the hell were you thinking? She narrowed her eyes. He did look angry now. The question was, what was he angry about? 
Was he angry that she'd taken an Uber, that she'd left the bookstore, that she'd kissed a girl, or that she'd kissed Lil in particular? There were, she thought, a whole bunch of reasons why Caden might be angry, and he wasn't their father. She had to keep reminding herself of that. Caden Winters was not Christoph Winters, two completely separate people, two people with very different opinions and outlooks on life. What was I thinking when? She asked cautiously. Have you been away from Amberly too long? Out in the big city so long you've forgotten what it gets like out here? Jesus, it's about minus a million outside, it's windy as hell, and they've forecast an ice storm for tonight. Um, I didn't watch the weather forecast this morning? He snorted. Really not the point, Ryle. Just walking out into the darkness like that was stupid. Weather aside, who knows what kind of weirdos are waiting out there. You have to be more careful. Just because you're not dying anymore doesn't mean that you're immortal. Right. Yeah, sorry. He made very fair points. But she didn't want to talk about the weather or her walking out or anything else. What she really wanted to know was why Caden had walked out but it was going to take every ounce of courage that she had to ask. She had to swallow twice to wet her mouth enough to speak. So, you saw, then? He rolled his eyes. Kind of hard not to see when the two of you are making an exhibition of yourselves like that. An exhibition. Hardly the word she'd have used. She gripped the kitchen counter behind her. You saw us and then you walked out. I was disgusted. Before she could say anything, Caden's phone rang. He picked it up and answered in short, sharp sentences. Yes, she's fine. She's here. Yeah, sure, I'll tell her. No probs. He put the phone down. Lil, she's worried about you. She's going to drop by in the morning, said it's too slippery out there in the dark right now. Disgusted. That was the word he'd used disgusted, and it sounded so much like her father speaking that she thought she might break. But, but he hadn't sounded angry with Lil. Far from it, he'd sounded patient and kind, if slightly exasperated. Disgusted was the only word she managed to get out. He nodded, hazel eyes flicking back and forth. How the hell would you feel? He asked, throwing his hands up. Disgusted just about sums it up. And she did break, but not in the way she'd imagined. Disgusted? No, I'd have felt happy, overjoyed that you'd found someone. I'd have been proud of you and happy for you, and I'm damned if I'd have turned around and walked out and broken your heart. She spat, anger boiling inside her. For a second, Caden stood with his mouth open. Then he shook his head. Uh-huh. What are you talking about? You heard me. She crossed her arms defensively. Caden took a step back, blowing out a breath. Wait, you think I'm angry because you were kissing Lil? Because we were making an exhibition of ourselves, she said, using his word, throwing it back at him. He paused, then put his hands on her upper arms. No, Ryle, no, no, never. I'd never, ever think anything like that. I'd never, ever judge you for who and what you are. Don't you know that? His sincerity was obvious, and now she was as confused as him. Then what? He lowered his hands again, breaking contact. Riley. What did we say at the hospital? What was the one thing that I had you promise? That I'd be honest, she said immediately. That's all I want. I want our relationship back. I want us to tell each other what's going on in our lives. And you promised. And I thought we were going to be okay, that we were rebuilding our connection. And then I find out that you're dating my best friend behind my back. The pieces suddenly all fit together. No, Kate, no, hold on. That's not how things went down. 
That was only the second time we kissed, and the first time was right before I collapsed, so I wasn't in a fit state to tell you about it. I mean, as long as you don't count what happened before. Before? She sighed. Look, I think we need to talk about this. She looked around the kitchen. Any more of that hot chocolate that you make so well? He stared at her for a second, then smiled. I'll get the pan, you get the milk. Caden put down his empty mug. I wish you'd told me all this before, he said. Maybe I could have helped. Maybe I could have stopped the two of you blowing this up and you leaving town and, and everything. You had enough on your plate with Mom. We both did, Riley said, looking down at her own half-full mug. So does this mean that you're okay with Lil and I? Doing whatever it is that we're currently doing? Yeah. You're going to need some kind of name for that. What are you going to call her? Your not-girlfriend? The chick you kiss sometimes? He winked at her. Yeah, I'm more than okay with it. Really? Riley looked hard at him. I told Lil exactly the same thing. I love that the two of you are together as long as you're happy. I'd love for her to really be a part of the family. What I don't like is secrets. That's all. Lil, she'd still gone out after Caden. She still hadn't stayed. It still stung a little. Jesus, she needed to grow up. Lil had actually gone to comfort Caden, not to apologize or make excuses or show shame. She caught up to me, Caden said, as though he was reading her mind. And the very first thing that she said was that she loved you. Really? Really, he said. She apologized for not telling me sooner, and she was dragging me back to the store so we could all talk about this together, except you were already gone. It scares me that she loves me, Riley said, looking back at her chocolate again. That's because letting yourself be loved means opening up and being vulnerable, Caden said. You gotta get rid of that chip on your shoulder, Ryle. I know where it comes from, but we've all changed and Dad is gone. If you don't, then you'll never let yourself be loved. And that would be a very, very sad thing. She nodded. I get it. Good. Because if you break Lil's heart, I'll have to hunt you down and kick your ass, little sister or not. Ryle smiled. What if she breaks mine? Same deal, he said, standing up. Now, you should get to bed. I'm thinking that Lil isn't going to be able to stop herself coming out here as soon as the roads are safe, which is likely to be early. Riley nodded, her heart jumping at the thought of Lil being here. She had apologies to make. She had to open up. She had to let this happen. Which was a whole lot easier said than done. Chapter 24 Lil didn't think she'd ever stood at the familiar brown door with such anxiety squirming in her stomach. She tried to swallow it down as she rang the bell. She'd known as soon as she'd left the store that she'd done the wrong thing. She'd realized just how her running after Caden would look to Riley, just what it would remind her of. But she'd already been halfway down the street. She'd already been so involved in forming her own apology to Caden. She'd already been so convinced that she'd screwed up the family dynamics. And then... She'd caught Kay, and he'd spat out that he was so mad with his sister, and she'd begun her stammered apology, and he'd laughed at her. Idiot, he'd said, ruffling her hair. You really think I wouldn't want you as a sister-in-law? Give me a break. So they'd gone back to the store to talk things through with Riley, but she'd been gone. Caden opened the door, already bundled up in his jacket. I'm off to the store. They're predicting more ice on the way, so figured I'd better stock up. Her Royal Highness is still upstairs in bed. He stood back and let her in. 
you know the way, right? It took a moment for her to realize that he was kidding, and then she punched him on the arm. Get the hell out of here and leave me to do my wooing in peace. He left, still cackling at her use of the word wooing. Riley wasn't still in bed. When Lil knocked on the half-open door and pushed it open, she saw that Riley was brushing her hair, still wet from the shower, wrapped in a warm-looking robe, and the sight forced a flood of liquid between Lil's legs. Ah, uh, sorry to interrupt, she said, keeping her eyes on the floor. I'll wait downstairs. But Riley was already coming to her, already pulling her into a deep, warm kiss, already making the feelings start again. I'm sorry, Riley said, coming up for air. I'm sorry I was an idiot. I'm sorry I worried you. I'm sorry, said Lil. I should have realized how it would look to you if I chased after Caden, but I figured that you already knew what was happening and it was Kay that needed an explanation. And I needed to make sure I wasn't destroying your family, she added to herself. I'm going to be better at this. I'm trying, Lil. I want us to communicate better, and Caden says I need to let go of the chip on my shoulder about Dad and everything, so... Lil raised an eyebrow. You've got a chip on your shoulder? She asked. Unable to help herself, she gently pushed aside the edge of Riley's robe, bearing her perfect pale shoulder. Riley gasped as warm fingers touched her skin. It's... Not that shoulder, she growled hoarsely. You might want to check the other. Lil brought up her other hand, pushing the robe so that both Riley's shoulders were bared. And then the robe was falling, puddling on the floor, and Riley was standing naked before her. Jesus. It was all she could think of to say. High, pink-tipped breasts, the swell of hips, the three white dressings left from her surgery. Freckles dotted her chest, and Lil was suddenly afraid to move, afraid to touch Riley in case she broke. One of us is overdressed, Riley drawled. Her eyes were heavy with lust. Ryle, it's only been a few days since your surgery. Are you sure? But Riley's fingers were already tugging at Lil's sweater, already pulling the garment up and over her head. We'll be gentle. We'll be careful, Riley said. But I've waited 15 years for this, and I'm damned if I'm going to wait any longer. It had been the same that night so long ago. Lil, so afraid that her whole extra year of age would be seen as taking advantage of Riley, that she'd stepped back, allowing Riley to take control. And Riley, a virgin, inexperienced, nervous, had taken that control and reveled in it. Before she knew what was happening, Riley was unbuttoning her jeans, sneaking warm fingers into her waistband, pulling her pants down, and then Lil was helping her, yanking at her underwear, anxious suddenly to get as naked as possible. There was no awkwardness, nothing but the pressure of lust, of wanting, of needing. Heat was bubbling in her stomach and between her legs, and Lil couldn't remember ever needing anything so much in her life. But she schooled herself, calmed herself, waiting that extra second once she was naked to make sure Riley was okay. It was Riley that moved, Riley that pressed her body against Lil's, letting their skin meet, letting their softness meet and letting Lil finally let go of her last shred of inhibition. On the bed, she managed to moan. Riley took her hand, and they went to the bed. She let Riley lie first, and then lay herself down gently beside her, not wanting to hurt her, not wanting to jeopardize her stitches. Riley, are you sure? She said again. She was about to lose control of herself, her pulse pounding inside her core. Riley took her hand, slid it between her legs, and Lil gasped, feeling the flood of wetness there. 
I need this, Lil, Riley said. I need you. I need to open up to try and let you in to trust you. And this is the only way I know how. The only way I can be vulnerable. Lil gulped. Her fingers were already sliding in Riley's slickness. Please, Lil, Riley gasped. Please, I need you. And Lil let her fingers move faster, pulling up, finding the hard center of Riley, circling it. Riley tipped her head back, her neck arching, and Lil felt her heart speed up even more. She closed her eyes. She was barely holding on to herself. One hand was between Riley's legs, but if she watched, if she saw Riley arch like that again, she was going to lose control. Riley pushed up against her hand, and Lil leaned down, taking the pink tip of Riley's breast in her mouth, suckling and twirling her tongue around it so that the nipple hardened. Lil! She glanced at Riley's face, focused, her eyes closed, and she could hear Riley's heart. Hear it pounding inside her even as her fingers rushed to keep up with the beat. She could feel Riley's muscles tighten as she came closer and closer to the edge. And it was so soon, so fast. Breathe, she whispered, afraid that the contractions would hurt the surgery site. Breathe into it. And Riley was reaching down, pushing Lil's hand against her core as Lil felt the first hard pulsing beneath her palm. Silently, quietly, her face twisted with pleasure, Riley came, and Lil held her as she shook and only let go when she stilled. Sorry, Riley said, her eyes flickering open. What on earth are you sorry for? Lil grinned. For being so fast. I'm really glad I'm not a man. That would probably have been embarrassing if I were. Lil swallowed, her mouth dry. Are you kidding? That was the hottest thing I've ever seen. You so close to the edge so fast. It was amazing. I think you'd better get used to it, Riley said, rolling over carefully. You seem to have that effect on me. I do. Riley's hand was already stroking the smoothness of her stomach, and Lil felt her nipples harden in the cool of the room. She still had the slight idea that she should stop this, that Riley wasn't healthy enough for this yet, that it wasn't safe. But her body was refusing to listen to reason. And so was Riley. The questioning hand stroked against a hip bone and then went lower, reaching the soft skin of Lil's thigh. And then her legs were being pushed open and she was letting them fall and Riley was snaking down off the bed, using both hands now to push Lil's thighs apart. Lil felt the softness of breath on her skin, and knew that Riley was coming closer to her, smelling her scent, and she took a deep breath in as Riley's tongue tickled against her lips. And then it began. Riley devouring her, plunging a tongue into her wetness, lapping up and down as Lil saw stars, and she dropped the last thread of control until she understood nothing but sensation. Her hips bucked of their own accord, and the pressure built up inside her, and Riley's tongue just went right on moving, and Lil could barely breathe, let alone speak. Her moans were incoherent as she went closer and closer to the light, her journey was inexorable as inch by inch Riley pushed her to climax. And then it was there, the whole world shattering around her and then remaking itself anew as her heart stopped and then slowly began to beat again. It was a long time until she could open her eyes. She stared up at the ceiling of Riley's childhood bedroom and then Riley's head pushed into view. That was incredible, she said, and she meant it. Nothing else had ever come close, not since the first time she'd been here with Riley. She'd been chasing this feeling ever since then, she realized. Riley grinned. Does that mean you want to do it again? She asked. 
I'm not sure I'll ever want to stop doing this, said Lil. And she pulled Riley into her side, holding her as close as she dared, and wondering how the hell she'd ever thought she could go through life without this. Chapter 25 Riley turned over with a contented sigh, and Lil nuzzled into her neck. We really should get up. Lil peeked her head up. You really think you're done? She asked. Riley arched her back a little as Lil's hand skimmed over her skin, glancing against her nipples and curving over her hips. The pulsing between her legs started again, and she moaned in pleasure. But as Lil's hands got closer to her core, she shivered. Too soon, she said. Too sensitive. I can wait, said Lil. Don't you have a bookstore to run? Asked Riley, shifting gently away. Because it's not like you won't get another chance to prove your physical skills. Ugh, Lil groaned and rolled over before sitting up. You're such a spoil sport. Why can't we spend all day in bed? The aforementioned bookstore? Riley said with a laugh. Plus, the fact that parts of me might fall off or be forever damaged if we do that again right now. She sat up, too, grimacing slightly as her stitches pulled. You okay? asked Lil, a look of concern on her face. Fine. Even better. Riley grinned at her and then pulled Lil's face closer for a languorous kiss. Did you mean it? asked Lil pulling back after a moment. I'll have other chances to prove my physical skills. This, this was what she'd been missing, and she'd needed to experience it again to realize that. Now that she had, the thought of not having Lil in her arms was unthinkable. How could she not want more of this? Yes, she said. Yes, I mean it. Lil put a finger under her chin, turning Riley's face so that they were looking deep into each other's eyes. Let's do this better this time, she said. I want this. You want this. Let's be better. The house was silent, the old structure waiting with bated breath. Riley smiled. Yes, yes, let's be better. Then Lil was hopping out of bed and pulling one leg of her jeans on, crashing around the room until Riley thought she might break something. Hey, slow down there. Don't you want to shower? I should have opened the store an hour ago, Lil said as though she'd just realized the time. An hour ago, you were a little busy, Riley pointed out. Lil grinned and stopped, sitting down on the side of the bed and leaning over to kiss Riley. Totally worth it. You sure? Damn sure. The kiss went on for far too long until Lil was hopping around again and then fleeing the bedroom with one sock on and the other in her hand. Her farewells drifted into the bedroom from the stairs and Riley heard the front door slam and the growl of Lil's car starting. She lay back, muscles aching in a good way, a throbbing between her legs Hair tangled and lips bruised. This was what she'd been missing, she thought again. This was what she could have. That perfect physical connection. When she and Lil were together like that, it was as though nothing else in the world mattered, as though nothing could touch them. Was that what she wanted? Did she even have to think about the answer to that? She sighed, stretching her arms. Sex wasn't everything. She wished it could be, and in this moment, maybe it was. But in the long run, she knew that she had a whole lot more decisions to make, ones that could wait, but not forever. Was she going to stay here? She looked around her room, the posters curling at the corners, the ceiling cracked at the edge, just like it had always been. Being in her childhood room had been comforting when she thought she had no time left. 
Now it was starting to be stifling. It was a step backward, and she'd never been one for going backward. Running away, yes. Going back home... She hadn't lied to Lil. She was certainly going to get another chance to prove her skills, that very night if Riley had anything to say about it. And she truly thought their relationship had been mended, the rough spots sanded over and the pieces glued back together. How well those repairs would survive whatever was coming next, Riley couldn't say. And she wouldn't think about it, she decided, as she stretched and sat back up. Why couldn't she be happy for a little while? After a life lived with planning and organizing and running her own business, why didn't she deserve a little downtime? A little time to enjoy Lil, to develop whatever was happening here. Her whole body thrummed with the memory of Lil as she got into the shower for the second time that morning. If she put the future out of her mind, she was perfectly happy. Riley was just putting her mug into the dishwasher when her phone rang. She wiped her hands and pulled her phone from her pocket. Wanda's FaceTime icon popped up. Part of her was excited to see her face and wanted to pick the call up. The other part of her looked out of the kitchen window at the cold night drawing in and saw the gray sky and knew that Lil would be closing the store soon. But it had been too long. She couldn't ignore Wanda especially when Lil might not reappear for ages yet. It wasn't like they'd made definite plans or anything. Her stomach buzzed as she answered the call. Well, hello, stranger. Wanda's voice was tinny over the phone speaker, but it was just as full of infectious energy as it always had been, and Riley found herself grinning at her ex-business partner. Hello yourself, she said. How's it going? Well, we've opened a new branch over the county line, Wanda said, black curls dancing and her dark eyes shining. That's the big news. We're officially spreading out of the city. For a moment, Riley felt a pang of jealousy. She should have been there. This was her baby. Coffee Corner had been her place, though Wanda had been the one to help her grow the chain. Wanda had always been the one with the big ideas. That's awesome she made herself say. Aw, come on, don't be like that. Wanda had always been good at reading her. I know you're jealous, and that's kind of why I'm calling. To rub it in, Riley said, only half joking. Nope, to ask if you're over this whole finding yourself phase and ready to get back in the saddle. Riley almost dropped her phone. What? You heard me, Ryle. Come on. We need you. I need you. I know that you needed your break, but it's been months. Aren't you missing the city? Me? Your job? Your coffee? Riley sighed. It was hard not to think about the future when it was being thrown in your face. And the truth was, she did miss those things. I don't know, she said cautiously. We all miss you, Wanda said. Let's make this easy. You can buy back your share of the company for the exact price that I paid for it. Simple. It's really not easy or simple. Could she? No. Lil would never leave here. She'd never leave her shop. And what the hell was she doing including Lil in this decision anyway? Riley's head started to whirl. Suddenly, things seemed a whole lot more complicated. What the hell are you doing, anyway? Wanda asked. She tipped her head to one side, peering into the camera. Where are you? At home? Nope, that's definitely not your apartment. The words had slipped out. She hadn't meant to call this home, and now she had to explain herself. Amberly, she said reluctantly. Wait, your little hometown? Wanda yelped. Awesome, I've been dying to see it. Riley pulled back from the phone. What do you mean? Wanda laughed. Come on, Ryle, I'm not kidding here. I've really missed you. 
I'd love to see you. Why don't I come over? I can be there tomorrow. We can hang out, explore the local coffee scene, catch up. What was she supposed to say to that? She'd missed Wanda, too. Missed her energy, missed the bright whiteness of her smile, her crazy stories about her kids. For a long time, Wanda had come close to filling the friendship role that had been left empty by Lil. But there was the other stuff, the discussions that Lil really didn't know if she was ready for. And with Wanda in Amberley, those discussions might be unavoidable. She sighed. Jeez, don't sound so excited to see me, Wanda said, beginning to look hurt. Riley forced a wide smile on her face. What? Of course I'd be excited to see you. I can't wait. Me neither, said Wanda. Riley put the phone down, already wondering what she'd agreed to. Wanda could be a force of nature. But then, Caden was coming up from the basement, and Lil was texting to ask if she could bring over pizza, and Riley could sink back into her comfortable little world. She'd worry about Wanda later. Right now, she could only think of Lil. Chapter 26 Wanda practically bounced out of the sliding doors, she was a flash of vibrant color in the gray autumn, and Riley's heart swelled a little at the sight of her. Good flight? All the better for being child-free for the next two days, Wanda grinned. Then let's get going, said Riley, linking her arm through her friend's. It's going to take at least an hour to get to Amberley, and then a solid 15 minutes to inspect the town. Actually, have you thought about just flying back tonight? Wanda laughed. Get me in your car, and then we've got some catching up to do, girl. Thankfully, Kay hadn't demurred when asked not only for his car, but also to make up the bed in the spare room. Riley wasn't convinced that he and Wanda were going to love each other. Wanda was a little extra, was perhaps the word, and Caden didn't do extra. But it was only for a night. So, tell me everything, said Wanda as she buckled up her seatbelt. I want to know it all. Riley sighed. She'd thought about what she was going to say, and part of her wanted to stick to her story about finding herself. But in the end, she knew that she owed Wanda the truth. Wanda hadn't stopped her walking away from the business. If anything, she'd supported it. It's a long story, Riley began, and then she told it. Jesus Christ, Wanda said when Riley was done. Why didn't you say anything? Because, because I didn't want people to know, Riley said, honest again. I wanted to deal with life and death on my own terms. Fair enough, but what now? I mean, you're basically resurrected. You've got a whole second chance. So what are you going to do with it? Riley shrugged. I don't know. I think I'm supposed to be a changed person now, that I'm supposed to have come to my senses and I should go, I don't know, dedicate my life to orphans in Brazil or something. But I can't seem to find the energy to decide. Wanda laughed. I'm not sure you have to have a complete come-to-Jesus moment, she said. And what's wrong with going back to your life the way it was before? You had a successful career, you had plenty of money, a nice place to live, friends. Nothing, nothing's wrong with all that, Riley said. Except that she couldn't see Lil in that life. Couldn't see how this new relationship would gel with her old life at all. Look. Did you like running the company? Mostly, Riley admitted. And you were excellent at it. Was it challenging enough for you? Riley laughed. Sometimes a little too challenging. Okay, well, we could work on that. But if you were doing something you liked, then why not go back to it? Wanda twisted in her seat so that she was facing Riley. You know that I came here to try and persuade you back right? Yeah, I kind of thought you were going to. 
I'd be an idiot if I didn't, Ryle. I get why you left. Now that you've told me, I swear I totally understand. What I don't get is why you won't come back now. You don't need to go and be Mother Teresa just because your stomach pains turned out to be appendicitis, you know. I know, Riley said. She kept her eyes on the road. Do you want to live in Amberley? From everything you've said about it, you were happy to leave. Wanda had a habit of asking the hard questions, getting right to the point. I don't know. Wanda turned back in her seat and sighed in frustration. Riley, come on. This is the chance of a lifetime, and you know it. She swallowed. Wanda was right. There weren't many partners that would buy half a business for a discount price and then offer to sell it back at the same discount price. It's more complicated than that. Wanda snorted. As if. You're not dying. You're living in the childhood town that you once described as more suffocating than a feather pillow, and you're going to start being bored any second now. What's stopping you? She paused and then looked back at Riley. Wait, is there something else going on here? No, Riley said immediately, then wondered why she'd lied. Bullshit, said Wanda. She narrowed her eyes, then opened them wide again as the thought struck her. Wait, is this about a woman? I started Riley. Have you met someone? Wanda poked at the question, and Riley shuffled uncomfortably in her seat. You have, haven't you? Maybe, Riley allowed. She glanced at Wanda from the corner of her eye and saw that she had a huge, wide smile on her face. What? Riley Winters! I can't believe it! You're falling for someone! I'm so happy for you! Yeah, it's early days. Riley shuffled uncomfortably again, but her cheeks were burning with the memory of Lil, and it felt good. That's not what's stopping you from coming back, though, right? Wanda said. Riley wasn't sure how to answer that. She wasn't sure what the truthful answer was. Wanda sighed. My love, I'm only saying this because I know damn well that you're not the most experienced person when it comes to relationships. But you do know that a good relationship builds you up, right? Huh? Riley turned for a millisecond and then dragged her eyes back to the road. Listen, a good partner is someone that supports you. Someone that doesn't just let you be yourself, but makes you a better self. Sure, there are sacrifices along the way, but at the end of the day, you should both be better people together than you are separately. Okay, Riley said slowly. Do you know what Lewis said when I told him that I wanted to fly out to see you this morning? No. Have a great time, Wanda said. No complaints, no worries about the kids, just go. Do what you have to do. And I'd have said the same to him. A partner doesn't stop you doing what you want or need to do. They support you and help you do it. Okay, okay, Riley said. I get the point. And she did. Really, she did. Wanda was probably right. No, strike that. Wanda was definitely right. But her theory was based on the fact that Riley knew what she wanted to do which she didn't. Truthfully, she had no idea what Lil would say if she announced she wanted to go back to the city. She couldn't imagine that Lil would stop her. On the other hand, she couldn't imagine Lil in the city either. Now, I need to pick your brains, Wanda said, settling back down in her seat. We're looking at expansion plans, and we need some solid ideas for where the company is heading next. You were always the idea girl, so let me fill you in on some of the suggestions. It was late in the afternoon before Riley and Wanda arrived at the bookworm. Sweet place, Wanda said, 
taking a step back to take in the window display. It looks cozy, small town like welcoming. It's a good look. Riley bit her lip and said nothing. She hadn't told Wanda about Lil directly, but she knew damn well that Wanda's sharp eyes weren't likely to miss anything. And the idea of someone outside herself, Lil and Caden, knowing about her feelings made her uncomfortable. Come on, then, Wanda said, pushing the bookstore door open. Show me what you've been working on. I'm dying to see it. Riley trailed in Wanda's wake, not at all sure that she wanted her two worlds to mix together like this. But Wanda was already striding into the bookstore, already walking toward the cafe. Riley took one step aside, closer to Lil behind the counter of the store. Just seeing Lil made her muscles relax, unwrapped the ball of tension in her stomach. Is that her? Lil whispered. Riley nodded. She looks nice. She is nice, if a little overexcitable, Riley said. She smiled. It's good to see her. I'd forgotten what it was like to be so driven about things. Lil put a hand over the top of Riley's. I'm excited to meet her, she said and she smiled so sweetly that Riley's heart about stopped. I'll bring her over, Riley promised. She pulled away, missing the contact with Lil as soon as it was gone, and hurried over to where Wanda was standing at the edge of the space reserved for the cafe. Wow, Wanda said as Riley joined her. You like it? asked Riley, pride beating inside her. The cafe was good, she had to admit it. It was sleek and efficient, whilst still being welcoming and cozy. She'd done her best to make it look as though it had been part of the store for years, as though hundreds of people had read books on the couches and chairs. I love it, said Wanda, turning to her. You're a genius. I am, Riley said, slightly taken aback. Wanda grinned. This is exactly what the company needs. Chapter 27 Lil felt her mouth drop open, and she currently lacked the brain cells to close it again. I know, right? Riley said. With a huge force of will, she managed to control her jaw and close her mouth. But she still couldn't make the words come. Lil? Uh-huh. Not exactly a word, but it was a sound. That was a start. Did you hear what I said? Did you understand? Hmm. She'd definitely heard what Riley had said. She'd even understood all the individual words. It was more the bigger meaning that she was still trying to take in. Lil. Yeah? A word. That was an improvement. Want to talk to me? Riley leaned against the counter of the store, elbows on wood, chin in her hands, eyes shining green, and the light catching in her curls. Lil took a deep, deep breath. Okay, she said, forming the word slowly, testing out her ability to speak again. Let me get this straight. Wanda likes the store. Wanda likes the cafe. Right? Riley said patiently. Good for Wanda, thought Lil. Her first really clear-headed thought in a few minutes now. Wanda had been... different. Full of energy, certainly. Not unlikable, exactly. But Lil had to admit she hadn't loved the woman either. She could see why someone would like her. She just wasn't quite Lil's cup of tea. Not that she'd said anything to Riley about it. And Wanda wants to buy the cafe? She asked. She was foggy on this point. Not exactly, Riley said. Wanda wants to franchise it. She wants to buy the rights to the Bookworm Cafe name and branding, the decor, menu, things like that, so that she can open up other branches of the cafe in other bookstores. Right, Lil said. 
bookstores that aren't called the bookworm, which was part of the reason she wasn't clear on how this was supposed to work. Yes, said Riley. The idea is that other bookstores, small town places like yours, would be able to open cafes just like the one here. Maybe some big chain stores, too. We'd become a brand. People would recognize the logo all over the country. This is really exciting, Lil. Lil put her hands on the counter, feeling the rough grain of the wood. It's interesting, she allowed. Riley frowned. Wait, you're not loving this idea? How to explain? It's not really my way, Lil said. It's not that I don't appreciate the opportunity or the offer. It's just, it's not how I ever saw things. Riley rolled her eyes and laughed. Come on, Lil. Do you have any idea how much money an offer like this is worth? You might never have to work another day in your life. Once we get investors, interested chains, this could be a gold mine. We, Lil said, the words sticking out of Riley's sentence like a sore thumb. What? We, you said, once we get investors. Is that we, you and me, or is it you and Wanda? Does it matter? Lil let the roughness of the wooden counter under her fingers calm her, steady her heartbeat. This conversation was going wrong. She could already feel it, and like a runaway train, she wasn't sure she could prevent the inevitable destination. It kind of matters to me, she said, keeping her voice low. Riley pushed herself off the counter, standing up straight. Wait, are you jealous? Is this what this is about? Because I can absolutely assure you that there's nothing going on between me and Wanda. She's straight, married, and a mom. Lil took a breath, tried to smile. I'm not jealous. Maybe I'm not really explaining myself very well. She definitely wasn't. She could see that. Then what's the problem? Riley asked. She was trying to. Lil could tell. Riley was consciously lowering her voice, keeping her temper. Lil closed her eyes for a second. What now? She could see this coming, and the last couple of weeks with Riley had been so good. She'd really thought that this was happening, that this could work. But Riley didn't understand. She didn't get it. A moment's thought should have told Riley why Lil wasn't jumping up and down at the idea of a franchise. This isn't the way I see things. It's not my plan, she said finally, opening her eyes. Plans can change, said Riley. They can, Lil allowed. But not like this, Ryle. I'm sorry. I can see you like the idea, but... I really don't. My dream was always to have an independent bookstore with a little cafe, a place where the town can gather, a place to have readings and book clubs, a place for community. Turning even a part of that into a franchise would go against everything I believe in. Everything you believe in? Lil nodded. Riley leaned on the counter again, coming in closer. You're being ridiculous, Lil. This is a fantastic opportunity. I don't need the money. Which was true. It's not just about the money. It's about everything. It's about us, Riley said, and the words were coming faster now. What's that supposed to mean? Lil, I helped do this. I created that cafe. I know the idea was yours. I know the bookstore is yours and that the cafe really belongs to you, but I made it the way it is. I put my heart and soul into it for you. Lil put out a hand, tried to touch Riley, but she pulled away. I know, and I'm eternally grateful. And you're right, there should be some kind of profit share in this for you. We should have talked about that before. It was unfair to expect you to work for nothing. 
No! Riley took a deep breath, trying to calm herself again. No, that's not my point. Not what I'm talking about at all. Then I'm not understanding. Riley closed her eyes, and Lil could practically see her talking herself down from the ledge, telling herself to keep her temper, to be reasonable. Green eyes flashed open again. Lil, this is a way we could be together. We already are together, Lil said without stopping to think about it. They were, weren't they? They'd agreed to try this. Really, together, Riley said, desperation in her eyes. I can't stay in Amberley doing nothing for the rest of my life, Lil. And you can't come and be part of my life in the city. I know that about you. But this, franchising the cafe, it could be a way for both of us to have what we want. I get to run the franchise department, albeit with plenty of travel involved. I get to be challenged and satisfied at work. And you get to keep your bookstore and stay here and... And wait for you to fly back from Chicago or New Orleans or Miami. Lil finished dryly. Yes, I can see that. Riley growled. You're being unreasonable, Lil. The fire was burning up now, the anger inside her rising. And yet I'm not, am I? She said. This was my idea, all of it. This is my life and my plan, and I'm not compromising it just because you think I should. How is that for fair? Um, because compromising is supposed to be a part of every relationship, Riley said, her voice going up a couple of clicks in volume. Lil could almost hear Barb's voice saying the same thing. But this wasn't about compromise. How could it be? This was her dream, her life. And she was damned if she was going to let Riley persuade her that the cafe should be franchised when she didn't want it to be. No she said, with a finality that shocked even her. At least think about it, Riley said. Lil sighed and looked at the counter and said nothing. There was nothing to think about. She'd decided already, and she knew what the outcome of this would end up being. Just the same as it had been with Barb. She should never have been so dumb, she should have kept to her promise to stay single, to work on herself and her dreams. Unless Riley was different. Unless Riley could see why she couldn't agree to this. Unless Riley knew her so well that she could step back from the argument. We can't talk about this anymore, Riley said quietly. Lil's heart started to lift. She looked up. Maybe Riley was different. We can't, she agreed. It's pointless. Especially when we're both so angry, said Riley, her face relaxing a little bit. Right. Was Riley really going to do this? Was she really going to let go, let her keep her life the way she wanted it? Lil was about to smile. She was about to take Riley in her arms and kiss her and promise her anything. And then... Riley spoke. We can discuss it tomorrow. I need to get out of here. What about dinner? Lil said, again without thinking. I need to be alone for a while. And then Riley was walking away, just like she'd done before. And Lil's heart was emptying out again, and tears were already pricking her eyes. Chapter 28 The lake was gray and cold, ice snapped in the still air, and Riley's face felt numb. She hadn't cried, that wasn't her way. But as her feet took her down the small path that circled the lake, she was sure about what she had to do. So, why wasn't she doing it? She'd let herself be blinded by the fact that she'd wanted Lil so badly. Just like before, she'd let her heart take the lead when she knew that her heart didn't make good decisions. 
Add into that the fact that she'd been overwhelmed with the news that she wasn't dying, and it was easy to see why she'd let herself be fooled. She loved Lil. There was no lie there. But then she'd always loved Lil, and they'd never really been together. And this all was just the world's way of showing her why. Because they'd never been in the right place at the right time. They'd never had the same thoughts, the same plans. Lil hadn't even wanted to think about her proposal. Not even overnight. She'd made the decision that franchising the store was against her principles, and that was that. No time to consider anything else. No time to weigh up and balance anything else. And it hurt. It hurt that she wouldn't put aside her perfect plan for one moment to consider that a compromise might be the best thing for both of them. Riley could see that. She could see how easily she could be pulled into living Lil's life, living Lil's dream, and just letting her own wants and needs fade away into nothingness. And it wasn't what she wanted. It wasn't something she could do. She hadn't worked her whole life, hadn't worked so long and so hard just to live back at home and work in her girlfriend's coffee shop. That seemed like too big of a compromise. She'd forgotten how cold it could get down by the lake. In the summertime, the sun had burned their skin red and then nut brown. She and Caden and Lil had spent days down here, swimming and camping and playing. The lake had always been her place, the place where she felt calm, where she could work things out, the place she came when the whole world was against her and she needed to be alone. But its magic just wasn't working today. Her feet were blocks of ice and her nose was numb and her eyes were watering with the cold. She took one last look across the choppy water, then turned for home. There was nothing for her here, not if she wasn't willing to fit into Lil's life as perfectly as Lil wanted her to. And she just wasn't sure she could do that, even if she did want to. It was just one argument, her heart told her. Yes, agreed her head, but it was symptomatic of something a lot larger. Their lives didn't fit together. And this argument would become another one, and then another, until leaving was a bigger deal and hurt more. She couldn't do that. She didn't want to spoil what they'd had any more than she had to. Leaving now would be the simpler, easier thing in the long run. At least, it might leave the both of them with the sweet memories of what they'd almost had. By the time she got home, she was half frozen, and it took a long, hot shower to warm her back up. And when she'd pulled on sweats and toweled off her hair, she got down to business. No point in putting this off. She dragged her bag out from under the bed and began opening drawers. Going somewhere? She turned and saw Caden leaning against the doorframe. Ah, Caden. She'd be leaving him, too. Not that he wasn't used to it by now, she guessed. Still, though, she owed him some kind of explanation. It's time for me to leave, she said, folding a t-shirt. Back to the city? She nodded, putting the t-shirt into her case. Want to talk about it? He asked. She blew out a breath. I don't know, she answered, honestly. He did deserve an explanation, though. I promise I won't try to persuade you to stay if you don't want to. Reluctantly, she stopped packing and perched on the edge of her bed. It's Lil. Well, not just her. It's me, too, I suppose. It's both of us. Uh-huh. Care to elaborate? And then she was telling him the whole story. Wanda's visit, the franchise idea, how Lil had reacted. More than that... She was telling him how she felt, how lost she was starting to feel without an aim in her life. At least dying was something to do, she finished. Caden eyed her for a second, then laughed. Oh, 
Okay, I guess I can see that, though I'm pretty glad you're not dying anytime soon. You know what I mean. I know that you're driven, and that you've spent the last 15 years making your own way in the world, and that leaving that must be difficult. It is, she said quietly. And I know that Lil can be tough. That she gets an idea in her head and that's it. She doesn't want to bend or compromise it. You know what she can be like. Riley sighed. I know, I know. But there's a difference between her being the enforcer of Monopoly rules and her not wanting to compromise with me and what I need. Lil wants things to be perfect, Caden said. She always has. But now, after Barb... Things are even worse. She has this idea of how her life should be. God knows where she got that from, said Riley, infuriated and irritated and sad all at the same time. From us, Caden said simply. She got it from us, Ryle. All those nights she spent here, all the time we all spent together, Lil has always seen our family as the role model. She's always looked at what we had as kids and promised herself that she'd give her kids the same. We weren't perfect, Kay. Who was? Her father had been bad-tempered. Her mother had given up on her own life so that she could take care of the kids and the house. There was nothing perfect about that. I know that. You know that. But things seem different to Lil. I can't, Kay. I understand. There's really no hope between the two of you? Riley shook her head. How can there be if she won't compromise and I want more? We could try and work things out, but this isn't going to go away. Not until at least one of us changes our mind. You might. I might. She might. But I can't sit around here waiting for that to happen. And the longer I wait, the more painful the inevitable breakup will be. She stood up again, picked up another shirt. It's the wrong time and the wrong place. Just like it had been last time, she thought. There's nothing I can do or say that will make you want to stay. He looked so sad standing there that she couldn't help herself. They'd never been a demonstrative family, but now she went to him and wrapped her arms around him in a hug. No, she said. There's not. But I love you for wanting to try. Okay. This is for the best she said, trying to convince herself as much as him. Then I trust you to do what's best, he said, pulling away slightly. She looked up at him. You know, maybe you, we, should sell this place. Maybe it's time for us all to have a new start, to stop clinging on to the past. Caden looked around the room. Maybe. Or not, she said, sensing his hesitancy. I like it here, he said. It's comforting. There are good memories here, Ryle. And the house and I are waiting any time you feel like coming home. Her throat felt rough, and she blinked. Here she was, leaving him yet again, and all Caden did was say that he'd be waiting for her. You're a pretty good big brother, she said. You're an all right little sister, he grinned. Want me to book you a cab? She looked at the case open on her bed, then nodded, and Caden turned to leave, but she stopped him. Kay? Mm-hmm. Look after her, okay? Because she couldn't bear the thought of Lil hurting. And Lil was going to hurt. Maybe even as much as Riley herself was hurting. Sometimes the world just got in the way. 
Caden regarded her for a long minute. Then he nodded and went to call her a taxi. Chapter 29 Lil watched the taillights of the taxi fade into the evening. She didn't cry, and she didn't move, not until the freezing wind nipped at her cheeks. Only then did she pull her flannel shirt around her body and go back into the store. A couple of people were browsing the shelves, and a handful more were sipping coffees and hot chocolate. Lil slid back behind her counter and let the store lull her racing pulse. It made sense. Sure, it had only been one discussion, well, one argument, perhaps, but it was symptomatic of something a lot bigger, something that was as insurmountable now as it had been 15 years ago. She and Riley were different people. They wanted different things, they had different priorities, and the time and the place were just as wrong as they'd always been. Okay, okay, the chemistry was as strong as ever, and for a moment there, she'd really thought that they could make things work. But just because she wanted something didn't mean that she could have it. Sometimes wanting just wasn't enough. She looked around the store now. She had this, her dream, or part of it, anyway. The bookstore and the cafe and a close, comfortable life in a town that she loved. She had Caden and Marge and people who'd check in on her. She had the cats. And she probably should have known better than to open up her heart to Riley Winters. The universe had warned her once that it wouldn't work, but she'd been stubborn and hadn't listened. So now she was being warned again. Riley wanted a different life. She wanted a career and the big city and everything that Lil didn't. Even if Lil had been willing to franchise out the coffee shop, she didn't think that Riley would have been satisfied for very long. It hurt. Of course it did. It hurt so badly that she almost couldn't feel it at all. It hurt with an intensity that took her breath away if she even tried to think about it for a second. Earth to Lil, Earth to Lil, come in, Lil. She blinked and her vision cleared, and Marge's gray curls came into view. You'll lose customers if you go around with a face like that, Marge said. Lil shook her head. Not the time, Marge. Time for what? I need something to see me through the long winter night, something with murders in it, preferably. What have you got for me? Lil opened her mouth, then closed it again. Her mind was blank. She couldn't think of a single book. Marge raised an eyebrow and came closer to the counter. Heart or head? she asked. What? Something's hurting. Is it your heart or is it your head? I've got aspirin in my purse for one of those things. Lil sighed. Not for the one that's hurting. So that's how it is. She walked out again. Lil nodded, not trusting herself to quite speak about it yet. Sorry to hear that, Marge said. Lil said nothing. So, about that book. Something snapped. Jeez, Marge, really not the time, not the place. I can't even think straight right now. I can't remember my own name, let alone anyone else's. And Marge was laying a hand on her arm, and the warmth of it was comforting. So comforting that for a terrifying second, Lil thought she might actually cry. You're still open, Marge said reasonably. The store is still here. People still need you. The world doesn't stop because your heart is broken. You know that. Not helpful. Marge patted her arm. Am I sounding a little heartless? A wee bit cold? Yeah, that's one way to put it. Maybe, Marge said. But I said I was here to look in on you, to check on you. And I meant it. There's nothing that I can say right now that's going to do any good at all. There's nothing anyone could say. Your heart is broken, 
but the world goes on turning. And the faster you hop back onto the world and get back to your life, the faster you'll start to feel better. That's my experience, anyway. Such compassion, Lil said. But she was looking Marge in the eye now. Her spine was straightening. It wasn't much, but it was a start. A small start. Compassion has never really been my thing. I'm more of a practical woman, said Marge. But I am here to yell at, to distract you, or even to listen. You know, if you felt like talking about it. Lil leaned on the counter, put her head in her hands. What's there to talk about? She's gone. Why? One word. A simple question. Not that the answer was that easy. Because we want different things. Because there's no compromise. Because, because it's not the right place or time for us, and I don't think it ever will be. Marge nodded. There are people like that in life, she said. The ones that you don't want to live without, and yet life is just easier without them. It's a tough call. Loving someone isn't necessarily enough. She paused for a moment. And you do love her, don't you? Cups clattered in the cafe, and if she wasn't concentrating hard enough, she could imagine that Riley was there that she was smiling, curls bouncing, handing out coffees and teas, and... And, of course, Riley wanted to do more with her life than just that. But selfishly, she wished that she didn't. She wished that Riley could slide into her life like a puzzle piece, that she could be happy with the bookstore, with their community, that she could want babies and a family, and maybe another cat or two, and a quiet, slow life. I love her, Lil said. Marge reached out and rubbed her arm again, which probably doesn't help at all. It doesn't, not really. Life's no fairy tale, girl. There's plenty of stories that have unhappy endings. In fact, most of them do. Those happy ever afters are great in books and on TV, but in reality, the end is always sad. One of you leaves, one of you dies, one of you cheats. It's just the way of things. You're not doing much to cheer me up here, Marge. Wasn't my intention to, Lil sighed. What am I going to do? You've already done it. What? Marge patted her arm one last time. You let her walk away, Lil. Your decision has already been made. Other than that, you do what we all do. You pick yourself up, you hold your head up high, and you get on with things. Lil felt a shiver down her spine. I guess. I'll come by and check on you tomorrow, Marge said. You need anything in the meantime, then you know where I am. Lil barely noticed as Marge left. Get on with things. Marge was right about one thing. She guessed her decision had already been made. She hadn't fought Riley. When Riley had shown up in the store, the taxi waiting impatiently outside, Lil hadn't needed an explanation. They'd looked at each other and both understood what was happening. So Lil had bowed her head and said her goodbyes and tried not to let Riley see how much it hurt. And she hadn't tried to stop her. She'd accepted defeat, gracefully. And now, she had to get on with her life. There was another clatter of plates and cups from the cafe, and Lil closed her eyes and wished as hard as she could that she could turn and see Riley standing there. And when she opened her eyes and there was no one other than the barista and a customer, she shook her head. She hurried over to the barista, whispered something in her ear, and the woman started going from table to table, speaking to the remaining customers in a low voice. Lil herself went into the shelves, finding the few people still browsing, letting them know in a whisper that their time was up. 
and then she went to her counter, waiting as people filed out of the store. She waited while the barista finished cleaning and powering down the coffee machine, until the chairs were stacked up on tables, until the back door was closing. Then she went and locked the front door, turning the sign as she did so. For the first time, she closed the store early. Slowly, she made her way upstairs and into her apartment. So, this was life. This is what life would be. She had no stomach for food, so she lay on the couch, a blanket over her legs, cats curled up beside her, her latest book in hand. But the words just swam in front of her eyes. A life without Riley suddenly seemed a lot darker and grimmer than she'd imagined. And when she closed her eyes, she could still see the red lights of the taxi fading into the distance. Chapter 30 Wanda crossed her legs and sat back in her chair. It's just a meeting, she said. I get that, but I already told you Lil refused to franchise and she's not about to change her mind. Wanda shrugged. Does it really matter? It doesn't stop the idea of being a good one, and it's not like Lil owns the idea of having a cafe in a bookstore. Riley shifted in her seat. Her big expensive desk chair was just as comfortable as it had always been, yet this conversation really wasn't that comfortable at all. Come on, Ryle, Wanda said now. Franchising the bookworm coffee shop would have been great. I mean, the optics are perfect. A small town, cozy feeling in every bookstore across the land from Chicago to Miami. You gotta admit that taking a little piece of Amberly everywhere would be a very sellable idea. Okay, but she said no. So, we design another coffee store and sell that instead. We base it on a trial that we run in somewhere, Oklahoma, or in middle of nowhere, Idaho. It doesn't matter. It's a little more complicated, but it's still doable. And the idea is just what we've been looking for. This could be a real money spinner. A pre-designed, ready-to-go little coffee store for every bookshop, independent, and chain alike. Riley stuck her lip out in thought. Wanda made a point, but she still didn't feel especially comfortable with the idea. What's so special about Amberly? she said, as a way of giving herself more time to think. Wanda laughed. Jesus, Riley, the place is like a 50s sitcom. It's the perfect little town. It's middle America. It's comfort and history and a place everyone can belong in. It's sellable. That word again, sellable. Riley wasn't at all sure she wanted Amberly to be sellable. On the other hand, she wasn't at all sure she wanted to defend the place either. She leaned back, the leather of her chair squeaking, and turned so that she could see out of the large plate glass windows to her right. The city stretched out below her. Her desk stretched out in front of her. Her feet sank into the carpet so deep that she'd once joked that she'd have to mow it like a lawn. Her office. Her company. Well, half her company. She'd come back to her own life, fit in so perfectly that it was almost as if she'd never been away. Like the last few months had been a nightmare, and all she needed to do was wake up. If she tried hard, she could pretend that nothing at all had changed. But her gut squirmed, and her brain was coming around to the idea that all was not quite as it had been. It was hard to put her finger on it. Take this, for example. Wanda, sitting in front of her, asking her to present the bookstore coffee shop idea to a trusted handful of executives. Just to get feedback, Wanda had assured her. In the past, Riley would have been more than happy to make the presentation. She'd have been ecstatic to have a new project to get her teeth into. She'd have been overjoyed to have come up with such a potentially prosperous idea. 
but her heart wasn't pounding, and her blood wasn't racing, and she wasn't already planning what she was going to say in her head. And now Wanda was staring at her. Fine, she said. Fine, let's do it. I'll present the idea, and then we'll see where we go from there. No promises. That's all I need, said Wanda, getting up. Lunch at Broncos? Lunch. White tablecloths and power brokers and expensive salads that barely covered the plate. A year ago, she'd had a standing reservation once a week. I want to work on that presentation a little, she said. While the idea's still hot in my head, I'll order a sandwich in. Please yourself, Wanda said and left, closing the door behind her. Riley closed her eyes. Caden was probably making grilled cheese right about now. He ate it for lunch at least three times a week. If she was home, she'd fix the canned tomato soup while he handled the sandwiches. Or if she was at the bookstore. She'd be so full from eating cake and sandwich samples that she'd skip lunch. Or if she was busy, she might just forget altogether until Lil would appear with a cereal bar or a cookie or something to keep her going. Her office was quiet. Too quiet. She'd gotten used to the idea of working with other people around, with customers coming in and out of the store, with suppliers calling her and workmen hammering, with Lil standing behind her every step of the way. Christ, she needed to snap out of this, She'd made her decision, and now she needed to get on with life. It was a long time ago, the last time she'd felt like this. Life had sped up for a while there. One moment she'd been in Lil's arms, and the next Lil had been leaving and telling her not to tell Caden. Then her mother was dying, and then dead, and then Riley had been leaving. Those first few weeks hadn't been good. She could see that now. She'd barely eaten, hadn't slept. Her mind had just rolled on and on, thinking the same black thoughts again and again. The cycle had seemed endless, until one day a tiny sliver of sun had come through the curtains. The next day there'd been more light, and the next even more, until the sun had come out again for her, and she'd patched herself up and moved on. She wasn't going to let the darkness descend this time. She knew that. She was better prepared, which didn't mean she felt fine. She felt... Empty was probably the word. Empty and sad and hopeless, which was silly because she had her life back. She sighed and turned her chair back to face her desk. There was work to be done. Maybe she could lose herself in the computer screen for a while. It was dark by the time she left the office. The streets were less crowded, and the wind was howling around the corners, and Riley huddled inside her coat, pulling it tight around her against the chill. She'd worked as late as she could, putting off the moment when she had to go home. She'd done everything she could think of to stay in the office, but then the cleaners were there, and she knew that she was disturbing them, and she felt embarrassed that she was still at her desk like she had no one else to go home to, no one to love her. So she'd packed up her stuff, and now she was shivering in the cold. She should probably call a cab, but she didn't. She walked the ten cold blocks to her building, the freezing air making her face hurt. At least she felt something. Evening, Ms. Winters, said the doorman, holding the door open for her. Good evening, she stopped. And how are you? He blinked, looking confused by the question. Just fine, ma'am, thank you, he said finally. Good, good. She bit her lip, trying to think of something else to say, and came up with nothing. Uh, I guess I'll be going inside then, she said eventually. He grinned and held the door open more widely. Honestly she thought to herself as she got into the elevator. Was she desperate enough for company that she was forcing the poor doorman to converse with her? 
she pushed open the door of her apartment and turned the light on. Space stretched out in front of her. High ceilings, big windows, an open plan living space. At least it was warm, she thought, as she pulled off her coat and hung it up. Warm, but empty. It was time to admit to herself that what she was was lonely. That after living at home with Caden, after working with Lil all this time, she missed the company. And coming home to an empty apartment was just making things worse. Lil would be curled up with her cats now, or eating pizza with Kay, or still serving customers. It hurt to think about her, but she couldn't help it. Like when she was a kid and had a loose tooth, she just kept prodding at it. She sighed and went to the kitchen. Digging through the freezer, she found a microwave meal. Better than nothing, she guessed. No, she wasn't dark, she wasn't depressed, not like before, not like the first time. But this was worse. This scared her. She was empty. For just a second, she could see Lil lying on the big white couch in the center of the living room. She could see the way her blue streak would catch in the lamplight. She could see long legs stretched out in a half grin and... And then the vision was gone. Because it was ridiculous. Lil would never be here. Maybe no one would ever be here. Maybe she'd just be alone forever. Maybe she'd learn to like it. The microwave beeped and Riley took the pathetic plastic tray out. So, this was her life now. For the first time, she wondered if this was any better or worse than the box that Lil had wanted to put her in. Was living this life so much better than living Lil's life? At least this is my choice, she said to herself as she pulled the film off her microwave dinner. At least this is what I chose. Chapter 31 Lil groaned and turned over. Her back was shot from falling asleep on the couch. She screwed her eyes tight shut, but the banging continued. Lil! Maybe if she put her hands over her ears. Lil! Nope. She checked her phone. A half dozen missed calls, and it was after six. How had that happened? She definitely remembered waking up at her regular time and deciding to take a mental health day. She also remembered lying down to take a nap at around four, and sleeping for two hours, apparently. She grimaced as she tried to stretch, and her back complained. Lil, I swear to God, I'll break down this door if you don't come and open it right now. For a second, she could even smile at the idea of skinny Caden breaking down a door. But then the effort of smiling was just too much, and she settled on shrugging instead. Then, wrapping a throw around herself and stumbling to the door. Jesus, Lil, I thought you were dead or something in there, he said as she creaked the door open. Then why did you keep knocking, she asked, standing back to let him in. Dead people can't open doors. They're quite notorious for it. Huh. Reach the irritated with everyone and everything stage, have you? Caden asked. He plonked a six-pack down on the table. Are you ordering the pizza or should I do it? She took a deep breath and leaned against the doorframe. Caden was not who she'd expected to see, but then who else would it be? He'd been distant for the last week or so, but she guessed that he was Riley's big brother, which was why she should never have gotten involved in all this in the first place. She'd known the first time she and Riley had hooked up that she risked a family and a friendship, and she hadn't wanted to take that risk. What are you doing here? she asked finally. It came out more harshly than she'd really meant it. Caden sat down, throwing his lanky legs over the arm of the couch. I'm here to make sure you're not dead and to see what's going on in that mysterious head of yours. Right, as if. She stared at him, willing him to tell the truth with her eyes. Fine, he huffed. Marge called me. 
Said the shop was all closed up and she was worried about you. Happy. She sniffed. I wouldn't say happy. You took your time getting over here, considering that you were worried I was dead. His face looked pained, and he took his eyes away from her, picking at the fabric on the sofa. Yeah, I was kind of an idiot. I sort of thought that I might not help, what with being Riley's brother and all. I guess I thought that I'd be the last person you wanted to see. She thought a little. Kay, you're never the last person I want to see. He looked around the living room. Glasses were on the table, empty plates on the floor. The TV was on with the sound turned off, and the curtains were closed. One of the cats, Fortune, jumped up onto Caden's lap and started turning circles. Lil, I gotta say it. You don't look like you're doing too well here. I'm allowed a morning period, she said. She went back to her couch, opposite Caden's, and flopped down on it. He hesitated and then said, You weren't like this with Barb. She hadn't been. She'd been hurt, sure, but she hadn't felt like the sun had gone down and it would never come up again. It was different, she said. I was still starting the shop up. I didn't have the option of taking a day off. Caden blew out a breath and his face was clouded, and she knew that there were things he wanted to say. She just didn't know if she wanted to hear them. But then she guessed she'd have to, eventually. Spit it out, then, she said. What? Whatever it is that you've come to say. He blew out another breath, bigger this time. It's not my place, not really. Except I don't know who else will say it, because I don't know who else knows the both of you as well as I do. What? She was getting irritated again. He avoided her eyes. Do you think maybe you guys might have made a mistake? And then she laughed. It was half hysterical and thoroughly cathartic. She hadn't laughed for days. Lil. Lil. What? She asked, wiping her eyes. I'm serious. He was leaning forward, hands on his knees. And I'm here because I love you. I love Riley, too. She's my sister, but you're just as much of a sister to me. I'm worried about you. Worried because I see you making a mistake. What kind of mistake am I making? Caden sighed. You have to understand, Riley. You have to put yourself in her place. You know she didn't always want to run away from home. She could have gone earlier, but she stayed to help with Mom, and, well, I think that had a big effect on her. It would on anyone. Yes, but for her, it seemed to change who she was, what she wanted. It was like she watched Mom go and decided that she'd do everything in her power not to be the same, not to travel that road, you know? I think she thought that Mom missed out on things, and she wasn't going to. Did she? Your mom, I mean. Lil asked, curious. I don't know. Maybe. She never had a career. But then again, maybe not. She loved kids, always wanted more, but I think they couldn't have them. I don't really know. I know that she never voiced any regret. But I think Riley decided that she had to take every opportunity. Makes sense, I suppose. Which is why she left again, Caden said quietly. She sees being in a relationship, being dependent, as a weakness. She doesn't understand that two people can make each other stronger. Maybe, Lil allowed. Which is why you're making a mistake to let her walk away. She needs to see that things can work, that compromises can be made, that she can be loved and be independent, too. Lil shook her head. I didn't make her walk away, Kay. She wanted to go. 
He bit his lip and said nothing for a while. Then he stood up. Well, I said what I wanted to say, I guess. And if there's not going to be pizza, I'll let myself out. Maybe you just want to be alone. There's something to be said for wallowing in self-pity, she tried to joke. Off to see Beth? He shuffled his feet. No, not exactly. A pause. We er, broke up. Decided not to see each other again. She blinked in surprise. You did? He looked over at her. I get why you did it, you and Riley. And Beth is lovely. I know the two of you are dying for me to settle down and all that. It just wasn't right. He looked as though he were struggling for words. It's, I, sometimes things don't turn out perfect, don't go according to plan. And that's okay, it's life. Sometimes you need to change the plan to fit what's happening, you know? I suppose. He stood up, hanging on the back of the couch. Lil, can I ask you something? Of course. Do you love my sister? I know the honest truth, just yes or no. And she tried, really tried to lie. It'd be easier to lie, easier to let him think that things were really over. But she couldn't do it. She'd spent a week trying to squash her feelings down, and they refused to be imprisoned. So she nodded because she was beginning to realize she loved Riley with all her heart, always had done and always would. Then find a way to change your plan to fit what's happening. Stop trying to build a perfect thing. There's no such thing as perfect. Things have to be flawed, because if they're not, you can't see how beautiful the good parts are. You have nothing to compare. Okay. I wish I could. No wishing. Just do it. You're Lil. You can do anything you set your mind to. And if this is important to you, then you'll do it. Her heartbeat slowed, and tears pricked in her eyes. He was making it sound so simple. I want her back. She didn't know where the words had come from. They'd been lurking there all along, she supposed but she'd known since the night she'd closed the shop early that she wanted Riley back. She'd known she'd made a mistake. That was why she was sleeping on the couch in the middle of the day, overwhelmed by the mistake she'd made. I know, Caden said. How do I fix it? I can't tell you that, he paused but I can tell you something. What? I'm willing to bet that Riley feels the same way. He buttoned up his jacket and walked toward the door. Lil watched him go. The truth was shining bright in front of her, and she realized that she'd been waiting for the sun to come up when all she'd needed to do was to look at what was right inside her. It was Riley that lit up her life. Riley that made her heart beat harder. Riley that she wanted. She just had to figure out a way to get her back. Chapter 32 She was standing in the corridor like she was in trouble with the principal and she hated herself for it. Come on, be decisive here, she whispered to herself. Get it together. The presentation was due to start in five minutes, and she'd been working on it for a week, and she still hadn't decided what she was going to do. The idea had made her uncomfortable right from the start. Okay, so Lil didn't own the idea of bookstore cafes, but still, Riley felt unpleasantly like she was stealing something that really wasn't hers. Not to mention the fact that a week of work based around an idea that was arguably Lil's hadn't exactly done a lot to help her forget her sorrows. She still saw Lil on that white couch in her living room if she turned around too fast. 
She still thought every dark head bent over a book was Lil's. It was like she was being haunted by someone who wasn't even dead yet. But at least in those flashes of moments, she'd feel her heart lift and her breath come easier. The rest of the time, she felt beige. Nothing excited her, nothing interested her. The TV couldn't hold her attention, and work was just an ordeal to get through before another sleepless night. Problems which, she was almost sure, could be solved once this presentation was out of the way. She had a choice here. She could blow the presentation completely and let the idea stay Lil's and piss Wanda off. Or she could ace it, persuade the executives, steal Lil's idea, and make Wanda happy. Wanda had believed in her. Wanda had taken chances on her, with her. Wanda had been there when no one else was, and they'd built something great together. There was no question that she owed her partner. Even this second chance was something that Wanda had given her. Lil, she sighed and leaned back against the window. Lil had her heart. It was pointless denying it, especially to herself. She loved Lil, and she was quite certain that she always would. She could reconcile herself to the idea that perhaps they could never have what she wanted, what Lil wanted, that they couldn't compromise, that it would always be the wrong time for them. She couldn't reconcile herself to ever taking her heart back, though. You ready out there? Wanda stuck her head through the doorway, raising a questioning eyebrow. Riley wasn't ready in the slightest, and she knew it. But she nodded anyway. Maybe she'd have some kind of light bulb moment in the room. Maybe she'd find a way to please everyone. Maybe she'd finally decide just what the hell she wanted. Her stomach heavy, she followed Wanda into the boardroom. She sat down, the ergonomically designed chair pressing against the small of her back, and gratefully sipped at a glass of water. Questions? Thoughts? Wanda asked from the other end of the table. What about financial forecasts? Someone asked. We've got preliminary forecasts, Wanda said. And they look good. But right now, we're just interested in the idea, whether it fits with our brand, our ethos, whether this is a direction you think you can see Corner Coffee moving in. Riley bit her lip. In the end, she'd come to no decision at all. She'd made her presentation and been neutral about it as much as possible. She'd yet to come down on either side. And as Wanda went around the table taking opinions, it seemed that the executives were equally split on the idea. Well, Wanda said after the initial go-round, I suppose we've heard from everyone and we're not quite ready to make a decision on this issue. I suggest, wait, Riley said. You haven't heard from me. Wanda opened her mouth to say something, then closed it, nodding in Riley's direction. Riley closed her eyes. She couldn't do this. She couldn't betray Lil's ideas and her ideals. This was one thing that she could do for Lil even if Lil never knew about it. One compromise she could make. I'm not convinced, she began. And then the words started spilling out. What the hell was all that about? Wanda slammed the office door. Wanda, I... You stabbed me in the back. We're supposed to be partners here. You were on board with the idea... What happened? No, Riley said slowly. I wasn't on board with the idea completely, and you knew that. You knew I was uncomfortable with it. Wanda huffed and pulled out a seat. Sitting down, she said, Is this all about that woman? No, don't lie to me, Ryle. Not after everything we've been through. Not after everything we've done together. Riley sighed. It's not all about Lil, she said. It's not. I don't think that this is a good way forward for the company. I don't think it'll work. Why not? Wanda demanded. Because 
What makes the bookworm and its cafe so special is exactly what it is. A small, independent store that's run with love in a sweet town. You can't recreate that in Chicago or in Phoenix. You just can't. The idea of franchising uniqueness isn't something that's going to work. A franchise needs to be instantly recognizable, and a bookworm cafe needs to be individual, designed for the place that it's in. Wanda closed her eyes. And you're just bringing this up now. Plus, Riley put in, bookstores are a shaky proposition as it is, what with online retailers and ebooks. Again, you're just bringing this up now? Riley sat down and crossed her legs. I haven't been myself lately, she said. I get that. I haven't been on top of things. It's taken me a while to get this figured out, but I think I'm right. And I think you know I am. Financially, it makes a lot more sense to move into a growth sector. Interest perked on Wanda's face. Like what? Co-working spaces, for example, Riley said. Wanda lit up. Right, yeah, that's, that's a great idea, Riley. She tapped her fingers on Riley's desk. It's the woman, isn't it? Lil? Riley didn't want to talk about it, but just saying her name made her heart flutter. She's why you've been off your game? Wanda smiled a little. I get it. I do. Life's hard enough without having to worry about falling in love. That's not what I'm worried about, Riley said. Why would it be? She'd done the falling a long time ago. That part of the equation was already written. Then what is it? I've never seen you like this. I want to help, Ryle. Honestly, I do. You're sad, sort of dark. It's hard to explain. But I'd like the old Riley back if there's anything I could do to get that to happen. Riley shook her head. It's over. I left. There's nothing anyone can do. Wanda looked at her for a moment and then shrugged. Okay. And Riley knew she had to do this, knew she had to say something. It was unfair not to. Wanda, I need out again. I'm sorry. I appreciate you letting me come back, but it wasn't the right decision for me. I can't be here anymore. The truth settled into her. This wasn't her anymore. She didn't know who she was, but it wasn't this. She couldn't just walk back into her old life. She'd changed, changed too much. Wanda breathed out, long and slow. Then she nodded again. I can't say that I'm surprised. I had a feeling this was coming. I hate the thought of going on without you. But if this is what you need to do, then I can't stop you doing it. Thank you. I'll, uh, get the process started, transfer funds back to you, that sort of thing. No hurry, Wanda said. She leaned in. What are you going to do now? The future was wide and open and terrifying in front of her. I have no idea, she said. She knew what she didn't want to do, but what she actually wanted, well, that she couldn't have, so maybe she needed to look for something new. Wanda smiled and stood up. Okay, she said. We can work something out. Maybe you can consult if that co-working cafe idea of yours is any good. I might need your advice. Riley nodded knowing that Wanda was trying to make her feel better and that she didn't need help at all. Wanda paused at the door, turning around with a thoughtful look on her face. You know the best thing about leaving, she said. Riley raised an eyebrow and shook her head. You can always go back, said Wanda, before she walked away. Chapter 33 about damn time that you were open, 
Marge grumbled, stomping the first real snow of the season off her boots. Yeah, sorry about that, Lil said. She was distracted. She'd been distracted all morning. In her head, she kept going over plans to persuade Riley to come home, but they all ended up being the plot of stupid 80s movies, and she didn't think that Riley was going to fall for a boombox outside her house or anything else that trite. What's got into you, then? asked Marge, boots clean and coming up to the counter. Nothing, Lil said, then pasted on a smile. Huh, trying to figure out a way to mend that broken heart of yours, I suppose. At least your brother had the grace to call me and tell me that you hadn't hung yourself from the curtain rail or anything. Lil frowned at her. Were you really that worried about me? She asked. Marge shrugged. Told you that I was here to keep an eye on you and I wasn't kidding. Lil reminded herself that Marge's family had all upped and moved away and that the old lady was alone. It was sweet, really, the way she checked up on her. Slightly irritating at the same time, but sweet. I appreciate it. Marge peered at her, eyes sharp. Did your dad ever tell you what happened between the two of us? Well, the three of us, really, since your mom was on the scene by then, too. Just what she needed, another distraction. But she was curious. Besides, taking her mind off Riley might be just what she needed. Sometimes the best ideas come when you're not thinking about them. So she shook her head. I used to work for your parents' company, Marge said. Actually, it was our company back then, the three of us. Wait, really? Lil asked, remembering no such thing. Marge chuckled. Your dad and I were the best of friends all the way back so far I can't even remember. And contrary to popular opinion, once your mom came along, we all three became bosom buddies. Don't let anyone ever tell you that men and women can't be friends, but I guess you know that, what with Caden and all. Lil nodded. So, we started the company together, Marge went on. And we were doing well, very well. No surprises there. Lil was well aware of the fact that her parents had more money than they knew what to do with. Marge, on the other hand, didn't. What happened? She asked, curious. Marge sniffed. Lack of compromise, that's what happened. Us all being too stubborn and stuck in our own ways to find a path that would suit us all. Lil's heart lurched a little. Compromise, not one of her greatest abilities. The company was doing well, said Marge, but I had two little ones at home, and even though I'd kept working and building the company, I'd always wanted to be a mom. I always had this idea of baking apple pie and, well, being the kind of mom that I had. So... There seemed no harm in that. So, once the company was up and running, I went to your mom and dad and brought up the idea of me stepping away, and, well, it all ended up spiraling into something we never planned it to be. But how? Lil asked, confused. Marge shrugged. Your father called me a stupid woman for giving up a career to look after children, and your mother agreed with him. Then I called them cold and unfeeling for leaving you with nannies all the time, and before long what had started as a mere conversation turned into a fight. Over something so simple. Surely you didn't leave things like that. Of course not, Marge sniffed again. But things were never the same. We all talked about it together. We each tried to persuade the other of our point of view. But in the end, the split was already there. The crack grew wider, and then it all fell apart. I'm sorry, Lil said. The upset on Marge's face was clear, even after all this time. You know the worst thing, Marge said, leaning in closer was that after a year or so, 
There was nothing I wanted more than to go back to work. I loved my boys, and I wanted to be the best mother I could be. But God damn if I wasn't bored with PTA meetings and baking and nosebleeds. But it was too late by then. Things had moved on. You could have worked part-time, Lil said. I could have, but at the time I wasn't willing to compromise, and neither was your dad. He wanted me at the company full-time or not there at all, and I was so afraid of missing Davy's first steps or Matt's first words that I didn't want to be away from them for a minute. So everyone just walked away from the table. I'm sorry, Lil said again, though it didn't really seem enough. Marge nodded. I'm hoping you're getting the point here, girl. I didn't come here just to tell you sob stories about my own regrets. I'm hoping to stop you collecting a few regrets of your own. Lil rubbed her eyes. I know, I'm getting that. I just... Marge, I don't see what compromises can be made here. I want her back so badly. But what am I supposed to do? Either she comes back here and is unhappy, or I move out to the city and I'm unhappy. How can I ask her to accept either of those things? Marge reached out and took Lil's hand into her own. You know your problem, girl. Lil could think of at least a hundred, but she shook her head anyway. You're too obsessed with getting things perfect. You know perfect isn't planned. It's just something that happens. Caden says that everything needs flaws. Then he's a smarter boy than I gave him credit for, Marge said. The idea of falling in love and everything around you falling into place and everyone wanting the same things all the time is a fantasy, and you know that. You read it in the books around you all the time. You want to know the secret to a happy relationship? Lil nodded. Hard work. Marge pressed her lips together and nodded as though agreeing with herself. Hard damn work. You two want to figure things out, then get together and damn well do it. You don't need to go to her with answers. You need to go to her with an open mind and a willingness to make sacrifices and accept sacrifices in return. Easy for you to say, Lil responded, but her heart was starting to beat a little faster. Why did you build this store? The question came out of nowhere and surprised her. I, uh, I wanted it, she said, a simple but truthful answer. And no one ever tried to stop you? No one said that it's a bad investment, or that it would be too much hard work, or that it would never be successful? Of course they did, Lil said, thinking of her parents' first reaction, thinking of her accountant's reaction. Didn't stop you going forward, though, did it? No. Do you love Riley Winters? Yes. That answer was an easy one, even in the confusion around why Marge was bombarding her with seemingly unrelated questions. Then you go get her, just the same as you did with the bookstore. If this is right, if this is what you want, then you damn well go and find the woman and work with her until the two of you have something that resembles a relationship that can work for the both of you. Easy for you to say, Lil said again. Marge growled. No, see, this is you standing in your own way again. I'm gonna tell you one last time, Liliana Bradley. If you want Riley Winters in your life, then you get off your pretty little ass and go get her. Just like that. Just like that, Marge said. And the idea was growing in her head. Just like that. Go and find Riley and tell her she loved her and work together to come up with a plan. Just like that. 
What are you waiting for? Marge demanded. Lil opened her mouth, closed it again, then opened it again. What about the store? She said. And the cats. What about the cats? Give me your keys. Marge held her hand out. Marge, I... Give me the keys! Shocked into obedience, Lil handed her keys over. Great, now go get your coat, Marge said. I'll call Caden and have him bring the car over. I'm sure he won't mind you taking a road trip in it. But, but nothing. You want this? The sun broke through the clouds and shone in bright sparkling diamonds through the store. And Lil's heart swelled and her face broke into a grin, and this, suddenly, was the only thing she'd ever really wanted in her life. This, suddenly, was what she'd been looking for, even if it was flawed and half-finished and unpredictable. I want this, she said, and her voice was unshakable. Then go get the girl, Marge said, closing her fist around Lil's keys and Lil was already on her way. Chapter 34 Riley pulled the blanket further up, tucking her feet in so that she was cocooned neatly on the sofa. First world problems, she muttered to herself. It was cold outside, but getting cozy in a high-ceilinged, echoingly empty apartment wasn't exactly easy. For a second, she could picture herself on her childhood couch, all curled up with cartoons on the TV. She swallowed down a lump of sadness. What was she doing? Her world was already starting to feel darker, and she was honestly starting to wonder if the light would ever come. Leaving the company had been a good decision. The work just wasn't fulfilling anymore. But even that left just more emptiness inside her. With one hand, she toyed with her phone. Then she took a deep breath and pressed the icon. Hey there! Caden's face looked surprised to see her, and she held the camera up a little so he could see her better. Hey. The picture shook as he sat down, and then her stomach flipped when she saw that he was sitting on the exact couch she'd just been thinking about. What's up, sis? She took a breath. We definitely promised to be honest with each other, right? Yep, pinky promise and everything. No going back on that, Caden said with a wide grin. Another breath. She wanted Caden in her life. She needed him. Being back at home, the ease with which he'd taken her in, had shown her above all that she didn't want to turn her back on her brother again. Um... Then I guess I gotta... The words started to form in her head, but getting them to come out was a problem. In the end, she closed her eyes and blurted out, I'm not doing so great, Kay. When she opened her eyes again, Caden was looking back at her, head tilted. You want me to come up there? No, no, nothing so dramatic. I just wanted... What? What did she want? A friendly face, I suppose. What's going on, Ryle? Is it work? No, yes, kind of. I, um, I quit. There was a brief pause. Uh-huh. Wanna talk about that? Did she? It just wasn't right anymore, was all she said. Uh-huh. Caden scratched his nose but said nothing further. I, uh, I've been thinking a lot, she said, filling in the empty air. About Mom, especially. What about her? Was she happy, Kay? Caden laughed. Are you kidding? Mom was about the happiest person I knew, right up until she got sick. You don't think she sold out? Sold out? You mean by staying home to watch after us and Dad rather than going out to work? So Caden understood more than she thought. No, he said. No, I don't think so. More importantly, though, I don't think she thought so either. I think she was happy with her choices, more or less. 
more or less. He laughed again. No one's ever 100% happy with their choices or with anything else. There are always compromises to be had, sacrifices to be made. To have one thing, you have to give up another. That's what makes what you have so precious, because you sacrificed to get it. Riley closed her eyes and lay her head back on the softness of the couch. I guess. What's going on, Ryle? Really, talk to me. I don't know. I can't. I can't seem to get started. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't know what I'm doing, Kay. Come home. She shook her head. Is that the answer, though? Look what happened last time I was home. Being with Lil just made things even worse. Caden sighed. That's not true, though, is it? It's not being with Lil that made things worse. It's being without her. She could feel her eyes filling up, and she dashed the tears away on her arm. She wasn't a crier, and she definitely wasn't going to start now. And now I've got nothing, she said. No Lil, no job. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I can't imagine myself doing anything. All I can see is this big black hole, and I don't know how to get out of it. Come home, Caden said again. I can't. Because? Honest answers only. She took a deep, shuddering breath and thought carefully before answering. I'm embarrassed. Embarrassed? It took a moment to put it into words. I made the same mistake again, I think. I ran away when things got complicated. I just left because leaving is easier than dealing with things, and that's childish and stupid, and now I'm embarrassed. So you do think you made a mistake by leaving? Perhaps. The apartment was so quiet, she could almost hear the silence. Outside the huge windows, snow fell and deadened the outside noise. You think being in a relationship makes you weaker, Caden said quietly. You think that getting tied down or compromising makes you a lesser person. And that's not true. Even I know that. I'm the most hopeless romantic that there is, and I can't hold on to a woman for more than a week. But even I know that when it's right, a relationship makes you even better. It's gestaltian. It's what? He grinned. The whole is bigger than the sum of its parts. Together, you are more than the two of you are separately. Does Lil really make you a worse person? Weaker? Lesser? No, of course not. And yet you act as though you think she does. I think you're right. I think you made a mistake. But I don't think you should be too embarrassed to come home. He hesitated for a second. After all, what else is there? Kind and helpful, Kay, thanks. He shrugged. It's the truth, Ryle. Home is where you come when there's nowhere else to go. Just like when you thought you were dying. You can come home again right now. I'll even come and get you if you want, though you'll have to wait a couple of days. I thought you said I could come home right now. You can if you come under your own steam. If you want a ride, you'll have to wait. Lil's stolen my car for some kind of road trip. She'll be back soon, or so she tells me. For a few seconds, she really thought about it. She really thought about going back. But then, she did just keep repeating her mistakes, didn't she? She'd tried to walk back into her old life and ended up miserable and quitting her job for the second time. Maybe going backward again would be a mistake, too. She groaned. This was all too complicated. Too much. Fine, Caden said. The offer is open whenever you're ready. Whatever you want. You just let me know. And call any time, right? Right, she promised. 
and hung up. She kept sitting there in the silence, trying desperately to think of something to fill the emptiness, but Caden's words kept running around in her head. Did Lil make her a better person? She thought about it. Lil calmed her. Being in the bookstore, working at the cafe had been relaxing. Just knowing that Lil was there, that she could take problems to her, Lil made her happier. She tried hard to remember the happiest moments in her life, and whenever she tried, she thought only of Lil coming to her bed, only of Lil hugging her, only of Lil's lips finely brushing against hers. Which didn't mean she should go home, she reminded herself. Besides, if she went home, there was no way Lil would forgive her running away again. Lil didn't want her there. Lil had let her leave. Lil understood that there was no way that it could work out between them. Tears pricked hot behind her eyelids again, and again she wiped them away. This was stupid. It was all stupid, and she'd gotten herself into this position, and now where was she? Lost and empty and broken without a clue of what she was supposed to do. She sniffed and looked around for a tissue box. Not finding one, she unwrapped herself from her blanket and went off in search of a box. If she was going to wallow, then she should do it properly. She was pulling the fresh box of tissues out of the bathroom cupboard when the doorbell rang. Odd, she wasn't expecting anything, and the reception downstairs would take care of most things anyway. She considered not opening the door. She was a mess and in no condition to be patient with salespeople. But... Curiosity got the better of her. She stood on tiptoes, but the peephole revealed nothing other than the back of someone's head. So she was forced in the end to open the door. And Lil stood there. And Riley's heart stopped. Chapter 35 Open mind and open heart. Open mind and open heart. Lil took deep breaths in and out, chanting the words in her head like a mantra. Her hand hovered close to the bell, ready to ring it, and she couldn't actually believe she was here. It had been a long time coming. Fifteen years, fifteen years of pining after Riley and not even knowing that's what she was doing. And here she was, finally, a horrendous drive, a disastrous visit to the corner coffee offices, rescued only when Wanda showed up at the last minute and recognized her, and here she was, open mind and open heart. She knocked on the door. An eternity passed, and she was just beginning to breathe again when the door opened, and there she was, Riley. Curls piled on top of her head, Tip of her nose pink, eyelashes suspiciously wet. Lil cleared her throat. This was her cue. She had deliberately avoided thinking about what was going to happen, deliberately avoided making any kind of plan. She knew better than that now. Or at least she was going to try. But she had her opening line. Come for a walk with me? Riley's green eyes opened wide. A walk? It's minus fifty or something out there, and it's snowing. Lil nodded patiently. Come for a walk with me? There was a long, long pause, but Lil didn't lose heart. This was going to happen. She was going to make it happen. And then, finally, Riley nodded slowly. Okay. She disappeared from the doorway, and Lil could just see a wide expanse of white space inside the apartment before Riley reappeared. She was wearing a heavy down jacket that covered her curves, and for a second, Lil was distracted by the memory of her body. Come on, then, Riley said, pulling her boots on. They strode out of the apartment like she'd been expecting Lil all along, and like there was nothing weird about this at all and Lil grinned into her scarf as she followed Riley down the stairs and out of the door. The cold hit them like a wall, and Lil tucked her hands into her pockets. 
they began to walk. Neutral ground, Lil said eventually. That's why the walk, in case you were wondering. This way, neither of us has a home court advantage. And nothing could be planned. I see, said Riley. Her face was pink from the cold, and Lil screwed her hands into her pockets even harder, forcing herself not to reach out and touch her. It was the wrong time and the wrong place, Lil said. Riley said nothing, her feet crunching through the fresh snow. But here's the thing, Lil went on. Her eyes were watering in the cold. I think that maybe we have to make the right time and the right place. Riley did speak now. What are you saying? Lil took a deep breath. Now or never. Open mind and open heart. I love you, Riley. She went because there was nothing else to do. Because Lil was there and was asking her to go, so there they were in the snow in the quiet city. And now Lil had said it. And she wished that her heart would stop throbbing in her chest, wished that her pulse would be less excitable. Lil? No, I said it. Now is your chance. Say it back or don't say it. The choice is yours. But we've got to take care of the basics first. Riley blinked away the tears and didn't know if they were coming from her heart or from the cold. What was she supposed to say? The truth and they'd both hurt, a lie, and they'd both hurt. But when she looked up and saw Lil's clear blue eyes looking down at her, she didn't have a choice. I love you, she said. Lil nodded and kept walking. Riley skipped a step to keep up with her. But we can't, Riley began after a minute or so of walking. No, Lil said, we can. We just have to figure things out. That's why I'm here. I love you, and my life is emptier and blacker and bleaker without you, and I don't want to be without you. She stopped now, turned around, and Riley was right in front of her, stopped by the bulk of her well-wrapped body. We've done the hard part, Riley, Lil said. We've said the words. We've fallen in love. I feel like I've fallen in love a million times with you, over and over again every time I see you. The rest of it, it's all just practicalities, and we can work with that. She turned and started walking again, stomping through the snow. So, let's negotiate. Negotiate? Riley said. Really? You're the businesswoman, Lil pointed out. And we obviously need to get some things straightened out so that we can be together. So let's do that. Ah, uh, okay. It wasn't the most romantic proposal she'd ever had, but then nothing else had worked up until this point, had it? I won't franchise the store or the cafe, Lil said. It goes against what I stand for, but I will sell up and move to the city and start over to be with you. No! Lil stopped and turned again, raising an eyebrow. Is that a no, you don't want me to move in? Yes, no, wait. Words were trying to come out, and she had to take a breath to control them. I don't want to stay here. I want... The cold clutched at her face, and she couldn't believe she was about to say this, but it was true. I want to move back to Amberley. Lil grinned, and Riley moved in a little closer, and the air crackled, and they were almost about to kiss, but Lil drew back. Not yet, she said, face serious. There's business to attend to first, so we can live in Amberley. That's a good start. She cleared her throat and then said, what are your plans? And Riley knew how hard this was for her, knew that Lil had her own plans, and was consciously trying to put them to one side to consider hers. I thought 
Um, I don't know, I could work at the coffee shop, she said. No. She looked up in surprise. No? Lil shook her head. No, I mean, yes, every now and again, if you really want to. But you need something of your own. That's important. It's important for you. Riley blew out a cloud of breath. I quit my job. Okay, Lil said slowly. Then I want you to know that I'll support you in anything you choose to do. And I mean anything. You want to go to Australia, then that's what we'll do. You want to go back to school, no problemo. What about your plans? What about the store? Lil shrugged and looked up into the cool gray sky. Maybe plans are a person, she said, rather than a place or a thing. Maybe it took a while for me to realize that. Maybe you find the right person and everything else falls into place. Riley couldn't help herself. She took Lil's arm as they began walking again. So, that's it, she said. That's it, said Lil. This is it. This is how things work. We keep talking, we keep being considerate. We work together every step of the way. And it won't be easy, but it will be worth it. No flowers, no proposals, no string quartets or public declarations? Riley asked, clutching Lil's arm. Is that what you want? Lil asked. Riley shook her head, and Lil laughed. Good, because I thought about those things, I really did. You were days away from me holding up a boombox outside your balcony like an 80s film. But then I did some thinking and some talking, and those gestures are great. Running through the airport to catch you, going on the big screen at a football game. They're all big and romantic and thrilling. Lil stopped now, and this time she drew Riley toward her. But those things aren't love. This is love. Us, together, talking and negotiating and working hard to make something together, a relationship together. Love is slow and quiet and everywhere. It's not big and loud and a gesture. Riley let herself be pulled in even closer, feeling the warmth of Lil's body starting to defrost her. What are we going to do? she asked, looking up into Lil's eyes. Lil grinned. Won't it be fun to find out? And then they were kissing, and the ground was disappearing from under Riley's feet, and snow fell gently all around them, and the world was still and quiet. Epilogue Lil hung the last of the garlands and stood back to survey her work. Not bad, not bad at all, she thought. The store was draped in finery and the caterers were rushing in and out with trays of food. Glasses were lined up at the cafe counter. The place was almost ready. Two years, thought Lil, as she took in the sight. Two years of owning her very own bookshop which meant it was 18 months almost to the day that she'd been living with Riley, the love of her life, entrenched in the apartment upstairs with the cats and the books and everything else she'd ever wanted. Okay, so it hadn't been the smoothest of journeys. Riley had accepted and quit three jobs in that time, but now she seemed happy, contented. And Lil thought about the ring sitting wrapped up in a ball of socks hidden in her bedside drawer. Soon, she promised herself. A month from now, Riley would finish her six-month probation period at her latest job, and they already had the vacation planned. Venice, where Lil had always sworn that she'd propose if she was ever going to. And finally, the time was right. For once, the time was right. There was the bookstore birthday party to get through first, though. 
That's the last bit of bunting I'm hanging, Marge huffed, standing up straight and checking that the flags around the counter were straight. Couldn't have done it without you, Lil grinned. And you should get out of here. We've both just about got time to get washed up, dressed up, and to paint our smiles on. Marge nodded. About time, not that I need to look that good. Who would I be trying to impress? Lil shrugged, careful to give nothing away. You never know, was all she said. She wasn't about to tell Marge that, for once, her parents were in town and that they had agreed to come and see the store and to attend the party. She was worried that if she said anything, Marge simply wouldn't show up. And she had a feeling that burying the hatchet after all these years could be a good thing for her friend. Marge clattered out of the door, and Lil looked out into the street after her. Still no sign of Riley. She sighed. She really should be here by now, or she wouldn't have time to get ready. She shot one more worried glance out of the door, and then let it close, and went to get herself ready. At least one of them would be on time to the party. I don't know how to tell her, Riley wailed. Caden slid a cup of coffee in front of her and settled onto a kitchen stool. Just tell her. You know it'll be easier when it's done. You can't keep it from her anyway. Right, Riley said. I'll just tell Lil that I've quit my hundredth job in the last year and a half, and she'll be fine with it, and won't doubt my ability to stick with something at all. Caden shrugged. It's not like you have much of a choice, Ryle. You can't pretend to go to work every morning. Plus, you know you kind of need to find another job. Riley picked up her coffee. Yeah, I know. I kind of have an idea of what I want to do, which I guess is going to be part of the same horrible conversation I get to have with Lil. She's your partner, Caden said. She supports you. You just have to be open and honest, that's all. And I have to not disappoint her and support her, and it'd be helpful if I could keep a job for more than three months and maybe even pay a few bills. You've got plenty of money, Caden scoffed. I know. Riley stared down into her mug. I just hate the idea of letting her down is all. I hate that I can't be what she wants me to be. She gave a soul-shuddering sigh. Maybe I'd be better off alone. Caden rolled his eyes. Enough of the dramatics, he said. You should be thanking Lil for all this, rather than stressing about all this imaginary pressure that you're putting on yourself. Thanking her? You know, without Lil, you'd have never tried all these new things. Think about it. You've worked all these jobs in the last year and a half, all different from each other, all new experiences. With Lil's support, you're broadening your horizons, figuring out what you really want from life. She's quite literally helping you become a better person. Yeah, but what am I doing for her? Caden grinned. I'd prefer not to speculate, Maybe you should have a conversation with her about it. But Lil's in a much better place, trust me. She doesn't plan pizza night a week in advance anymore. You're helping her relax, Ryle. Riley sighed again. Okay, okay, I have to tell her, but I'm not doing it until after this damn party. She's got enough on her plate right now. She looked up, eyes gleaming. Speaking of the party, is she coming? Who? Caden said with a studied casual air. K. His face split into a grin again. Yes, yes, she's coming. You both finally get to meet her, don't worry. The mythical Andrea, Riley said. Be kind to her. You and Lil both be kind to her, or I swear I'll never let you meet one of my girlfriends ever again. Riley drank down the rest of her coffee. No promises, she said. I won't be kind if she's an evil witch. 
She's not an evil witch. I prefer not to speculate, Riley said, sticking her tongue out at her brother. And I gotta get out of here to get ready for the party or Lil's gonna kill me. See you later, bro. Lil could see Riley off in the corner talking to other guests, and she took a moment to drink in the sight. A long, dark green dress skimmed over Riley's curves, and her curly hair was pinned up on top of her head, and Lil didn't know how she could possibly be so lucky. She turned into a beautiful girl, that Riley Winters, said a voice. Lil took a deep breath before she made herself smile and turn around. Dad, she leaned in and kissed his cheek, feeling the scratch of whiskers as she did so. You'd do better in a dress yourself, said her mother, appearing at her father's side and looking Lil up and down. Not really my style, Lil said, feeling her mother's judgment pass over the tailored suit she'd chosen to wear. Her outfit was fine, she knew that, but her mom had to have something to pick at. She refused to let that spoil her evening. It's not bad, this place, said her dad, looking around with an interested air. It looks like you're a real part of the community here. Perfect for franchising, her mother put in, looking around as well. You've done all right for yourself here, but it's time to think bigger. Lil gritted her teeth and reminded herself that as far as her parents were concerned, this was high praise. I'll think about that, she lied. She was long past needing to please her parents. They came in and out of her life, and she tolerated them as they tolerated her. She didn't hate them or necessarily blame them for how she'd been brought up, nor did she cater to their needs or even particularly like them. They were a reminder that families weren't always made. Sometimes they were found. Riley laughed at something, and even across the room, Lil could pick out the sound, and it strengthened her heart. And I didn't invite you here just to admire my hard work, she said to both her parents. There's someone around here that you need to see. An old friend. Standing on tiptoes, she spotted Marge's gray head in the crowd. She took her father's arm and her mother's hand and steered them through a labyrinth of bookshelves until they came face to face with the older woman. Then Lil stood back. This could really go either way. There was a moment of hesitation, then mutual recognition. Then Marge was taking a step backward, and Lil's father was taking a step forward. Marge, he boomed. A slight smile appeared on Lil's mother's face and Lil crept back, leaving them to their memories, satisfied that she might have made an old lady's life just a little better by reconnecting her with her best friends. Ouch! Something lumpy under her foot almost tripped her over and she stumbled, clinging onto a shelf to save herself. You know, if you didn't want me here, you could just say so, grumbled Caden. You don't have to injure me. Sorry, I totally wasn't looking where I was going. Yeah, I got that, he said, a look of pain on his face. Why are you skulking around back here anyway? Lil asked suspiciously. Caden squashed his lips together into a thin line, and Lil sighed. Let me guess, your mysterious girl hasn't shown up? Andrea will be here any minute, Caden said. Lil groaned. Oh, Kay, you haven't told her yet, have you? Caden shot a glance over to where Riley was chatting to a tall man. I was going to. She came over for coffee this afternoon before she came home. I meant to tell her then, but I just couldn't. I couldn't find the words. She rubbed his arm. You're an idiot, she said fondly. Riley's going to be fine with this. She even wants you to do it. I'm selling her childhood home. How can she be fine with that? Because she's moved on, and she wants you to move on too. Just tell her, Kay. She needs to know. 
Lil could feel the draft of the front door opening, the autumn chill creeping in. Caden's face lit up. She's here, he whispered. She's here. He frowned down at Lil. You and Riley'd better be nice to her. Obviously, Lil started. But before she could say more, Caden was gone, threading through the crowd to greet the dark-haired woman that had just come in. Riley watched as Andrea drifted away to find herself another glass of wine. Caden had offered to do it for her, but she'd waved him off, insisting that she was more than capable of getting her own drinks. I like her, Riley said. I really like her. Really, really? Riley looked at her brother, and there was something in his eyes that told her he was falling. Is she the one? Total honesty? Always. She hadn't broken her promise again. She shared everything with Caden these days. No secrets. I think she might be. He looked at his glass. I was starting to give up hope. Maybe you just needed the right time and the right place, Riley said. She heard Caden take a deep breath. Ryle, there's something I need to say. Something I need to tell you. I should have said it earlier. I wanted to say it earlier, but... Spit it out, Riley said, heart double beating as she tried to figure out what could possibly be wrong with her brother. I'm selling the house. It took a second for the words to sink in, for them to take on meaning, and then for Riley to feel a flood of relief that Caden wasn't telling her anything more serious than that. Good she said. Good? That's all I get? Riley smiled. Yes, it's good. It's good that you're moving on, that you're starting something new. Maybe with Andrea, maybe not. But whatever you do, don't get stuck. Just keep moving forward. I'm happy for you, Kay. You spent too long in that house. It's time to get something of your own. You know, I think thought you might be mad. Never. Clinging on to the past is wrong. You can't change it. You can't do anything at all about it. All you can do is learn from it and move on. Caden put a hand on her arm. Dad loved you, Ryle. No matter what he said in the heat of the moment, no matter how much the two of you saw the world differently, he loved you. Mom did too. She loved both of us. She loved being a mom. Isn't it weird how different people can be? Said Riley. The four of us, you, me, mom, and dad, all living together for so many years, all thinking we knew each other, but really, we just assumed things. I'm trying not to do that with Andrea, said Caden, and I see you trying to communicate better with Lil. So... Don't assume that she's going to be disappointed in you because you quit your job. He clinked his glass against hers. Here's to whatever you decide is next. About that, Riley began. But before she could get any further into the sentence, there was the sound of a glass shattering and then raised voices. She stood up straighter, craning over heads to try to see what was happening. But in the end, all she saw was Marge stalking out of the store. Let me go check on things, she said to Kay. Then she hurried off to find Lil. Lil was standing in the philosophy section, looking bereft, when Riley finally found her. What was that all about? Marge left, Lil said. I saw that, but the shouting? She paused, saw Lil's face, then pulled her in close for a hug. She and your parents fought again, huh? Lil nodded against her shoulder, and Riley pulled her in a little closer, dropping a kiss on her cheek before letting her go. They're adults. They can work their own stuff out, Lil. You can't force things. I'm sorry they didn't patch things up, but you know how things are. Lil scowled at her. Things can't always be perfect, Lil, Riley reminded her. Lil growled in response, and Riley could see that she was angry and that now really wasn't the time to talk or do anything else. So she swallowed back her words. 
and instead offered to get Lil some wine. The door closed behind the last guest, and Lil gave a sigh of relief. And the store was finally quiet. But there was a mess everywhere. Glasses rolled on the floor and stood on the counter, crumbs scattered across the carpet. We're not cleaning now, Riley said, coming up and taking her arm. We'll do it in the morning. We'll open late. We? Lil asked, but Riley was already speaking again. Your parents seemed to like the place. My parents were assholes as usual, said Lil. I've already called Marge and apologized. Fortunately, she's not blaming me or taking things personally. Riley pulled her over to the counter, and Lil leaned up against it. I get what you were trying to do, Riley said. But you can't plan people's lives like that. You can't hold yourself responsible for this either. You set up the meeting, which was a well-intentioned and kind thing to do. The rest of it was up to them. And, obviously, they're not willing to kiss and make up. Lil sighed. It would have been nice, though, wouldn't it? It would. But remember Caden and Beth? That would have been nice, too. Yet it didn't work out between them and maybe for the best, because Andrea is lovely. I truly like her. Yeah, me too, Lil said. So, the party wasn't a terrible failure or anything. In fact, a little drama makes for a great party. It's all fine. And we'll clean this stuff up before we open tomorrow. Riley comforted her. Lil narrowed her eyes. You keep saying we. We'll clean up. We open. What's with that? Did you take a day off tomorrow to help me out? I thought your probation period didn't let you take any personal or vacation days but Riley was already turning pink, and she didn't even have to open her mouth before Lil knew exactly what was going on. Her heart sank. Oh, Ryle, you quit again, didn't you? Riley nodded, biting her lip and looking down. I'm sorry, I should have talked to you first, but I just couldn't face another day of it. I really thought I'd be great at sales, but it turns out, well, I'm not. Lil closed her eyes, thinking about Venice, thinking about the ring in her drawer. And she was angry. She could admit that. Yes, you should have talked to me first. Riley looked up again. I'm honestly sorry. So, no vacation time, no Venice, Lil said aware that her voice was high-pitched and that she was letting more of her anger show than she should. I'm sorry, Riley said again. Lil closed her eyes, took deep breaths. She could get used to not planning everything. She was trying to be flexible, trying to adjust. But not planning anything? That seemed like asking too much. Lil? Riley's hand was on her arm. Lil opened her eyes. Yes? Riley took a deep breath. I know what I want to do. Really? Because it seems to me like you really don't, Lil said, before she could stop herself. Then she slammed her mouth shut. No, it's okay, I deserved that, said Riley. But I mean it this time. I've... I've been thinking about this for a long time. I just couldn't quite reconcile myself to the idea. I, Jesus. Okay, Lil, I want to go to nursing school. And things clicked inside Lil's head. She could remember Riley sitting at her mother's bedside, could remember the care in her hands, the softness in her eyes. She knew Riley was right. She'd be an amazing nurse. And she could see why it was difficult for Riley to come to this decision, how it would bring up bad memories just considering going to nursing school. That, that sounds like an amazing plan, Lil said truthfully. She turned so that she was facing Riley, backing her up against the counter. Honestly, 
Truly, really, I think you'll be an incredible nurse. I don't want you to think that I don't appreciate all your support. You've really let me be myself these last few months, Lil. I wouldn't have been able to do any of this without you. I needed time to figure things out. And you gave me that time. The anger was gone. Lil could smell Riley's soft floral scent, and her pulse sped up as it always did. It was my pleasure. And I'm sorry about the vacation, Riley said again. It was Lil's turn to take a deep breath. But this was right. She knew that. She could see it. The image of her kneeling on a Venetian bridge scattered into pieces under the fluorescent lights of the store. I think we should talk about getting married, she said quietly, not daring to look into Riley's green eyes. There was silence, and Lil couldn't take it for longer than a few seconds. She looked up, and Riley's eyes were filled with tears. We don't have to, she said quickly. If you don't want to, that's fine. It's really not a big deal. No, Riley said, clutching onto her upper arms. No, I want to. I just, you're saying we should talk about it. You're letting me be a part of the decision. You're not just proposing or assuming that I'll say yes. I was going to propose. Lil admitted. No, this way is better. I like this way. Riley smiled. Her eyes were still watery. I like that you didn't plan it, that you didn't wait for the right time and the right place. I like that we're going to talk about it and decide together. Lil couldn't hold herself back any longer. She gathered Riley into her arms and kissed her soundly. Only when she'd taken her fill did she pull back, the bookstore lights buzzing in her ears. I'm glad you like this way, she said. But you're wrong about me not waiting for the right place and time. This is both of those things. Any time that we're together, it's the right place and the right time. Riley shook her head. No. You're the one that's wrong, she said. She was drawing in closer, and their lips were almost touching again. Lil's heart sped up so fast it was like a drum in her chest. Riley's hands were already sneaking underneath her suit jacket. Me, wrong, she murmured. This isn't the right time, Riley said, leaning in even further. It's the best time. And Lil laughed so hard that Riley had to draw back from the almost kiss. Seriously, Lil said. I'd roll my eyes, but I'm laughing too much. You're an old romantic when you want to be. Riley looked suitably embarrassed, and Lil laughed again. Come on, let's leave all this mess for the morning, Lil said, taking Riley's hand. There's a warm bed and three cats waiting for us upstairs. Oh, and there's an engagement ring, if you'd like to weigh in on that, too. If you don't like it, I can change it. Really? Riley said, skipping a step to keep up. You bought a ring already? Yeah, I haven't quite recovered from my planning addiction, said Lil. The door to their apartment was open, and Riley went up the stairs first. Lil paused for a second, turning off the lights. Street lights poured orange through the windows, and the bookshelves loomed large shadows in the empty store. Lil could hear Riley opening the front door of the apartment, saying something to the cats as her footsteps creaked overhead. And Lil's heart filled with love. The best time she said to herself. I can live with that. And she closed the door gently behind her as she went up the stairs to join Riley.
This concludes The Best Time by Sienna Waters. Narrated by Felicity Monroe. Copyright 2021 by Sienna Waters. This unabridged audiobook is published by arrangement with Sienna Waters and was produced in the year 2022 by Tantor Media Incorporated, a division of recorded books which holds the copyright thereto. Please visit Tantor.com for more information on our growing library of unabridged audiobooks. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program. Mm-hmm.